really elastic. That is that is the main uh, advantage of this rubber, right? It is highly elastic and strength and flexibility are added through various treatments. We are talking about vulcanization, heat treatments, likewise adding sulfur. So vulcanization means we are adding sulfur and some other chemicals. And uh, we are giving some properties to the natural rubber. So after we can use uh, the natural rubber in a way uh, where we need, I mean, there are some specific needs that we are fulfilling by uh, natural rubber. Sometimes it may be uh, absorbed in the shock. Sometimes it may be uh, uh, as a sealer. Sometimes it may be uh, as a cover. So it will be act as a barrier like gloves and some of the coatings. So uh, according to our requirement, we can uh, manipulate the, uh, the properties of the natural rubber. So we can add some chemicals, some uh, physical treatments. Likewise, we can do so many things. Now, already we have done uh, so many researches on rubber, but it's still it's not um, uh, enough. I mean, there are so many things to find out, but uh, we have so many uh, innovations to natural rubber. That is why we are using natural rubber because rubber in our livelihood, day-to-day -day livelihood, we are using rubber uh, at least 50% of our uh, needs, right? Ah, okay, before starting the session, uh, how many of, is there anybody who can't understand single? Just let me know. What is the preferred language? I mean, definitely I'm going to conduct this in English medium, but Sometimes I use single medium to elaborate more, some to give you some examples for your better understanding. But if you can't understand single, I'm going to omit that. Is there anybody who can't understand single? Just let me know now. I can't understand single. Hello. I can't understand single. Can't understand. Okay, okay. Yes. Sometimes I will explain things in single, but I will uh, explain it in the same way in English medium as well, right? So no need to worry about things. So if you don't understand what I'm saying in a, a single medium, just let me know because uh, I will make sure that I will be uh, telling all the things in English medium, right? Okay. So the synthetic rubber is a byproduct of petroleum industry, right? So, you know, we have natural rubber, but uh, according to the requirement, that means uh, we, as I told you, uh, in our day-to-day -day livelihood, we need rubber or the rubber-based products in different industries, different areas, different uses. So, we need a uh, higher portion of rubber. But when we are looking at the uh, the proportion or the, the quantity of manufacturing natural rubber is limited, right? So, according to the requirement, we can't fulfill that requirement by natural rubber. That is why the synthetic rubber is coming into the play, right? Synthetic rubber is a byproduct of petroleum industry. As you know, when we are um, getting different products from the petroleum, that means from the highly volatile gas to uh, crude oil. Crude oil means like uh, the ship uh, fuel. Uh, there's a byproduct, right? It's a sludge. Uh, add some chemicals and you can prepare by uh, uh, synthetic rubber from this petroleum byproduct right most rubber producing plants are native to tropics right so you have to understand that uh, the the rubber plant or all the uh, rubber extruding plants are in the tropical area right so these are the main um, species that we can take what uh, rubber or the uh, rubber latex so first one is castella species native to tropical america maniot i think you know maniot right maniot esculenta api singhala monad kiyana maniokka maniokka lat alata matak eti podak api keruwoth apita kiri pramanayak ganna pula that is also latex but it is not elastic as uh, the natural rubber that we are using but maniot also is source of latex uh, that we can take rubber then uh, Fantima and uh, Elastica, it's native to Africa, then uh, uh, Pananthenium and uh, the last one is Hevia. So Hevia is, uh, it's also native to tropical America. So we are talking about uh, Okay, so we are talking about 
heavy on resilience. That is the genus and the species. Okay, specific species that we are talking about. Heavier resilience. So, heavier resilience is the species that is cultivated for extraction of natural rubber contained in its latex, right? So, we are excluding or we are harvesting natural rubber from heavier resilience. In Sri Lanka, also, we can see so many rubber trees, different clones. So, clones are there, but the, the species or the variety is the, uh, not the variety actually, the species is heavier resilience, right? So, you have to understand that. You have to know that specific uh, scientific name as well, right? Hevia brasiliensis. So, because you are, now you are following your diploma course, so you have to know the basic, at least uh, three basic uh, crops and what are their uh, uh, scientific names, right? Okay. So, uh, the composition of natural rubber latex varies with the clone, season, soil condition, Tapping method and frequency. So you can see the factors, right? So there are different clones. We will uh, see some of the clones here. So clone. Clone means it's not the variety. Clone means it's it's a uh, it's something uh, extracted from a variety, but there are different characteristics. Sometimes it may be drought tolerant, pest and disease tolerant, high yielding. Likewise, we can uh, formulate. Uh, by adding, by genetically uh, developing uh, the trees, right? Or the, uh, I mean, we can differentiate the genetic pool and we can have different characteristics. And the season, right? So if it is uh, rainy season, the con composition of latex might be different, right? Because high water content. But if it is in uh, drought content, I mean drought uh, condition, so it might be a different uh, composition in the latex, right? Soil condition also matters. Then tapping method, frequency, likewise. The typical composition is as follows. So you have to know that in the heavier resilience, so we are talking about heavier resilience, right? Api kata karanne metane di mono agana the heavier resilience is ki na gasa gana. Hema netta ni shaake gana vitara. Ito kora api metane di kata karanu dry rubber content, right? So the dry rubber content is around thirty to thirty five percent. When we are um, harvesting or when we are tapping, so we are calling it that the technical term is tapping. So you are going to learn these things. When we are harvesting latex from the rubber tree, it is mostly, I mean, the composition of the uh, latex, uh, it has higher proportion of water, right? So dry rubber content is the average composition, right? It might be slight higher, slight lower, but averagely, it should be 30 to 35 percent. What are the other compounds that we can find in the latex? Proteinous substances, right? So you have to remember protein kiana deval tienwana mukada venni. Eking apita ape production venni pulwande. So you have to memorize these things and I will uh, explain in your processing part what happens when the proteinous substances are available in the latex, right? Then lipids. Sugars, right? 1% of sugar. Then inorganic ions and water, right? Okay, so you have to remember the dry rubber content, right? It is 30 to 35%. Okay, so we will look at a brief of the history, right? Because we are talking about so many things in rubber, rubber manufacturing, rubber products. So what are the milestones in the history, right? So native area is Amazon forest in tropical America, right? So how they uh, identified this Rubber, the voyage of Christopher Columbus. Christopher Columbus can go Haleti. Christopher Columbus can a famous or renowned voyage. Hari the am kudega raniya. Ratawal hoya gani. Hi manatta mukad dekhi kya ne. Deesha gaveesha ne gya budgele. Ne da. Oh. So he's a voyager, right? He's Christopher Columbus. So he where when uh, he visited to uh, the Amazon forest or the. Uh, America, he saw some of the small kids playing with uh, a, a ball, right? Playing with the ball that is very bouncy, right? Because at that time, that era, they didn't find any of the um, characteristics from any substance like bouncing, right? Or elastic, right? So that is the first place or in the history where we can find the um, records. Where the Christ that means the, the the team or the 
uh, group visited with the Christopher Columbus, they were keen to uh, identify what is this substance. So they went to the forest and identified that these kids or the villagers, they are just um, wound in the bark of a specific tree and uh, get in the ooze or the, uh, the, the latex and they allow it to dry and they, they after they will uh, wrap that straps, right? Then I began with an idea me rubber to the Kaladine, a Samban to experience dinner. Ottapalu can be rubber Tadauna Hammer when the rubber latex solidifies. We can have an elastic nature, but it's not in a good order, right? It, it, it's in bad smell, but you can use it, you can wrap it, and you can have a good rubber bowl, right? Likewise, these kids in that uh, Amazon forest, so the native people, what they are doing, they are wounding the bark and they are getting this latex out and it uh, they allowed it to solidify and they use it to different uh, uses, sometimes to wrap some things and for playing, so to prepare bowls like that. So that is the first place in the records that we can find uh, the Christopher Columbus identified this specific plant, right? So I'm not saying that he identified the uh, heavier Brazilians. Sometimes it might be a different clone. Thereafter, with the improvements and uh, uh, the research, they have found this plant, right? So the other milestone is vulcanization. That is by Charles Goodyear in 1838, right? So Charles Goodyear was a researcher and a scientist. He was the person who found uh, the way uh, to uh, to give strength to the natural rubber. Right? Abi dem paavichi karan ami rubber ek ono ata vada koma di kani. Ono ata vada api kani. Hita na tire ka kadhen without vulcanization, we are preparing a tire. What happens? When we are applying that uh, tire into a vehicle and we are riding the vehicle, it will definitely uh, wear off or it will uh, increase the temperature and uh, what do you call it? It will uh, uh, liquidify. What do you call it? 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 Because it doesn't have the strength. So, given the strength or hardening process of this uh, rubber, we call it as vulcanization. For that vulcanization, we are adding sulfur and, and we are giving some uh, heat treatments and pressure like you see in this picture. So, that is vulcanization. So, it was found by Charles Goodyear in 1838. Then, the rubber cultivation was uh, identified by Sir Henry Wickham, right? So we have some of the evidence in Sri Lanka also in 1870 because earlier what they have done, they uh, went to the forest and extracted the latex from available trees. But when the demand increases because after finding the tire and rubber, I mean tires and this vulcanization process, the demand for natural rubber increased. So to match this demand, they have to produce more for that. Um, that production they need more latex that means they have to uh, maintain plantations right so that is the first step of uh, rubber cultivation then the pneumatic tire right developed by Dunlop right still we have the brand name Dunlop so they were the pioneers of pneumatic tire earlier it was not pneumatic but they found the tire now we have pneumatic tires, so motor vehicles, then rubberized bitumen, there is another uh, compression called bitumen. We can use these bitumens for laying carpets into uh, roads and some of the mats, right? Then still we need research and development. Uh, in present scenario also, there are people, uh, undergraduates, you will be also getting this, ex ah, not you, uh, the graduates, I'm sorry. They are doing some research regarding the rubber, right? Because there are so many areas to discover. Okay. Then we will see the morphology of rubber, right? Okay. What is the growth form? Under conditions of optimum development, heavier Brazilian is one of the tallest in genus. 
and grows up to 40 meter in height. Okay, so it is a very tall tree, right? It is not a uh, uh, bush like uh, tea. So here, rubber, it is tall tree, right? Normally, it is 40 meter high. So if you have the experience in rubber plantations inside rubber estate, you can see the canopy is very taller. The canopy is rubber canopy. So you can see how tall these trees are, right? The pattern of growth. So you can see how tall these trees are, right? The pattern of growth. Heavier resilience is winter strongly. What do you mean by winters? Winters means it sheds its leaves. During the wintering, all the foliage is shed and the trees are bare for a brief period. Even though Sri Lanka is a tropical country, we don't uh, experience any, uh, what, any uh, seasonal impact. Still, it winters, right? If you can see, I, I don't know whether you have this experience, some of the states, I mean, uh, in some of the, uh, I mean, uh, some months in the time, I mean, uh, the year, you can see rubber plantations, they don't have leaves, right? Only the tree. The trees or the leaves shed the end, right? That is how uh, its uh, morphology or the growth happens, right? Young shoots appear bearing young foliage distally and scale leaves proximal, right? So you can see scale leaves often bear flowers in the axis, right? Normally, what happens, the distally means it uh, appears in the, uh, the far away end, right? And scale leaves, proximally. Lagging at the end, scale leaves. So I will uh, show you some photographs. And uh, bear flowers in their axils. So you can see uh, when when new foliage comes, how these flowers occur, right? Then foliage. It's a trifoliage leaf. Trifoliage leaves means for one axis or uh, one point, it attaches three leaves, as you can see here. Right? As you can see here, right? yeah, you can see it is trifoliate, right? Assume various position as they develop. Color to changes with maturity from copper brown to through apple green to dark or light green. So you can see copper brown, right? These are immature. These are immature leaves and these are somewhat mature and you can see dark or light green according to the clone, right? Thereby, we can identify the clone as well. Okay. Then, soil and climatic requirements. So, you can, uh, you have to know what are the basic needs to develop or what are the restrictions to develop a good rubber plant, right? So when we are looking at the physical properties, our physical properties, the depth up to 100 centimeters. So we have to have at least uh, the soil, right? This is soil conditions, right? The depth should be 100 centimeters. Otherwise, it is difficult to grow the plant. The drainage should be there. Uh, if you can remember the rubber estate. So it is it is a slopey area, right? Not a flat land. We have to do paddy farming, submerged, right? But when we are talking about rubber plantation, we have to have a slope land, right? It should be well drained. We have to do water lodging. Water lodging condition is not good. Aeration should be there in the soil, right? Aeration means the, uh, the porosity or the, uh, the air circulation within the uh, soil should be there. If it is a compacted one, it is very difficult to grow uh, rubber plant, right? Then friability. Friability means crumbliness. Crumbliness means when you are holding a, uh, a small amount of soil in your hand, when you crush it, right? And when you, when you, when you squeeze it and when you release it, it should be uh, come back to its own form or it should be uh, in crumble form, right? Can I think So I will 
Okay. So, I think when we crush it, right? When we when we uh, release the palm, so you have to see uh, soil particles here and there, not as an aggregate uh, dense one. I think that is the friability, right? So friability should be there in the water holding capacity. So it should have a good water holding capacity as well. Otherwise, uh, it, it is difficult to uh, provide the adequate amount of water to the plant. Then soil texture also very much important. As you can see, it should have a good texture with crumble and uh, good water holding capacity and aerated soil, right? Okay. These are the physical properties. Then what are the chemical properties? Chemical properties, the medium level of NPK and magnesium. That means nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, and also magnesium, right? Magnesium is a uh, very uh, trace element, but it should have the proper amount, right? Because normally we are not uh, allocating or we are not applying uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium in a frequent manner. There are some uh, application rounds. Sometimes it's twice a year, sometimes once a year, according to the requirement. But uh, we are not doing it frequently because it's a perennial crop and also it is, we are growing it in a slopey land, right? So no deficiency of trace elements. There are some other trace elements, copper, uh, sulfur, uh, and there are many more, right? So you have to have no deficiency. That means not in uh, abundant way, but the adequate amount should be there. Otherwise, if the amount is not there, it will show some symptoms in the tree, right? Sim tree again, up the symptoms, nutrient deficiency scale. So if it is deficient, that means the production or the productivity will be uh, less at the end of the day, right? So absent of saline conditions. What do you mean by saline conditions? Can anybody explain? I'm the one who is speaking now, but I need your comments as well. What do you mean by saline conditions? Yes. I need you to be speak, right? So you can, it is free to, I mean, when I'm asking a question, it is free to talk and I, I mean, Otherwise, it is very difficult. I am always uh, trying to uh, do my best. I am trying to elaborate more. But when you are not understanding it, I am i don't know whether you got it or not. So you can ask and you can uh, join me with the QAs, right? Questions and answers. Okay, saline means the salinity. The uh, salinity of the uh, soil, right? So you can you see the pH should be around 4.5. So if it is pH is around 4.5, what do you mean by that? Is it acidic or basic? Can anybody say, tell me? Huh? Loud please. It is acidic. Yes, it is acidic. So saline means uh, the the ironing uh, the the iron composition within the uh, soil right so it shouldn't be absence of saline conditions means uh, it should have a proper drainage otherwise it will increase the saline conditions and also uh, we can't maintain the acidic composition right salinity basic chance so these are the main requirements or the main uh, properties chemical properties of soil that we need to have a good rubber plantation. Then what are the physiographical features? Physiographical means the gently sloping or rolling terrain, right? Gently sloping means it is not steep, right? Sloping means the requirement is around 0 to 20 percent. Anshaka, Vissaka Slopaka, it is very difficult, right? So this this should be maximum 20, right? Right? Zero to 20, right? Zero means flat land. Flat land also fine because there are some uh, lowland estates where we can see uh, rubber. 
but uh, slope is the preferred one. Uh, and the water table should be more than, uh, that means higher than the 100 centimeter. Centimeter C ya kya dulja bida water table lega ham bhen do ani. Okay. Okay. So, right. Then, uh, what are the serious limitations of uh, soil and climatic requirements? Steeper than 45%. 45% uh, percent means, now here you can see, uh, to not 20 degrees. Huh? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, the early one, this is 20% slope, right? So, it is not 20 degrees. So, here, yeah, you can, you can use it as 20 degrees and 45 degrees, right? More than 45 means it is very difficult to, uh, maintain. So uh, that means very steep grounds. You can't uh, you can't maintain the adequate uh, area because when you are growing the plant uh, on the soil or the ground, it is very difficult to maintain because there are some cultural or sorry the agronomic practices that you have to do when the plant grows. But when you are doing it in a steeper ground, it is very difficult to maintain, right? After apply ground, we have to do uh, fertilizer applications, weeding, then tapping, right? Tapping means uh, harvesting the latex. So these things are very difficult when it is very steep, right? Thick hard pan within 20 centimeter. What do you mean by hard pan? Yes, hard pan means, can anybody explain what is the hard pan? Yes, Tade is Tareki and Mehmai. Normally, when we are uh, doing paddy cultivation, for good example, right? When you are doing paddy cultivation, you know uh, the, the field should be muddy, right? Mudder the end only. But when it is muddy, uh, we can't walk on the paddy field, right? Under the the but when we are putting our foot uh, in the field, you can feel, right? You can feel like a couple of people are in the field. We are walking on the paddy field, but it is very difficult. When we are walking, at some point, our foot uh, will solidly contact with the soil, right? Solidly contact. That is the hard pan in the paddy field. Right? So you can see, uh, although even though we are uh, plowing the land, we don't uh, damage to the hard pan. If we do so, what will happen? It will, uh, it will percolate, it will drain off all the available water on the field, right? Because we need submerged condition. So we are retaining water by this hard pan. But when we are talking about the rubber cultivation, it should be in within 20 centimeters. 20 centimeters only about hard pan. We can't expect friability, aeration, drainage, and uh, all those things we can't expect. That means it will create some water logging condition. So it is not good for the uh, growth and development of the rubber tree, right? Then uh, more than 75% of rock outcrop. That means if you remember the um, experience of the rubber estate, you can see or you can um, remember there are some rock particles in the field, right? Api rubber field, rubber field, tanin tan gal dira, ne? Api niyam hama tanam podi podi, niyam podi podi na saamani pramane gal dira. So the rock outcrop means when we are talking about the overall land area, if we, the seventy five percent or higher than that is consist with rock that means it is not good enough to uh, grow rubber right the rubber hadanda a field hondane na to rocky particle thibuna gettle work na namu mechchara thiyenna hondane permanent water table within 20 centimeters right the same thing uh, because it needs some uh, drainage and uh, the i mean water holding capacity should be there but permanent water hold uh, water table should be in 20 centimeter. That means it will supply more water to the plant. Uh, it is very difficult to acquire or uh, it will grow well, but our ultimate goal is to have a good uh, DRC content in the latex, right? DRC means dry rubber content. 
then more than 90% of sand and low nutrient status. As I mentioned, what are the nutrients? Nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, magnesium and other trace elements, right? So more than 90% of sand, that means also, I mean, the soil condition is not good, right? Because we have to have a good drainage, friability, water holding capacity. These things can't be expected if the uh, land or the soil is very sandy, right? I think you understood what I said, right? If you have any questions, you can ask. Okay, let's move. Then the clones, right? We discussed about the variety. So we are using heavier brasiliensis and there are different clones. The first clone that we found is Wickham Collection. Henry Wickham is the person who identified the need of commercial cultivation and brought some uh, seeds, right? As you can see in this corner picture also, rubber seeds. So he brought some rubber seeds from the, uh, the forest and commercially cultivated. So Wickham Collection, we call it as Wickham Collection, right? Because uh, if you know the... Uh, the chemistry or the biology, you know uh, the gene plasm, right? That means how uh, the genetically uh, order or the genetical order happens with the cross pollination because these are cross pollinated plants. So uh, it will differentiate. It's not cross pollinated. I mean, we are crossing, right? We are when we are uh, reproducting. Uh, we are getting some of the parts of uh, some of the characteristics from our mother and some of the char characteristics from our father. So we are a mix of our mother and father. Likewise, uh, in rubber plantation also, when we are uh, collecting seeds, the characteristics of the specific plant of that seed will differ from the other, right? Because it is not Vegetatively propagated. If you vegetatively propagate, you can use the seeds. You can use the variation. So, the first clone or the collection is we call it as Wickham Collection. It happens in 1876. Right? And uh, 1919 seedlings were there. Right? That was the first recording. Seeds and seedlings of Wickham collection used for commercial planting in 1883, right? So you can see when uh, 1876, he brought some of the uh, seeds from the forest and cultivated in specified uh, land area. And after that, the seeds from that collection or that uh, estate uh, were taken into the other batch, right? Ekapara kabi forestering seeds collection So we come genetic base until IR International Rubber Research and Development Board expedition in 1980s. So uh, thereafter, there were different uh, research institutes, I mean specific rubber research institute. As you I don't know whether you know it or not, Sri Lanka has the uh, oldest rubber research institute, right? Rubber Research Institute in Sri Lanka, right? RRI is the oldest, oldest rubber research institute in the world, right? So they they are doing some expeditions, right? They are doing some uh, research and they are developing new clones according to their characteristics. Why we need these things? For example, if there is a specific plant, uh, who is, uh, who, uh, or uh, I mean, the plant which can, uh, you, for example, let's say pest and disease tolerance, right? Uh, there is a plant specifically tolerance or specifically resistant to pest attacks, right? What kind of pest attack is, you know, not the diseases, right? So there is a uh, specific plant. Dormancy. There are different. Sorry? They have dormancy. I'm not getting you. Tell me again, please. Dormancy, dormancy, kala tarane. Dormancy, yes, 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 yes. There is a dormancy period, but yeah, we'll discuss these things. Uh, normally, uh, not I mean, not as the other. I mean, coconut likewise. There are no any uh, practices we have to do because it is very uh, the viability can be uh, uh, the viability loss is high, right? Just after uh, getting the seeds, we have to cultivate. So the dormancy, the dormant period will fade off when we are. Uh, laying it on the sand. So I will explain these things, right? So uh, 
So they are doing some research and they are going to find out. Yes, where are we? Uh, let's say there's a plant with uh, resistant to pest, oh, sorry, diseases, right? And there is another plant uh, with high yield, but it is susceptible to that disease. So we can cross these plants and get the seeds and we can expect two things. Ne? We can expect two things, uh, either uh, high yielding and disease, uh, disease tolerance. On the other hand, low yielding and susceptible to pest and sorry, disease, right? Sometimes we can expect best characteristics from both plants. Sometimes the opposite can be happened, right? So that is why there is a separate institute to do research and introduce new clones. So types of planting material are the unselected seeds, seedlings. Then clonal seedlings. Third one with perfection of bud grafting. That is uh, introduced by Van Helden in 1917 and hybridization techniques clone material. Normally, uh, now we are practicing uh, the third one and the second one. Unselected seedlings we are not cultivating, right? Because at the Wickham's time, uh, he brought some of the, I mean, he brought many of the seeds that he can take, right? But there is no any selection procedure. Now within, I mean, uh, by the time we did so many research and we found out what are the high yielding clones. So now we have clonal seedlings, right? Okay. <laughs> then production of new clones. What are the objectives? Normally, the, the main objective is preparing or uh, making high yielding clones because as you know, we are not uh, we are not uh, harvesting any fruit from the field. It is uh, the latex, right? We are continuously extruding or we are continuously harvesting the latex from the plant, right? It is kind of a stressed plant, right? It's stress, right? Likewise, we are taking out the latex. Latex means uh, the composition or the compound inside the tree which can uh, circulate some things. Uh, I mean the, the important uh, materials to the plant and it should be inside the tree. Not getting out, right? But we are artificially or we are... shocks. Sorry? Transplanting shocks. Transplanting shock, yes. Yes, it is also there. Transplanting shock means uh, when, we are, uh, when we are planting, that means when we are uh, planting in a nursery. Normally, we are having nursery practices in these uh, rubber plants as well. So, when we are transplanting, that means when we are taking that plant from the nursery and plant it in the field. So, the transplanting shock means uh, the shock that can occur due to the climatic conditions and uh, the soil conditions and because in the nursery uh, we are maintaining that plant with intensive care right so we are maintaining in acclimatization uh, sorry acclimatization yes so uh, here why why you are asking that part i mean you need the clarification now you are giving I, I don't get your point because uh, now, yes, you are asking culture? that. tissue mm -hmm. culture? Yes, ask, ask me the question. You are just giving me some uh, terms, right? So what is the question? Hello. Just give me your question, then I can explain. Yes, you, because... Transplanting shock is also there because I, I explained because you uh, raised out the term, but here we are talking about the main objective is the high yield, right? So, uh, what are the other objectives? The growth vigor. Growth vigor means it should be a vigorous plant. If it is a uh, tiny plant and it doesn't have the strength to grow well, we can't uh, wound the bark, right? Because we are wounding the bark and taking out the latex. So, we have to have a vigorous plant, right? So, uh, other than the disease tolerance, as I mentioned, they are resistant to wind damage, right? 
because uh, as I mentioned, we are having slopey lands for the rubber cultivation. Slopey land means uh, the wind is there and uh, we have to have a good plant which can withstand with the uh, windy uh, conditions, right? As I mentioned, it is a very tall tree. Plant wind it is prone to fell off, right? area. So, so, sorry. Hilly areas. Hilly areas, yes. So, uh, so we are yes, we are planting in the hilly areas. Not actually uh, most of the hill country, but uh, the, as I mentioned, more than 45, uh, 45 degrees, it is very difficult to plant, right? So, uh, what are the other characteristics that we are expecting? Re resistance to tapping panel dryness, right? Tapping panel dryness is a physiological disorder. So, it is not a uh, uh, disease actually it is not a pest attack it is something happens inside the tree so uh, spontaneously it will stop uh, the latex production right so we don't know why because there are so many research are going on but still we can't find the actual cause right so it is a physiological disorder so we have to have good clones uh, with minimum incidence of tapping panel dryness right then the timber production after taking out the latex for a uh, certain amount of a certain period of time we can we can't uh, tear i mean throw out the plant right because we invested uh, so much of money for this plant so after getting the latex out we can use this plant as a timber right it's a very good timber tree because uh, this is the only tree we can use for bending and crafting items right uh, because it has latex in the uh, timber, latex there in the but only the uh, shape without cracking, right? And the latex property is also there because uh, if we are having so many, I mean, higher production of latex, even though the production is there, the dry rubber content is lesser, that means 20 or 15 something, it is useless, right? Because average also we are expecting 30 to 35 percent of dry rubber content. So it should be there. All those things should be maintained when we are cultivating or when we are producing new clones, right? Then thereafter, we can do the site or the area specific recommendations, right? Because when we are preparing or when we are having clones, when we are introducing new clones, it is not generalizable to uh, all the areas in the country, right? So likewise, according to the climatic requirements, soil conditions, we can give the site or the area specific recommendation, right? Okay. These are the uh, these are some of the clonal recommendations. So you can see the plantation sector. There are different sectors. The, there are rubber plantations. Uh, they are doing the massive production. Smallholders also there. So there are three groups for plantation sector. You can see uh, RRIC hundred one zero two one two one one thirty RRIC means uh, it's something different. RRISL means Rubber Research Institute of Sri Lanka. RRIC means Rubber Research Institute of Ceylon, right? It's earlier case, right? PB Pranbasha, it is not from Sri Lanka. So PB 260, up to 10% of extent. Then RRIC 100, temporary suspended now because... Yes, Agalavate. Yes, miss, you can ask the question. Shrubber Research Institute, situated in yes. Sri Lanka. Yes, it is in Agalavatta, right? Rubber Research Institute is situated in Agalavatta. And uh, the, the uh, processing of the technology uh, party situation in Ratmala, right? So there are two areas and there are some uh, uh, regional or the divisional uh, area uh, offices as well, right? Okay, then the group two, RRISL 201, 205. Likewise, I'm not going to uh, give you all those things uh, to buy hard, right? 
just for your understanding, no need to buy hard, but there are uh, three different groups, right? And in the small hold sector also, there are three different groups, group A, group B, and group C, right? So you can see the most commonly uh, cultivated plant or the rubber clone is RIC 100 because it has good yielding uh, ability and uh, disease, disease tolerance ability. But when you are having the same plant for a longer period of time, the pest and the diseases will occur because they will uh, come up with new strategies and attack to the plant, right? So that is why we are not allowing RRIC 100 in uh, further cultivation. Now it is temporarily suspended. And the third part is for higher elevations, right? About 300 mean sea level, 300 meters or up to 900 meters mean sea level. That means uh, in these areas, they are very prone to wind barrier, wind damages and uh, the slope is very high. So we have to recommend different uh, plants. Here also you can see 100 and 130, right? Okay, just remember these clones, a uh, few of them from groups so you can understand, right? Okay, then the land preparation, we will move to the agricultural practices since we don't have much time and we have to cover so many parts. Now it's okay. The main objective is to establish a new clearing, right? New clearing, what do you mean by new clearing? New plantation, right? Api clearing ka kya ni manu? Alu temma pala hadhano. Himna ta alu teriya ka vavano. Tibba dana ka tine vahin karla vennu pula. Himna ta alu temma api khwaga tana ka plant karla vennu pula. Right? New clearing order, replanting with a complete stand of vigorously growing rubber plants. Right? A complete stand is mandatory to achieve a potential land productivity level of the prone plant. Right? So that means we have to have a what? Complete stand. Complete stand means uh, when you are having a plantation, there is a uh, recommendation for planting distance. Sometimes it may be, I will show you the distances. So you have to have uh, all the patches filled with plants and all these plants should be uh, tappable. Tappable means that you, have, you can take out the latex. Otherwise, you are maintaining the area. You are doing all the cultural practices. You are doing all the agricultural practices. You are doing all the weeding, fertilizer application and those things for the total land area. You are getting the measurements with the total land area, but there are some missing points, right? So that means it will reduce your uh, ability or your, uh, your potential to take out the maximum from that plantation. That is why you have to make sure that you are getting or you are having a complete stand, right? Without any patches, without any uh, vacancies, you have to have a complete stand, okay? So what are the primary activities of land preparation? First one is, in all stand, identify WRD means white root disease. That is the most infected or impacted disease that we can find in the rubber plantation, right? Apeer rubber plantation nege dakin ni pulwa, narakama disease sakatama white root disease can, right? So in old stand, right, in new clearing or we are having a new uh, land area to cultivate rubber, we can't identify because we don't uh, have previously grown rubber trees, right? So in a old stand, we can find. Apeer te parane hegana identify karan pula, ame palliate white root disease sadla dina. If there is a white root disease plant, that means it can be spread uh, in the adjacent trees as well. So what you have to do, this is the pre preliminary activities. That means when you are preparing the land, you have to do these steps or you have to follow these steps first. Then you can uh, go for the uh, other land preparation activities. So what you have to do, first you have to identify white root infected plants, right? I will uh, show some photographs, then you can uh, easily understand what are the infected plants, right? Then demarcate patches including two healthy rows, right? What you have to do? I, uh, first, uh, let's say this is the plant, right? Here you can uh, identify the plant. Then what do you have to do? You have to identify two healthy rows, right? Demarcate patches including two healthy rows. Then, so let's say, name right? This is the stand, right? Okay, right. It's like this, right? So two healthy rows means 
Sí, y el Zulia. Now, what are healthy rows? This is the infected plant. So, two healthy rows, right? Another one should be there. Sorry. One, two. Okay, now what you have to do? You have to identify two healthy rows. May better decay, may better decay. So, here, this is two healthy rows, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, right? Okay. This is the patch. Two healthy rows, right? The patch is two healthy rows. Identify the patch. Identify the patch. So, we can identify this patch, right? In these patches, we can identify this patch, right? In these patches, all roots up to pencil thickness should be removed, right? Up to pencil thickness, right? What do you mean by pencil thickness? Pencil thickness means pencil uh, thickness. Thickness. yes, and so the thin of Mahatma roots, right? Because we can find so many. Uh, I mean, the diameter of roots can be differ, but pencil thickness means that the tiniest roots that we can find in the rubber plant. So that means we have to we have to clear the land, we have to dig the um, soil, and we can find we can find out all the pencil thickness. Uh, Fruit, then we have to remove these things. Then how we can do this? In these patches, all the roots up to pencil thickness should be removed, collected, and burned in situ. What do you mean by in situ? In situ can what that? What is the meaning of in situ? And the in same place. Yes, in the same land, right? We we it's are not right. taking yes, we are not taking these things out uh, from the plantation because so, no. the economy means in situ conservation we are not talking about the conservation here this is in situ means yes stania is correct white root is identify two healthy rows gatta tena okoma tika galewa galawala root sika mokada white root ne so it it's a root contact disease hari ekka root tagena anit root tagena ekai pencil thickness ekak ayin karanne yatting me roots okkoma root ball ekak contact right etakota api ekin gena anit tagena ekai anna pulwa e hindai langa thiyena rows healthy rows dekak karagena we are suspecting that they have already infected with the white root disease and we are removing all the things and then we are not taking it out from the plantation we are burning it in situ hari etana ma diyala api puchchana right Monkey grubber is the suitable for complete uprooting, right? Monkey grubber, you know, I will show a photograph. Monkey grubber is the um, the equipment or the machine that we can use because it is very apni hitna wagila ke hilla bada agina hoga tum hatar dene kusan be lo kuga. So we have to use a machine, right? We call it as monkey grubber. Then uprooting could be commenced in northeastern monsoon season when soil is moist and completed in January following year. That means. With the monsoon, it will uh, we can expect heavy rains. So the soil is very uh, loose and it is very easy to uproot, right? Because as I mentioned, there is rocky outcrop, right? Galut dekka thamai me polavati ani. Thode galasalad me roots gila mudhar tadha vela thi ani. Apni kam mudhar paar bugale gila me galu dumbo thi ani. Ar pencil thickness roots thi ko koma. Atu li thuru ano. Thode apni ganne vani apni arahu vani portion thi koi thare apko mar galu gatra. But uh, the infected roots might be there and it will disseminate or it will uh, cause the impact to the adjacent rows, right? So we have to make sure that we are removing all the uh, roots. Okay. All vegetative matter must be removed and remnants must be burned. So vegetative part. Because the contact happened with the roots, so we are not taking out the roots, right? Okay, so this is how you can uh, practice or how you can uh, execute the uprooting process. So you can see here, they are having a, a, a strong rope and uh, attached to the tree. And this is the monkey grubber, right? This is the monkey grubber. So attach that uh, rope to the monkey grubber and you can uh, rotate the wheel, right? Thereby it will give the pressure and it will uproot, right? Monkey grubber. So if you want to see the action of the monkey rubber, find it in the YouTube, some of the videos are there. Okay. This is how you can see the white root infected uh, plant uprooted, right? So, the, the here you can see white areas, white 
you see this is white root infector so is you can see the infection yes it's a disease it uh, it is actually uh, yes it is fungus right so uh, yeah we'll discuss these things right monkey and white root disease can the pestilent diseases i will touch uh, yes i will explain to you so you can ask question by there so here we are talking about the cultural practice sorry the agronomic practices that is why i'm uh, explaining this white root disease right okay then then planting distance and lining so for soil conservation and easy implementing of agricultural practices contour planting must be done in steep lands as you know we are having slope lands or steep lands so we are practicing contour planting mark dead level contours starting from steepest part of the land contour lines will diverge to finish the unbroken lines what do you mean by that contour planting can can anybody explain what do you mean by contour planting If the land is like this, right, you can't plant as you want. So you are planting like this, right? In same height. First, you identify the area with same height, right? There are some steep lands, right? So you have to stop it here, right? Sometimes like this, right? So the, these are the contours, right? So contour planting means we are planting in rows. So rows are identified with the same height, right? Cut to Satahana? If, ट्रेकाटी and there is no any area in the same height because this this might be slope land right maybe at the home the villa and but home again so we can't find a good slow area from this side right so we have to stop it here and we have to uh, increase the distance and we can have another one here right so i think you got the point right okay these are the planting distances recommended distance you can see 4.5 meter to 4.3 right so if it is square definitely it should be 4.5 right 4.5 to 4.5 but 4.3 is the recommended way then 3.5 to 5.5 avenue right square planting means uh, so you can see the clearance or the stand as uh, squares a bit kotu kotu vidiyada that in way avenue means uh, it's like uh, the path right 3.5 to 5.5 so uh, when you are looking at the plantation you can see according to the steepness right according to the uh, the sloviness of the land we can decide what is our uh, recommendation of the planting distance then 2.5 to 7.75 meters that is intercropping because some there are some plantations where they practice intercropping intercropping means there are two types monocropping and intercropping i don't know whether you familiar with these words monocropping means we are having only the one plant or this uh, the the expected economical plant it's a bogavaga yes coconut only but when you are doing intercropping means within that distance you can uh, manage some of the other crops uh, most of the case cash crops where you can take out uh, the the profit uh, without uh, within short period of time right so planting density is designed to give a stand of 515 to 520 plants right remember this one na huh? 515 to 520 plants per hectare right so what is the recommendation 515 to 520 otherwise that means you are not utilizing your land in efficient manner right you have to make sure that you are having around 515 to 520 plants per hectare okay here you can see uh, the contours how they plant right podi podi pala hito la dinna pena contour planting right 25% to 30% more soil moisture retention in 1 cm soil depth and that's a recommend uh, that's a character that we can find right uh um, yes now i need to okay. then soil conservation the a structure to contour plantation yes good right i i didn't explain that there are there's a there's a uh, equipment called a frame right a frame um, 
I don't think you need to cover that part in this uh, diploma course. That is why I didn't mention it. It is like this, right? A frame, right? So we use this A frame, right? There is another balancing one. So you can use this A frame to have contour planting. So it will give you the same, uh, that means same height distance. So you can manage or you can have the adjustment. So you, if this is the uh, distance that you want, you can keep one from here. If you are planting here, one plant, you can choose. Uh, you can so by having this A frame, because distance is also there, there's a uh, balance or there's a uh, there's a row uh, with uh, what do you call it? a dispense. Again, lambda by you know, you can make a balance karama with it, you can get a and pull That is A frame. That is the equipment that we are using to have uh, the same height areas, right? Okay, so we will move to the soil conservation, right? Since rubber is planted in steep terrains, right? Areas with high rainfall and also due to exposing to soil during uprooting of old sand, soil conservation is important to preserve the fertility of rubber growing area. So that means we have to make sure that we are ensuring or we are doing all the practices to conserve the fertility, right? Because when you are applying fertilizers, it can be run off, right? Because with the rain, heavy rain, definitely it will be run off and uh, gather in the lower ground sometimes it will be in uh, uh, water reservoirs and uh, so many bad things can be happened so make sure we have to make sure that all the soil conservation practices are done soil conservation methods should be capable of improving the soil tech structure protect from rainfall impact slowing down runoff and providing safe ways to access runoff right if i ask you a question what are the uh, importance of soil conservation these are the answers Right, improving soil structure, protect from rainfall impact, slowing down runoff, and providing safe ways for excess runoff. Right, so because we can't retain all the um, water coming from the rain, so we have to allow it to drain off or allow it to run off, but in a safe way. That means it shouldn't carry all the nutrient compounds in the uh, high area. So, the nutrients Udama area high elevation soil Soil conservation methods could be categorized into three uh, three categories, right? Agricultural, biological, and mechanical. In these three ways, we can do the soil conservation. Okay, we will see one by one. What are the agricultural methods? Mainly the land preparation should be completed before monsoons. Why? What is the reason why we are completing the land preparation before monsoon? Hmm? What is the reason? Anybody? Why we complete before monsoon? Huh? Yes. To conserve the soil. Yes. In in which ways? How we can conserve the soil? From runoff. What happens from runoff? Yes, from, from runoff means when we are doing the land. Machine. Sorry. Rainy season in the plant. Uh, machines use current mm, No, no, that's not the case. When we are preparing the land, we are disturbing the soil structure, right? That means we are we are taking out or we are bottom up, right? I mean, bottom up kilan kya nikhe na. I mean, at least the na then I mean, passa udha diye na tika crust ka value na pula. I soil erosion can be happen. Yes, there is a message. Yes, good. That's what happens, right? Because when we are wounding or when we are disturbing the soil structure and we are bottoming up or we are taking out the inside part of the soil, right? It will loosen in the soil, right? Soil lega loose vena. I mean, the soil lega soft and particles. Sorry, they are has sticky particles. Alena sulu vena. That you mean money? Yes, uh, is something. But here we are talking about soil conservation. That means when, when we using the soil and heavy rain comes, it will uh, mix with. Water. I mean, 
mulch means we can lop off Vasun? or we can cut ah vasundano yes dai kanithar therna dan nema etane de kiyanne mokadda api uh, we can cut off the uh, vegetative part of the tree and we can use it to cover the base of the tree right so it will retain the moisture it will give some nutrients after degrading right so that is the uh, that are the, uh, those are the uses of the uh, mulch then mulching is another practice that we can use lopping of tree legumes right such as crotaleria flemingia glericidia or paddy straw can be used right a rapid method that can be used right because we can't plant or having ground covers Uh, just after uh, planting trees because it will take some time right but within this period if there are heavy rains that we are expecting definitely it will uh, damage the soil so we have to conserve the soil so as a quick method we can use mulching this method is adapted by the other methods right why is preventing soil and soil moisture loss in mulch okay i explain this then mechanical method the third one right main drains natural drains line drain lines that are already exist should be used right uh, except when more than 60 meter apart right natural main drain can be improved by construction of river slope pits spill platform and spill splash cushions okay i will show you some uh, photographs then you can understand main drain means we are using the drains already exist in the land api slope land ekak gattot nikam wasse enakota api dakkinu ekak tanaki waturu okkoma ekadula diyal lakuge palle hadena kiyanne normally e slope ekak etanta concentrate la dinne etoda etane indama ekak dinne anne e wage api tiyene wada main drain ekak api amwen etanin waturu enakota taw tanakin kapanne api eka maapa develop karala hondara gallalala hadala gan so if it is not 60 meter apart again taw meter 60 ak enakota taw ekak construct main drain right land ప్రయర్ టు రెయిన్స్ if cover crop not present right if cover crop or because cover crop is not there definitely it will impact to the soil so we have to have a good drainage system otherwise when and the hammer then what will fall and you pass out you know earth cut from drains should be heaped on the upper side of the drain right soil deposited should be regularly and deposited above the terrain api terrain ekke ఓకే <laughs> ఉడింగ్ ఏ వాటర్ పల్లేడను ఐ థింక్ యు అండర్స్టుడ్ వాట్ ఐ సెడ్ రైట్ ఇఫ్ యు డోంట్ అండర్స్టాండ్ ప్లీజ్ ఆ హియర్ యు కెన్ సీ రైట్ దిస్ దిస్ ఇస్ ద మెయిన్ డ్రైన్ రైట్ మెయిన్ మెయిన్ డ్రైన్ సీ అండ్ దిస్ ఆర్ ద లేటరల్స్ రైట్ దిస్ ఆర్ ద లేటరల్స్ రైట్ హియర్ హియర్ దిస్ ఇస్ స్టోన్ టెరస్ రైట్ 
మీ పల్లె అడమ స్టోన్ టెరస్ సమ్టైమ్స్ దేర్ ఆర్ స్టోన్ టెరసెస్ హియర్ బట్ హియర్ ఇట్ ఈస్ వెరీ సోయిల్ ఏరియా నో ఎనీ ఐ మీన్ ఇట్ ఈస్ వెరీ లెస్ రొకి అవుట్ ట్రూప్ సో దే కెన్ మేనేజ్ టు మేక్ లెటరల్ రైట్ రైట్ హియర్ యూ కెన్ సి రొక్ importance of weed management right so here you can see it is not well maintained so you can see here even though these rubber plants are there they are very thin me mena heeni harita handila na because all these weeds are competing with the uh, requirements or the nutrient requirements for the uh, rubber tree and also it is very difficult to move kohon weda navidinna hamma tanama dekka they are calling కలిం ఫోటో ఇక్కడ అన్నీ అందరూ అవి తిండి పులం అవి తిండి పార్ట్స్ గా క్లియర్ అది అర్థం బట్ వెన్ వీక్ కవర్దే అతులే సత్తు ఇట్లా తప్పిట మనందే సో ఎలిమినేట్ కంపిటిషన్ ఫర్ వాటర్ రైట్ వీడ్ మేనేజ్మెంట్ అప్పుడు ఓనే బికాస్ వెన్ వీ అప్లైంగ్ వాటర్ ఓ దవైలబుల్ వాటర్ విల్ అబ్జర్వ్ బై వీడ్ సో ఇట్ ఈస్ వెరీ డిఫికల్ టు హ్యావ్ ద అడిక్వేట్ అమౌంట్ ఆఫ్ వాటర్ టు ద రబర్ ప్లాంట్ రైట్ సో వీ హ్యావ్ టు ఎలిమినేట్ కంపిటిషన్ ఫర్ వాటర్ ఎలిమినేట్ కంపిటిషన్ ఫర్ న్యూట్రియన్స్ పెస్ట్ అండ్ డిసీజ్ మేనేజ్మెంట్ సమ్టైమ్స్ Uh, the weed plants will be the host or the habitat of the pests sakkes la inkolutin weed plants ayo thiyena it was ego level la sakkaranne sap ekema nattam fan kola ganne mokenda ah ape commercial crop ekema nattam mokenda rubber plant right facilitate management of plantation of the whole that means we can go there and tap are if we don't allow them to uh, move here and there we can't take out because every day as a routine practice we are tapping or we are taking out the latex for that we have to have a proper path that means we have definitely we have to have a proper weed management right okay rubber plant in material production different types of plant in materials are used right unselected seeds variable uh, and poor in overall performance as i mentioned we come brought some of these uh, unselected seeds but now we are not doing so we are having clonal seeds right from superior variable uh, individuals or gardens however variability is evident why we are always having the characteristics from the uh, mother plants that means uh, from the father and the mother right that means always we are having variability we can't expect the performance as uh, in the parents right parents get the performance kan bala porot denna ba clonal seeds hoy but the budded plants that's the uh, the the best way that we can have plant in materials budding on the seedlings as developed by van helton in 1970 since 1920 budded materials are used api edda thamasi wissinda monada use karanne budded material variability due to stock minimized by selection because we we can't take the stock part stock and the cyan right i think you know these things in your uh, basics this is the stock right this is the cyan uda ga adam and kiyan so stock we have to have seed nursery or the seed germinate and we have this this uh, branch we are taking out from a high performance or high yielding plant so we are attaching this to the root stock sometimes characteristics of this root stock might be occur or might be displayed in this uh bud portion so if we if we do so definitely we can uh, minimize or uh, we can minimize in the selection process you can uh, minimize the variation and you can expect the uh, good quality of the good characteristics from the high yielding plants right okay then uh, nursery is for planting material production the objective is to produce quality plants through screening and good nursery practices right so we have to have a nursery nursery is the place where we are giving the intensive care for the plant 
then seedling nurseries to generate quality seedlings through selection of new seeds, early germinators, and vigorous seedlings, right? And budwood nurseries to produce vigorously growing buds of true type plants, right? So budwood nurseries are there where we can take out the buds and seedling nurseries to have the stock, right? There are two types of nurseries, right? Remember. Then the rubber seeds, planting material for seedling nurseries. As I mentioned, we can't have the So we can do the bud, budding, right? Budding means we can have a bud from a highly uh, performing uh, plant and you can attach it to a rootstock. So this rootstock must be prepared with seeds. Seed fall season is August in wet zone and February to March in intermediate zone. Seeds of all recommended plants could be used, right? Apita recommend kaldin all mega seeds can be according to our expectation, right? Seed production high in relatively dry areas, right? Because it happens with uh, with uh, what do you mean uh, with the uh, the humidity of the area? Well, in order to make mega popuran, it will burst off and uh, disperse the seeds, right? If you have that experience, well, na kalda ara gedi pupurano. Pupurla thamai mama yoga na katha karene seeds palle ra den. So due to short viability, kaud mai ngayo ne den. Ma dormant si kena. So here it has very short viability. Collection and germination should be done within two to three days of seed fall. So you can see if we need a good quality planting material, definitely we have to collect it. And if it is a viable seed, you can uh, identify with the color, with the weight. Seeds are viable. The viable seed is the same. Fresh seeds are glossy and heavy. Storing should be avoided. right? We can't store. If necessary, spread under cool and dry conditions. Sometimes we have to transport it. right? Because if, if we are collecting it from far distance, we can't transport it. Uh, to the field uh, in the same time because we have to collect some amount of seeds so we have to wait until two to three days so if so we need to spread it under cool and dry condition then germination beds one meter width and five uh, five centimeter thick layer of pure sand is required right length is one meter to one meter was thousand seeds right remember Right for thousand seeds, it is only one meter, one meter. Right, that means four kilograms. Abhi a kilogram hatara karagi ne himnata kilo seeds daha kada one meter, one meter bed dega kete. So we are planting purely in sand, not any other medium. Right, abhi value orda thamma germinate karan. Number of seeds used in germination bed bed should be twice the stock plants or four times the plant requirement. Anna. Right. When we uh, estimation estimating the plant requirement, let's say we are having one hectare. What is the stand? One hectare. What is the stand that we have to maintain? Hmm? I already explained. What is the stand that we have to maintain? Anybody? Hectare ka pala kiya kabi wawan wawan samani good stand ka na. 520, sir. 500? 515 to 520. Yes, good. 515 to 520, right? So let's say 520, that's the maximum that we can go. So 520 plants, that means our seed requirement for the germination bit is four times, right? Two thousand and eighty, right? Abita, two thousand and eighty seeds we need, right? Because our requirement is five hundred and twenty plants, right? For the number of seeds used in the germination bed should be twice the stock plants, right? Eva gide gunayak pendo na stock plant hathra gunayak pendo na abita avashita hai because we are doing another screening in the stock plant as well. Seeds should be pressed into the sand and covered with sand until the top of the seed uh, stream. Should not be exposed to direct sunlight and need to be covered if necessary. Definitely, we are applying a cover to avoid sun drying, right? 
water every other day, but prevent water logging, right? That is why we are you know, using the sand, sand as a medium. So we are preventing the water logging, but water should be there because if when we are using sand, it can't retain water. Definitely, we have to provide water, right? Need to protect from animals. Most of the cases, uh, animals keep on betting in the ants, right? Ants, they are coming into the seat and they are uh, they are drilling it out and they are taking out all the uh, the the food that they can take from the sea, right? Kumbia will like hill girl like you know, hala. So we have to avoid. And some of the animals are also coming. If seeds are new, germination in seven days. Otherwise, twelve to fourteen days, right? We can expect well viable, good, heavy, glossy seed germination within twenty days, right? Only early germinators should be used to raise top plants. 50% of the total of seeds, right? See, as you can see, we need four times for the four times of plant requirement. But here in the uh, rootstock nursery, we have to take only 50%. It's rootstock Transplant as seeds germinate when seedlings are five to cent eight centimeter tall. Seedlings centimeter paha katak can order a more than eight transplant karno a pay younger polybag. We are having uh, these plants in the root uh, germination bed that is sandy. Now we have to uh, transplant into a polybag, right? Okay, here you can see different shapes of uh, seeds, right? According to the clone, right? So you can see germinated seeds, right? May germinate May these are the covers that we can use. May, uh, I think here these are the seeds. They are in the soil. So this is the cover to avoid direct sunlight. After five to eight uh, centimeter tall, you can transplant into polybags. So we are using only fifty percent of early germinators, right? Early germinators fifty percent with the we can through the anchor, right? Okay. Then here you can see these are the seedling nurseries. So polybag rootstock nursery, right? Now this is the rootstock. Abi germination bedding aragena. The rootstock we did use current minimum, right? I already explained there are two parts in the uh, seedling, rootstock and the cyan or the uh, the bud root, right? So this is the rootstock. 300 or 500 gauge. Uh, no need to buy hard these things are huh? single row, double row, right? You can see here double row, right? Rows the gap with space in the other. This is for your uh, understanding agronomic practices such as culling, fertilizer application, disease control, watering are essential. What do you mean by culling? Can anybody explain what is the meaning of culling? Hmm? Sorry? Yes, yes, culling. Kalim means we are we are we are removing uh, poorly grown plants, right? Api kukul beta uha dena kora kalim kiya practice ke dena. Api under a poli kalim na chicks la grow karna kora farm me kora. Oye adhe tayvi dinne. Mena tang yaal yonda performance na. Ham bila ham later ki lekora. Definitely we are removing those chicks. We are not feeding them because our ultimate goal is having a good quality or high um, high amount of meat, right? Under a musti na kukul ke dene. Eva ge. When we are having poor performing plants, poor growing plants, definitely we can we have to take them out, right? So this process is called culling. So the fertilizer recommendation is like this: uh, pre-cut. I'm not going to explain, right? This is for your own understanding because uh, you can read these things. Just recommendations are there. No need to explain. Disease management. Uh, is a must in the nursery, so it is mandatory to ensure uninterrupted growth of nursery plant. Applying fungicides uh, once in two weeks in wet weather every week or once in four days in adverse conditions because most of the nurseries are prone to wet weather because high rain seasons are there. So wet weather is very uh, healthy or very uh, very favorable environment for fungal diseases, right? Uh, during oidium epidemic, oidium disease is something that we can expect in these nurseries uh, in February to March. Sulfur dusting or sulfur containing fungicides can be used. Do not use 
same fungicide continuously because it will make resistant to the uh, fungicide, right? The mancoseb, carbon dism, captan, these uh, fungicides, sometimes they are banning, right? Some but normally these are the recommendations group B bodex mixture copper containing fungicides these are the fungicides that we can use alternatively okay now I'm going to give you homework right refer from online sources and familiar with these procedures because there might be some questions in your exam for green body and crown body right we don't have time and in your slot in this because we have to cover all three plantation crops within this time slot. So I'm going to, I'm not going to explain these things, but that is your independent learning, right? Green body and crown body. So it's these things, right? Okay, then field establishment. Planting hole should be 60 by 60 by 75 centimeter. Should be cut, refilled with topsoil, not external matter. That means topsoil can be done. Udamathina soil, Abayetan Udathin, Anitiva Udathina Calibari Anchor Farm, getting in a soil lake. Hari the Apita soil lake killer Gandapulantil, Api, Walla Kapala, Yatradala, Isel Hadra, and allow it to settle one month ahead planting, right? The massacre Kalintamai may another planting was Hadan. Then the planting season in wet zone, it is southwest, is the major season in northwest, northeast, it's minor. Intermediate zone, northeast is the Major according to the uh, expectation of rain. Up here, Vasta take more Abido Hamathantum, Vaturadan Bell, field plan Karagila, Abdigila, Vaturadan Bell, who are related. Planting material only young budded plants are recommended. As you know, now we have three methods, right? Unselected seedlings, selected clones, and budded plants. So now we are using only budded plants because we know the expected clone and the outcome of that plant, right? We already know. So, what are the importance of young budded plants? Less production time and cost. Definitely, because if we are using seed plants, it will take some time. But here only we are using rootstock and we are combining it with the sign or the, uh, the required portion, vegetative part of the plant. And we can have a good quality plant with a short period of time and easy handling. Ability to select vigorous, vigorous plants because selection is happening two ways, right? Two times, right? That is why we are having four times of uh, field crop requirement in the seedling nursery. Ability to select vigorous plant, undisturbed root system because we are not disturbing. Otherwise, if we are maintaining seedling plants, we have to uproot it with the roots. But here we are maintaining rootstock nurseries in poly bags, right? Just we have to remove the polybag again, plant 100% field establishment because uh, and, uh, when we are doing or when we are planting seeds, we don't know whether it will plant or not. And the time also, germination time, we, can, we can't have a clear stand, even stand, right? Vigorous stand, even growth should be there. Then we can start the tapping at the correct time, right? Okay. Then uh, selecting a quality plant. How we can select a quality plant? Two leaf holes, right? Leaf holes, right? Ah, okay, I will show you what are leaf holes. Color of leaves, height of plant, stock sign angle, sign diameter, size of leaves, number of leaves in a hole. These are the main selected criteria for a quality plant. Then preparation and transportation. How we can prepare? Only plants with top hardened hole, right? There are two holes, right? Maintain leaf holes can be right? This is a one leaf hole, this is the another, right? Only harden two leaf holes at least. Right? So, okay, I will show you one hardened hole. Uh, tailing 10 days prior to planting. Tailing means we are cutting the uh, tap root. From because when we are having uh, the poly bag with the plant for a long time, it will penetrate through the poly bag and will attach to the soil. So we have to first remove the tap root. To avoid the transplanting show, 10 days prior, we are cutting down the tap root and we are allow it to settle down the shop, right? Transportation without damaging plant or losing root. We have to make sure that it is properly stacked. 
hari ini ada asal lagi yang lain. Otherwise, it will lose. Nih, hari ni ada badan ni kerumah tu, nara bawat lagi dia nama root system ni damage jenah. So, the planting. Don't tell me that. Okay. Uh, adjust the depth of the hole because we are we are filling the topsoil and now we have to make sure the correct depth. Graft union should be few inches below the ground. Okay, graft union. What is the graft union? This is the graft union, right? Here. Yeah. Right? This is the graph union. This is the graph union, right? This is the angle. Top, median stock sign angle again, min mega. Then stock the it's not a good plant, right? So it should be a straight. Right? Angle like adwila the end. So graph union negative. Okay. Uh, I'll take union few inches below the ground. 15 centimeter plant. Basal fertilizer not added. We are not adding any basal fertilizer. Remove base of the poly bag and plant. What we are doing, we are removing the poly base of the poly bag. When uh, refilling soil should not be pressed hard. We are not pressing hard. What is the method? 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 What is the stress? So, this is a good quality young butter plant. You can see here two hard holes. And uh, you can see the angle, right? How it vigorously grown. These are the plants with immature top leaf holes, right? Ne? Top leaf hole like immature. Maybe I take a mature not well, ne? top part take a mature. So it is not good for transplant, right? So you can see this is the good one. Okay. So you can see this is the tailing. See, when you angle it, you can see the penetrated tap root. So you can use a second ear, right? Tailing up the tap root with prior to uh, uh, with pair of second years before planting. Ten days before we are cutting down or we are cut off the uh, tap root, right? See, this is how you can measure the height. Normally, we are not using these type of uh, rulers because all the planters they know by experience what is the correct depth to place the plant, right? Then what? Removing the base of the plant here. By using a knife or a paper cutter, you can remove the uh, base of the polybag and you can insert, right? Okay, after field, uh, field planting, remove lateral branches up to 2 to 2.5 to 3 meters, right? Meter to not have to what in a branches. It is also a tree now. So, branches we have to remove because we have to have a vigorous trunk. Up to the trunk, otherwise, we can't tap. Gahe nagagan will tap current bay and you have to take a Clear trunk at the end. Plant 10% of total plants as a trench plant for infilling and replacing weak plants. That means when you're planting, there might be some cases where the planted material or the planted seedlings will die. Pest attack, disease attack, some transplant. So we are maintaining 10% of the requirement. Pansiya kapi hadana no, panaha kwena ma trench yaak vijiri patrin hadana wa. When there is some case, when there is a plant die, so we can replace by the same age plant. Otherwise, we can't expect the whole stand with the tappable block. Api tap karando ni ikam vila, ikak adha tap karla ani kalabani sa jivitna tap karando ni, it is not economical, right? If trees do not branch when 2.5 to 3 meter in height, induce branching by leaf folding or cap method, right? If it is not branching, we have to induce branching, right? There are two methods, cap method and leaf folding. Once lateral uh, uh, laterals emerge, remove the cap and promote the main shoot. Soil and soil moisture conservation methods need to be adopted. Tree bases must be kept weed free to reduce competition for nutrients and moisture. Then uh, leaf and root diseases. Pest damages, nutrient deficiencies must be identified early and treated, right? So you have to identify. First, we have to give the intensive care because just after transplanting, you can't um, allow it to grow it, it uh, in its own because you have to make sure that it, it is having the proper care and all the nutrients are there, right? An annual girth increment of 10 centimeters should be achieved within 120 centimeter height, okay? So that is the height we are commencing the tapping, right? From the ground level or the draft union, 
අපි අර කියන ග්‍රාෆ්ට් යුනියන් එක ත චුට්ටක් යටලා වෙන ගන්නම දාන්න. ඒ ග්‍රාෆ්ට් යුනියන් එක අපිට අඳුර ගන්න පුළුවන් ගහ ලොකු වෙනවා. From the graft union, right? Okay. If this is the plant, sorry, the tree, this is the graft union. If you follow my DNA, you follow the kit to my DNA. Method in the coach are the 120 centimeter. 120 centimeter height toling. The girth increment, right? Should be 10 centimeters. Right? Girth increment. Yeah. Annual girth increment. That means per year, the girth increment by 120 centimeter height should be 10 centimeters. Centimeter, because in this according, hammer out of them, centimeter the high gun, because in the gahe, mahatha value in the right. The stand per hectare must be maintained. That is why we are having a uh, additional trench to avoid uh, vacancies. Sir, the money plus nakila gahak manu, tagalatin feel karna. Because we have to maintain the proper stand. That is 515 to 520 plants per hectare. Right? Okay. These are pitfalls that you can see. But there is no branch. Right? Then what you can do? You can have the leaf folding method. Leaf folding can work. You can take the top portions of the, or the top part of the leaves and you can cover the top, the apical meristem. Apical meristem is the place where induces the uh the height of the plant or it will uh, it will induce the uh the top growth right not the lateral growth this is a cap method you can see here right use a cap right you are covering the apical meristem then you can see the branches what was the branches? I will again. Then you can remove the cap. Okay. Then uh, fertilization of immature plants, right? Okay. I will not explain these things, right? This is for your own reading. I will because uh, these are too technical, and uh, I will not. Uh, yeah, you can read these things, right? Come the apply karanne. What are the methods, right? That's for your own read method. So here you can see it's it's not clear enough. So this is a plan, right? In the middle you can see, and the area is clear, right? And you can have a trench, small trench uh, around the plant, and you can apply the fertilizer, and uh, you can close it, right? That is how you can apply. Fertilize. So there are site specific recommendations. So you have to do some site specific uh, uh, analysis to find out what are the uh, deficient uh, nutrients and thereby you can apply. Right? This is for your own reading. Uh, yes. Intentionally, I did, I included these things for your own reading. Right? Uh, this is how you do the site specific or the sample collection from the above canopy by having this type of long stick. They are collecting leaves, right? Then they are analyzing. And here also they are taking soil samples and taking it to the research institute or some other analytical laboratories. And they are analyzing what are the uh, lacking nutrients in that soil. Thereby they are recommending, okay, uh, this soil needs this much of potassium. So this is the recommendation, this much of kilograms you should apply to the stand, right? Okay, this is, I use this picture, then you can see the root ball, right? But again, eroded place, but you can see the root ball. Uh, here and there, everywhere, we can see uh, so many roots. So that is how it will contact with the other plant. Right? So these are the nutrient deficiencies. Right? Okay, I will explain nutrient deficiencies in another uh, part. But for your understanding, you can see uh, the tip burn, uh, midrib, uh, the decoloration likewise there are some deficiencies in terms you can identify i will talk these things in a separate one right okay that's all about uh agronomy but wait uh, there are some other things to cover as well any questions from the 
Any questions from this part? Anything you want to clarify? If so, you can uh, you can uh, you can ask from me directly. Uh, I will give you my phone number as well after this session. And uh, wait, we have another part to cover. Okay, I will slice slightly uh, go through with pest and diseases of uh, rub, uh, rubber. So, so you can can you see my slides? Hello. Yes, yes. sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so there are no, I mean, no any uh, economically uh, impactful. Pest in the rubber plant, right? Incidence of mammalian pest damages on rubber have become more frequent, right? Recent past due to invasion of their wild habitats. Normally, what we are doing, we are invading, invading their wild habitats, right? That is why they are depending on the plantations. A sattu in the plantation on the pest lagi. A 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 pest Modes of damage. Right? Young rubber plants may be destroyed, while mature trees also could be led to death during uh, ring bark condition. Right? Ring bark can samahara sattu gihe lamkar thakar ne. Ara gahe ati le ro. Right? They are uh, they are rubbing uh, in the bark, right? On the bark, and it will damage the bark. Right? Ring bark can ogi the ring bark kuna. Ring bark kine ati kela thiye. So if this is the plant. So the plant will die, right? Okay, procubarian, wild boar, uh, uh, somebody, deer, rabbit, monkey, bandicoot, cola, doing some damages, but they are not uh, very um, uh, significant, right? All they are. I mean, some uh, attacks. So, uh, rubber tree is free from serious damages caused by insects, right? Because it has uh, what? Latex. So, they can't bow. Atulta gila hil karagata mukhavene. Latex in the egulu marana. So, they can't uh, harm to the tissues due to the uh, sap or the latex, right? Rubber trees is susceptible to various diseases, right? Okay, I will show you some diseases. This is oidium leaf disease. It's powdery mildew. We talk it as powdery mildew. Uh, cause is, causal agent is oidium heavy. No need to buy hand, right? I'm not giving you those things. In, uh, uh, I really understand. This is the oidium disease. If you see this type of patches in the rubber plant, that is oidium disease and oidium leaf disease. The uh, causal organism is phytophthora. Right? So you can see RIC 100, 117, 130 are tolerant to this disease. Right? Eka yabi made clones, Sulfur dusting can be used to avoid oidium disease. Then colletotrichum leaf disease. Colletotrichum, uh, acute and uh, gliosporulus are the causal organisms. So this is the colletotrichum leaf disease. Resistant clones again 100 and 130. That is why 100 is also a frequent or widely used uh, clone in the plantations, right? This is cold region. Now you know idea, cold region, and coronaspora leaf fall. This is coronaspora leaf fall, right? If you see this type of, as I mentioned, showed you in the last um, slide, this is the coronaspora leaf disease, right? It's coppery brown, and you can see the patches, right? Again, RIC 100, 102, 121, these are the resistant varieties. Phytophthora leaf fall. This is the phytophthora leaf fall. 
So leaf fold in the sense that means it will defoliate, right? Not in the uh, proper refoli uh, defoliation. It will shed leaves in the wintering season. But here it will happen uh, not in the wintering season, in other seasons, right? Copper fungicides can be used. Again, 100, 100, 230, they have slow tolerance, right? Phytophthora, median, palmivora, other causal organisms. And you can see this dust, black color. I think yellow, right? Phytophthora leaf fall. This is, this is bark diseases, bark rot, right? Bark is the main important part to take out latex. So, bark rot means it will uh, rot the bark, right? Again, these are the resistant plants. I will give you this uh, presentation, but no need to take all the things down. But uh, for your easy understanding, I will share these things. Mm. White root disease. This is the main disease that we discussed. You can see the white root disease. Uh, we have different practices. We discuss these things. And this is the white root disease symptoms. You can see right? Uh, the the vigor is lost, right? And you can see the how the leaves are there. And these are the, this web structure in the root system, right? That's the white and fruitification is also there. Rigidiporous, microporous. Better to remember this name. Huh? Microporous, microporous. Uh, the right the, the fortification of this uh, uh the development right we can see like this okay so that's about the basics and uh, another part uh, disease management okay then uh, Okay, I will just touch. Uh, so, so is, yeah. Okay. Okay, minimizing crop losses due to interference of rain. Okay. Because when you are doing tapping, no need to buy hand these things, right? We are uh, having a practice called rain guards because in rainy season, it is difficult to tap or it is very difficult to, uh, what do you call, uh, difficult to do the practices because uh, the latex will mm, mix with water. Sometimes due to heavy rains, it will spill off, right? Not uh, guided to the collecting bucket, right? So we have to guard it. Right? That is why we need a rain guard. There are three types, rain guards, apron, gutter and kisan. Just remember what I am saying. Right? No need to buy hard all these things, but there are three types, rain guards, apron type, gutter type and kisan type. Right? This is the apron type. You can see there is a special uh, mode of applying, special gum. We can, uh, it's star based gum. So we are applying like a apron, right? So this is the gutter type. We are creating a gutter. So it will not fully cover the uh, tapping panel, but it will uh, avoid the contacting of the active uh, uh, area, right? Kisan type is also like that, but for your easy understanding, we are uh, these are the ones known in, known in. Okay, that's enough, right? So, wait. Harvesting. Okay, now uh, we have to cover the harvesting part that is with the processing. I will uh, I will do it with the next uh, next uh, class. That means with the processing, right? It's better to understand. Uh, 
Okay. If I okay, the, uh, this is the harvesting part. So you have to um, know the basics of rubber harvesting. We call it as tapping. Um, I will I will do a proper explanation about how to do harvesting and how this latex coming out from the tree because there is a physiology in the tree and there are latex vessels. I am not going to explain it today and because it is better uh, when you know the, uh, the the way of tapping and how to uh, do the tapping with the processing, right? So I will uh, do this in the next class, right? Next week, actually. So today, uh, I think we can wind up here. So I will do this part in uh, the next week. Okay, then uh, any questions so far? From the agronomic practices or pest and diseases, anything that you need to clarify? Monari Handathinan, Singhaling Hari, English Singhalayan. You can ask either in English or Singhal, I don't know Tamil, I'm sorry. But uh, yes, you can ask any question if you have. Okay, then if there's no questions to ask, uh, I'm going to stop here uh, today because today most of the part, uh, the uh, the coconut processing and also the tea agronomy part will be taken by the Sagara sir. And uh, I will be doing the higher portion in next day for uh, the, the tea processing and also the processing of rubber, right? So for today, I'm going to stop here and uh, I will. Uh, Wait, I will ask from the Sagar, sir. Sagar, sir is not here. Just give me a minute. Uh, can you hear me and can you see my screen? I have shared my screen. Yes, sir. Good morning. We can see. Okay. Very good. Recording in progress. Okay, you already know this uh, course module C2, commercial plantation crops. So under that, uh, you have two sub modules. Uh, the C2 one is economic practices of tea, rubber, and coconut. So under this subject, uh, we are going to discuss about three main plantation crops. So what are they? Tea, rubber, and coconut. But uh, in addition to tea, rubber, and coconut, there are other plantation crops such as sugarcane, cashew, and uh, some uh, minor plantation crops such as uh, oil palm, uh, So uh, and also some uh, coffee like plants but uh, mainly with this time we are going to discuss about uh, tea rubber and coconut so first in this week we will discuss the agronomic practices of these plants then next week we will discuss uh, the processing practices of these uh, plants tea rubber and coconuts okay, i think in the morning uh, brian sir already discussed with you about the rubber agronomy so uh, to now onwards, I am going to discuss about the agronomic practices of tea and coconuts. Okay, so uh, first of all, I will introduce myself. I am Sagar Pushpakumar, a lecturer uh, from the Department of Plantation Management, Faculty of Agriculture and Plantation Management, uh, Vibe University of Sri Lanka. Okay, then uh, we will start the session. I think now there are uh, 59 participants are there. So how many members or how many colleagues in your group, the Saturday group? This is the first time I am conducting lectures in your group. How many participants in this group? Not saying to accurate sir. Approximately 70 to 75 today joined. 70 to 75. So, uh, in the morning session, how many students uh, join? 75. 75. I think now 60 participants are there. I think uh, others will join later. So, 
until that we will start if not we can't cover the uh, rest of the things we think today okay as i mentioned earlier uh, now within these two hours we are going to discuss about uh, the agronomic practices of tea okay so tea uh, the family let's discuss about uh, the family and uh, the scientific names of this plant uh, so t is coming under family tsa tsa family is tsa and uh, the genus camellia family tsa and the genus of uh, this plant is camellia then the botanical name or the scientific name of this plant we call as camellia sinensis so the camellia sinensis is the botanical name or we call it as scientific name of this plant camellia sinensis so it is better uh, you should remember this name camellia sinensis then uh, first we will discuss about uh, the give me one second please okay so uh, first we will discuss about the history of this plant history of tea cultivation in the world uh, then uh, first of all according to the records uh, tea was first discovered by the chinese uh, emperor and we call as shennam so shennam is uh, the was a chinese uh, mythologically it has recorded that uh, he was a region mythological emperor so here in this picture you can see so in uh, 2736 bc uh, it is said that the emperor like his drinking water boiled before he drank it so normally and usually he was uh, drinking water after boiling so one day while uh, the servant began boiling water from he actually uh, while they they were tra traveling uh, so in a certain some place they sat and then uh, he wanted to drink water so what happened uh, they, her, her, his servant began to boil water uh, and so accidentally a dead leaf from a wild tree bush fell into the water so that's the history happen so accidentally suddenly a dead tree leaf fallen to the uh, that boiling pot boiling water pot so after that the servant did notice it uh, he or she did not recognize what happened but after that uh, that servant so or the presented that water to the empire so after this empire tasted that boiled water and uh, he was feel uh, some difference actually uh, found it very refreshing other than rather than the normal boiling water so uh, and likewise he wanted to search what happened and finally uh, he noticed that some leaf materials were in the boiling water so uh, likewise the tea came into the uh, drinking pattern likewise so first started from the china so tea was first spelled t in english language and pronounced as tray so the word also has a history so likewise the word t or tree derived from portuguese word cha so nowadays also we use cha 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 it likewise so cha is the first word uh, used to identify this drink or this plant the, it was a portuguese word uh, after that that 
word to write to T and now we use the term tree. So when we discuss about the Sri Lankan scenario, so in 1965, Sri Lanka was the largest tree exporter in the world. So do, uh, do you have any idea about uh, the current situation? Hmm? Are we still uh, the largest tree exporter in the country or largest tree producer in the country? What do you think? Sometime uh, some of your friends maybe work in the tree related industry or some of you have some tree plantations so that's maybe you selected this diploma course the plantation agriculture and plantation diploma because you already engage with the these plantation crops so what do you think are we still the largest tree exporter in the country in 2023 or 22 what do you think I ask simple question, then you can answer it, yes or no. You can simply unmute your microphone and give your answer. Mohammed Ashan, can you hear me? Are you there? Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay, very good. So what do you think? Hmm? I think it's reduced. Yeah, it's reduced, yeah. Maybe some uh, some of the reasons, and some other countries also started to cultivate tea. So likewise, at the moment we are uh, we are at the fourth place. Actually, I will show you the figures. So here you can see uh, top ten tea producing countries in the world. Producing countries. So according to the production, China is a uh, at the moment, the largest tree producer in the world. So here you can see uh, their production. So in metric tons, and next to the China, India, India could uh, so their place, the second place. After that, the Kenya, then the fourth place. Now we are at the fourth place according to the uh, tea producing countries in the world. Okay, then let's start about uh, the origin of this plant. So tea was originated in South Asian, Southeast Asia. And at the moment, it has distributed all around the world or all the countries. In 1867, the first commercial planting tea in Sri Lanka was undertaken by James Taylor uh, on 19 areas of the land on Lul Kadura estate, Hewa Hatta. So the Hewa Hatta, uh, the estate name is Lul Kadura estate. So this is the place, the first tea plant was planted by James Taylor in 1867. So now you can calculate uh, how many years from 1867 to now. So it's more than more than 100 or 115 years history we have with the tree plantation. So in this picture, you can see uh, a photograph of James Taylor. So he's uh, the person bring tea plants to Sri Lanka. Okay, after that, at the moment, there are 23 regional plantation companies in Sri Lanka. In this table, you can see uh, these 23 regional plantation companies. So in addition to these plantation companies, you already know some smallholders as well as in the house scale level, in the home garden level, uh, Sri Lankan people cultivate tea. So the 
plantation companies such as Agalavata, Agarapatana, Balangoda, Bogavata, uh, Alkadu, Abilipitia, Hapugastan, Hatton, Horana, Kahavata, Kegol, Kalinivelli, Kotagala, Lala, Modulsima, Malwata Valley, Muskelia, Maturata, Namunukula, Usalava, Talakale, Dubusa Lava, and the Watavala. So these are the 23 regional plantation companies. So as I mentioned earlier, in addition to these plantation companies, uh, we are cultivating tea in a small scale level as well as in the home garden level. Sometime in your home garden also, uh, you have cultivated some tea bushes. Okay, then I think now you have a kind of idea about uh, the history of this plant, how it uh, came to the commercial plantation industry and uh, how the tea drinking practices uh, came to the human life, mind with the human life. Okay, now it's time to discuss about the climate and soil requirement of this plant. So before that, I would uh, like to ask uh, one question from you again. So uh, any of you, your home garden, uh, have you cultivated tea, especially in uh, the upcountry region? Tea? Tea? Do you have any experience with the tea plants or tea cultivation? Have you seen this plant? Even uh, when you visit the areas like uh, Hatton, Talavakale, during your vacation or the trip, you may be visited. Yes, sir. Yeah, good. Others? Okay, I think some of you have that experience. Uh, you have feel that tree. You have observed that tree. Okay, then you can uh, refresh your memory. Then I will discuss the uh, theoretical part of this plant. Okay, then now we will start about the climate and soil requirement of these plants. So now... Using this knowledge, I think you can, uh, if you have an idea to cultivate tea, then you can start it. Because I will give you the necessary information and also the knowledge. Okay, then uh, first we will discuss about what are the suitable climate requirements to cultivate tea. So the climate requirement requirements mean uh, rainfall, and the temperature, relative humidity, wind. So those are the climate requirements. So the rainfall, this is the optimum annual rainfall. So to better growth of this plant, it is better if we can provide uh, the optimum annual rainfall in between 2,500 to 300 millimeter. This is uh, per year, annual mean per year rainfall. So annually, uh, this range of rain is required for better growth of this plant. However, uh, under this minimum annual rainfall, it means 102,000 millimeter should be there. If not, we can't cultivate the tree. So that's why we can't cultivate uh, the tea in dry zone in Sri Lanka. So we can't see tree plants in Polonnaruwa, Anuradhapura, Vaunia like district because uh, the rainfall, annual rainfall is less than the optimum or, or the minimum level. Therefore, it is very difficult to plant tea plant in those areas. As well as an even distribution without mark seasonality is also ideal. So this rainfall should be received to, uh, evenly, evenly distributed. Evenly mean in the uh, throughout the year, uh, rain should be received. If not, uh, if there are maybe some drought period or some uh, dry period, so 
it should not good for cultivating tree okay so then let's discuss about the temperature what are the temperature requirement for this plant again uh, the optimum ambient temperature or the environment temperature is in between 18 to 25 celsius so this is the ideal temperature so if the plant can plant receive the temperature in between 18 to 25 celsius so then plant can uh, go healthy as well as uh, healthy and so less vigorously however uh, the minimum temperature this is very important uh, the 13 celsius so it means if the temperature below the 13 that condition or that climate requirement or temperature requirement is not suitable for plant growth as well as the temperature higher than 30 celsius it also not good for this plant therefore the optimum temperature is 18 to 25 celsius so uh, if the temperature is 24 23 it's better as well as if the temperature is 27 28 it also better because it's not higher than the maximum level or 30 celsius are you clear any uh, question if you have any question please ask clear there are six please eight. clear sir yeah, okay, thank you. There are 66 students. Then one of you can answer my question, please. Okay, then let's talk about uh, the elevation. So tea we can cultivate in up country, mid country, as well as low country. So all the three elevations in our country, we have three different uh, elevations level up country uh, up mid and low likewise so up country mean if the elevation elevation can all that noity so the elevation is higher than the 100 1200 meter we consider that level is up country region so in between in uh, the elevation is less than 600 meter we consider as a low country so in between those two level uh, we call it as mid country so t we can cultivate all these three elevations up country mid country also the uh, low country okay that's all about the climate requirements uh, i think now you had a clear idea you have a clear idea about what are the rainfall conditions required to better growth of this plant what are the temperature requirements as well as the elevation okay then let's start about what are the soil requirements so soil mean we are going to plant a tree so all the nutrients and all the things plant uptake from the soil system therefore the better will develop as well as the uh, nutrient rich soil is very important to better growth of plant i think uh, you have already know about uh, the soil properties and all the things uh, there i think uh, there are there are several sessions on the soil science and plant nutrition subjects uh, so i think you have those basic knowledge okay so soil again there are several properties of soil we can characterize as soil physical chemical and also the biological properties so uh, soil ph is a soil chemical property so the optimum soil ph level of uh, the soil uh, the growth of t is in between 4.5 to 5.5 so looking this value 4.5 5.5 can anyone tell me is it soil uh, ph range is slightly acidic or slightly alkaline or neutral what do you think it acidic condition yeah very good yeah, i think uh, you know it this is slightly acidic condition because uh, normally the soil ph 7 7 is is we consider as neutral soil ph so soil is less than the 7 we name that soil is acidic soil and soil is higher than the 7 it 
it means eight nine we we Best can salute. hello Best salute. i didn't get your point what what did you tell Best saturation saturated no what what did you tell i'm asking uh, is this soil is acidic or basic acidic acidic yeah good acidic yes slightly acidic soil so if the soil ph is 7 uh, higher than the 7 it means the only ph 8 a 9 yes. uh, we call it as basic. basic yeah basic good basic or the alkaline soil okay the this soil ph is slightly acidic soil and uh, the soil texture soil texture is soil physical properties soil texture mean uh, the percentage of sand silk clay uh, percentages so loam and well drain soil is very best loam as a lesser well drain well drain kiyanne hondata watura behala yana soil ekak thamai honda water should be drain out easily uh, without logging watura fadine ne sandy texture sorry sandy texture uh not sandy sandy means it uh, the soil drainage is very high but the suitable soil uh, condition is in between sandy to uh, yes. silt yeah in between sandy to silt or clay uh, you know the clay soil is uh, completely uh, soil clay soil has poor drainage facility then the sandy soil has very high drainage facility but in between clay and the sandy soil is very good uh, the loamy soil is very good as well as the organic carbon percentage of the soil it should be around 3 to 4% organic carbon uh, you know organic carbon or the organic matter is very important for better growth of plants so without organic matter we can acquire uh, the rich soil organism population in the soil as well as uh, the soil organic matter contain lot of macro and the micronutrients therefore uh, soil organic matter is very important also soil organic matter improve the soil physical chemical as well as the biological properties so if you have the low soil ph then by adding organic matter we can enhance the soil ph so likewise there are bio fertilizer but yes please uh, just listen what i am saying and uh, answer according to that because i am not asking the examples for the organic fertilizer i am just explain uh, how do you define the organic carbon and advantages of them okay if not uh, you are telling everything so it may be disturb for me as well as the others okay so the soil groups suitable soil groups there are uh, you know there are several soil groups but all the soil groups are not suitable for cultivating tea because some soil may be can, having high ph value as well as some soil has a uh, high drain facility as well as low drain facility some soil contain very low organic carbon as well as some soil contain higher organic carbon therefore all the soils are not suitable for cultivating tea there are suitable soil groups like the red yellow for the soil as well as the reddish brown latisolic and the immature brown loam so these are the suitable soil groups for cultivating tea so among these three soil groups the largest extent of the tea cultivation we can identify in red yellow pod solic soil because the red yellow pod solic soil is uh complete the all the soil requirement it is the soil ph texture and the organic carbon percentage is uh, very uh, or we can uh, say as a high amount of these characters are match with the requirement of the tea plant therefore red yellow pod soil is the best soil as well as the largest soil extent we can identify this plant has cultivated uh as well as the ideal soil for tea cultivation should be also these characters at least 90 cm in depth 
you know in the soil we can identify in the some certain soil depth a soil bed or the rock soil uh, but if we can have the soil with at least 90 cm depth without any uh, hard soil or the hard pan so that soil is ideal as well as the contain less than 10% of gravel 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 uh, gravel means uh, rockiness rocks so it should be less than 10% 10% is the best it means uh, the soil should be at least 10% or it's must contain gravel no it's not if uh, the soil contain gravel it should be less than 10 ekan anwarem gravel thiyenne one kiyanne me kiyanne gravel thiyenawa nan gravel sita 10 ekata wada aduwen thamai thiyenne one if the gravel percentage is higher than 10% so that soil is not suitable for cultivating tea third one have less than 10% area covered by uh, boulders or rock outcrops this also not suitable so borders covered by rocks the large rocks it also not suitable api thora ganna bhoomiya godak gal thiyena ekak nan loku gal thiyenawa nan area eken cover karala so that sand that land also not suitable for cultivating tea okay that's all about the climate and the soil requirement of this plant okay this uh, just refresh your memory so what is the ideal uh, rainfall so what is the ideal temperature what is the ideal soil ph can you refresh or can you refresh your memory can you remember them what is the ideal temperature 18 to 25 celsius yeah 18 to 25 so what about the soil ph 4.5 to 5.5 yeah 4.5 to 5.5 very good so i think uh, you are with me now you have a clear idea about them okay then now onwards we are going to discuss about the botany of this plants okay now we have a idea about the history of this plant and what are the climate and the soil requirements then now we will discuss what are the characters what are the features of this plant okay then uh, botany uh, there are several plant parts root stem leaf flower uh, fruit seeds likewise then we will discuss them one by one so morphological characters of tea first we will discuss the roots so strong tap root system with the lateral roots and the feeding roots so we can identify tap root system of this plant so you know some plants have tap root system but some plants don't have tap root system but p this plant has tap root system as well as the lateral roots and the feeding roots so lateral roots means those roots are spreading laterally or the horizontal right? as well as some feeding roots also they are so feeding roots very important to absorb the nutrients from the soil so uh, those feeding roots mostly form a surface mat so these feeding roots spread uh, near to the soil surface and also they create a surface mat like a mat they create a surface mat i will show you some photograph later so uh, food materials are stored in roots which can be used to regrowth after pruning so uh, these feeding roots can store actually food materials mean the nutrients nutrients water those uh, necessary things to plant growth and also after pruning you know uh, the time to time we prune the tree bushes so after pruning uh, the root number of uh, plant leaves reduce then plants can uh, synthesize the uh, they are required glucose by the photosynthesis because the we have prune ap samaharlata sampurna gahe eka kolayak wat yanna thuwat prune karana etakota kola nathin sa probas sanshleshana ek wenne ha ara hadanne naha so at that time those feeding roots can uh, release the nutrients to growth of this plant so therefore the feeding roots also very important 
Okay, here you can see in this picture, uh, this is a feeding root. So as I mentioned earlier, these feeding roots are normally spread near to the soil surface by making a mat, form a surface mat. Uh, as well as uh, here you can see the lateral roots. So here you can see uh, the tap root system here, the source system. In the actual photograph also you can see, I uh, we can't easily identify the feeding roots because they are very tiny root system, very, very small, but the lateral root system you can identify in this picture. Okay, so uh, let's discuss about the stem of this plant. So under the natural condition, it grows up to height of 10 to 15 meters. So here you can see 10 to 15 meters mean normally 3 to 45 feet. So in this picture, you can see uh, normally under natural condition, natural condition means without pruning or without harvesting leaves. In a natural condition, this plant can grow up to this height. So here you can see uh, this man. Uh, there are two two people in this on the, this tree. So under the cultivation or the commercial plantation level, uh, we prune this plant time to time, as well as we train this plant by reducing or by uh, pruning branches. So therefore, we can make this plant like a bush so here you can see this like a bush so it's spreading bush low spreading bush uh, we can minimize the number of branches and we can maintain or we can frame this plant by reducing height uh, to convenient to harvest so under cultivation condition the, normally we maintain around uh, three or uh, four feet height so the leaves, here you can see uh, the leaves, uh, the alternate and also the evergreen. This plant is evergreen. Evergreen means, you know, the some plants, they fall down all the leaves uh, in the some seasons, especially maybe in the dry season. Uh, they adapted that to store or the conserve the water in their body, release all the leaves. But tea plant, we can't see that kind of uh, pattern. Therefore, we call those plants as evergreen plant. As has the alternator leaf pattern mean, I will show you a picture. Here you can see there are several leaf pattern, alternator, opposite, and the wall. So alternator leaf pattern means here you can see in this picture, leaves that grow on one side of the branch or stem at one point. So after that, the next leaf grows on the other side here you can see in this picture first develop this plant this leaf in uh, this light after that after that uh, the second leaf is beginning from other side so this pattern we call as alternate leaf pattern so if the leaf be uh, developing in both sides in a same time so that pattern we call as opposite. So sometimes some plants we can identify in a, this stem, uh, four leaves. Four leaves are developing in a one time. So that leaf pattern we call as halt. So however, uh, the leaf pattern of the tea plant is alternate. So what about the shape of this leaf? So shape of this leaf, is lanceolate or obweight. We call this shape as lanceolate or obweight. I will show you a photo again. So here you can see uh, the shape. So sometimes you may have uh, seen several leaf shape, round shape, uh, bilobe shape, likewise several leaf shapes are there. So uh, the pattern of the leaf shape of T is a, a lanceolate. Again, there is a small mistake. Okay. 
Okay, uh, so here you can see uh, obviate or the lanceolate shape. So lanceolate shape means at the uh, apex, uh, the width of the leaf is very narrow than the base. So uh, the acute ex apex also we can identify. Apex means the point, uh, the other point, opposite side of the base, uh, we call as apex. Acute, acute can on the theory the apex we can identify. As the leaf margin is serrate. So here I think you can find this picture serrate. Yeah, we can identify the spike-like small uh, margins here. Uh, this margin we call it the serrate margin. Some leaf has a very sharp margin, but the tea leaf has serrate margin. Okay, then these are the parts of T shoot. So in a shoot, T shoot, we can identify several leaf part. So let's identify them. So here first we can identify the mother leaf. So mother leaf is the uh, part responsible for making food for developing this shoot. So this shoot uh, developed by using uh, the food or uh, the glucose produced from this mother leaf. That's why it called as a mother. Normally, you know, the mother is a person or woman responsible for uh, feeding their child. So likewise, this mother leaf produces glucose and provide those nutrients to develop this shoot. So after that, we can identify the small leaf, we call it as the fish leaf. This is very small leaf and this leaf uh, do, normally does not develop. Uh, again, the fish leaf, very small leaf. So when we go a little bit up, now we can identify uh, foliage leaf or the other normal leaf, foliage leaf. So from a side bud, the foliage leaf is generating from this side but uh, so this is the stem and uh, again you can identify some foliage leaf there may be two uh, one or two foliage leaf according to the growth stage of this shoot and uh, most importantly we can identify the apical bud or the active bud so this active bud is uh, the bud producing leaf and uh, develop further so likewise the most important part of this T shoot is this the active bud as well as these first two, uh, first fully developed T leaves. Because there are, uh, next week we will discuss uh, the harvesting. So, under that, I will show you again. So, what are the correct harvesting methods? There are several harvesting methods. Sometimes we harvest this only this apical bud. Sometimes we harvest apical bud with the first leaf. Sometimes we harvest the apical bud with first two leaves. So sometimes some harvesters or some pluckers, uh, the harvesting people, we call them as pluckers. Uh, those uh, pluckers harvest uh, this mother leaf also. So that's this mature leaf. So it is not the correct harvesting practices. Uh, if we harvest those mature leaf, so what happened during the processing? Uh, the mature leaf contain high amount of fiber. So after processing those fiber, we have to remove as um, waste. Therefore, it is not good. Okay, next week we will discuss them. So normally these are the basic parts of a tea shoot. So uh, scale leaves also there. Scale leaf, you know, uh, scale leaf is a leaf part. Uh, protect the bud in the very early stage. Uh, the scale leaf protect the bud. Here you can see the scale leaf here. Okay, then uh, let's discuss about uh, the other parts of tea leaf, flowers and fruit. So the flowers and fruit. So here you can see in this picture flower. 
solitary bond on axis solitary means uh, we can identify individual flowers not a uh, inflorescence tani malak thamai tani tani mal thamai tiyenne mal pokurak widiyata eka widiyata pokurak wage pipenne naha this is a solitary bond uh, on axis we can identify on the axis not the stem we can identify on axis axils and also the bisexual so bisexual mean all the uh, both reproductive parts are there both mean male and the female reproductive parts are there within one flower we can identify both reproductive parts so the petals so you can count them 1 2 3 4 5 there in this flower there are five petals so sometime we can find six seven petals so uh, as well as here you can see there are numerous stamens are there stamen stamen uh, is a part of male reproductive system in this uh, in a flower so uh, there are several uh, high amount of stamens we can identify as well as uh, we can feel a pregnant smell flower the unique as well as uh, the very good fragrant or the smell we can feel so after that the fruit here you can see its fruit brownish or green in color here you can see so as well as three lobes there are three lobes you can identify one two but there is another loop in the other side as well as uh, the shape like a capsule or the berry berry or the capsule berry the group which lobe yak thamai apata identify karanna puluwan wenne so inside the fruit uh, there are seeds we can identify normally uh, here you can see as i mentioned earlier uh, there are three loops identify and each loop we can identify a seed so the size of seed around 1 to 1.5 cm in a diameter here you can see uh, not a very tiny seeds so uh, we can uh, notice in using our eyes so uh, the testa within and testa thin here you can see the testa or the outer cover of uh, the seed also is very thin unchi outer cover ekak nathan potta thamai thiyenne as well as a light brown color here you can the color light brown color uh, as well as the seeds is very rich in oil so sometime uh, you have seen uh, the tea oil so for the cosmetic production uh, we normally now use tea oil for several purposes especially the cosmetic purposes so we can obtain oil from these seeds okay then uh, that's about the morphological parts or the morphological characters of tea we discuss root system we discuss leaves we discuss flower fruit as well as the seeds okay then let's discuss about uh, the tea research institute of sri lanka so i think uh, it's better if you know about the tea research institute of sri lanka at uh, some time one once day you you will work there as a research officer or research assistant or researcher therefore uh, i will briefly introduce about the research institute of uh, sri lanka so in 1925 it means now already around 98 or in 2025 we can celebrate the uh, 100 years of establishing the tea research institute so in 1925 tea research institute was established in the thalo kale area um, and also the 1950 uh, tri introduced vegetative propagation tea or we call it as a vp vegetative propagated vp uh, or clonal tea so this is the uh, it was a very uh, strong achievement of the tea research institute to develop their own clone so here in this picture you can see the photograph of tea research institute and uh, this is their logo 
so uh, that's why i that's uh, so the reason for I, I introduced about the research institute because we now discuss about the several uh, cultivar or the clone so all of these cultivar had developed by the T Research Institute. That's why they name as TRI. TRI mean standard for T Research Institute. So TRI 2023, 2024, 2025, 6, 43, uh, 30, 19, 30, 47. Likewise, there are several cultivars are there. Uh, the, uh, the differences between those cultivars are there are cultivation areas are different as well as their propagation method for laser equipment their yields are different so that's why there are several cultivars are there uh, okay so i will explain some of them so especially in the tri 2020 uh, 2023 this is uh, the light green leaves this plant has light green leaves as well as it gives high yield and also the quality as well as it tolerance for shoot tall water later we will discuss about the pest and diseases so this cultivar is very um, important because tolerant for shoot tall water uh, as well as the susceptible to uh, worms so likewise there are several advantages also the disadvantages but uh, the nowadays the scientists as well as the researchers they 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 have ability to develop the improved cultivars most of the time resistance to the pest and diseases resistant to the environmental uh, impacts such as the drought or the high, high rain so likewise now we have that technology to develop uh, the improved cultivar uh, in addition to the uh, those cultivars Nabat the uh, Thang Kale, likewise, there were several other cultivars also available. Uh, so, all those cultivars are vegetative propagation line. Vegetative propagation, normally, there are two propagation methods you already know uh, sexual and also the uh, sexual propagation methods. Sexual propagation means uh, make producing flowers, producing fruits and seeds, then germination of the seeds and uh, developing a new plant. So here we discuss about the vegetative propagation method. There are several vegetative propagation method, cutting, budding, grafting, likewise. So uh, we use uh, the vegetative propagation method for commercial plantation of the tea rather than the uh, sexual propagation method. Okay, then we will discuss about the nursery management. Now you already know there are several cultivars several uh, tea cultivars mean varieties are there actually uh, so there are several vegetative cultivars are there those vegetative cultivars now we can use to produce a new plants okay then we will discuss about the nursery management practices of this plant Okay, as I mentioned earlier, the developing a new plant or the propagation of a tea plant can be done into two ways. It may be seed propagation or the sexual reproductive methods or the vegetative propagation methods. So both methods we use, but most of the time we use the vegetative propagation method rather than the uh, seed propagation method. So uh, I think you already know what are the advantages and the disadvantages of these two methods. So can anyone tell me what are the advantages of the vegetative propagation method? Why we uh, promote vegetative propagation method rather than the seed propagation method? Any idea? What do you think? Okay, I think you should have that kind of knowledge at least. What are the advantages of the vegetative propagation methods? So we can obtain a morphological and the agronomic uniformity of uh, new 
generation as well as the vigorous growth we can uh, accept and also the early burning into uh, bearing as well as the high yield potential so those are the advantages so there are several uh, vegetative propagation method we can identify budding grafting layering propagation by cuttings and the tissue culture method like the most improved method also we can identify uh, as a vegetative propagation method so in a, in using those four methods most of the time we use propagation by cutting api cuttings thamai vedilawat pavich karana tissue culture wage methods pavich karana andui mokada me tissue culture like those methods are more expensive therefore we use the cutting because this cutting method is a very simply and also uh, no need more extra knowledge about handling uh, those uh, producing plants using the cutting methods uh, layering and budding grafting those methods also good but uh, those methods take too much time therefore the easy low cost method is the propagation of the cuttings therefore we use that method okay then uh, now we have planting materials then let's see how we can produce our nursery so to develop before we develop the nursery first we want to select a good nursery nursery site so let's see uh, what are the selection criteria uh, so those are the selection criteria factors to be considered when selecting nursery so we nursery ekak thora ganna thana khoya ganna kota mulinma e thana tiyenna ona conditions monawada kiyala api dan balamu ability of proper soil media so proper soil media sorry availability of proper soil media so we should have a proper soil media proper soil mean nutrient uh, rich as well as uh, the earlier we discussed what are the soil conditions uh, so soil ph should be 4 to 5 and also the loamy soil wet grain soil so those are the suitable soil media so therefore uh, the available soil media should be there if not we have to transport soil from uh, another side to uh, our nursery site so it will take more cost and also the time therefore we it is better we can find the nursery site with the proper soil media and also the availability of the water so after produce, uh, after planting we have to irrigate our plants time to time therefore uh, we should have a good water source for irrigation purposes transport facilities transport facilities mean we have to transport uh resources it mean the fertilizer other materials shade tree shady materials likewise as well as after completing the nursery period we have to transport plants to our field so therefore transport facilities should be uh, there transport facility means uh, easy to access to the our nursery site em na thuwa wahane ekrat yanna beri tanaka api nursery site ekak hadanne naha so proximity to source of the planting materials is also very important uh, we have available planting materials and easy to access to uh, those planting materials if not it will take more time to bring our planting material to the nursery site so planting materials may be die off absence of the heavy shade also very important so if there may be a high shade so what happened the plants not grow well so therefore absence of the heavy shade also very important so if there uh, is no shade we can provide artificial shade so we can make a, a shade or we can provide shade but uh, heavy shade we can't tolerate them uh, therefore it is better if we can select the nursery site Uh, without heavy shade and the protection of the wind protection from wind also very important so those plants are very young uh, not uh, mature plants therefore if there is a heavy wind so plants may be damaged therefore there should be at least a protection from a wind like a barrier wind barrier uh, it also very important 
and also the good drainage facilities also very important if not water locking condition may be happen so it may be case for uh, spreading some root bone tissue diseases uh, ultimately uh, die off or rot kunuela yan puluwan kunu hariyata watura behala giyena etuna so yeah for the good drainage facilities also very important okay then now we have identified a good suitable site or the area for uh, prepare our tea nursery okay then uh, now uh, we have to uh, prepare our soil media or the nursery soil so these are the characters of our soil good soil media soil ph 4.5 to 5.5 as well as the free from pests and diseases i think i no need to discuss them uh, our soil should be free without pests and diseases if the soil contain the pests and diseases it may be a reason for uh, spreading pests and diseases to the our plants and the proper water holding capacity what a proper water holding capacity if not we have to irrigate time to time watura api ganna soil media ekak adun nathuna apita hama welaye watura da inda wen as well as the good drainage also uh, very important so that's why the loamy soil is best for uh using as a soil media because the loamy soil do not have higher drainage facilities as well as they do not have higher water holding capacity watura godak radawa ganne nha watura sampurnema sandy soil ekak wage drain karanne nha as well as it should not be too fertile that also very important fertile or the fertilizer is very important for plant growth but what happen if the fertilizer content is very high in the soil so it also not a good condition for plant growth sometimes uh, the nutrients may be toxic for the plants therefore uh, the too much fertilizer also not suitable for plant growth uh, so these are the soil media we can find so mana soil also very important very uh, available soil and the jungle soil also we can use at the soil media or subsoil as well as we can use the tea soil uh tea soil means the soil uh, we can find in the previous tea cultivated tea cultivated land so likewise these sub uh, soil media is suitable because those media contain the characters what i mentioned earlier so after we identify the soil media it is very important to fumigation of the soil because we don't know if there are uh, some diseases or uh, some soil born pest or soil born nematodes like uh, organ organisms may be there uh, so it is better we should uh, disintegrate or eliminate those organisms by fumigation so the fumigation is very important uh, so especially for the nematode problem can be seen in the high elevation area by fumigation fumigation mean apply uh, the fume or the smoke or disseminate those uh, diseases and pests so the main primary objective of the fumigation is that uh, so fumigation method we can use to get a uh, very healthy soil okay then now we can start to obtain the cuttings so earlier i discussed with you there are two type of propagation methods vegetative as well as the seed propagation method under vegetative propagation there are again cutting budding grafting uh, tissue culture methods also there but in the tea we use cutting method so the now let's see how uh we should prepare our cuttings for uh, preparing the nursery so selection of the good shoots so cuttings we obtain from a shoot shapi shoot aman wata kalin pinne shoot ek photo ek shoot thekin tamai api me cuttings laba ganne that was stem making wat kohin wat me me therefore uh, first we should identify a good shoot so let's see what are the characters of the good shoots so vigorously growing erect shoot shoot should be selected from mother bush which is more than 4 years of age so uh, we normally in the plantation separately we maintain a tea bushes those tea bushes are 
we use for only taking shoots or the cuttings api cuttings ganna wenama bushes keep yak api maintain karan yanawa ewa etara cuttings itaray ganne so normally we do not prune those bushes api prune karanne naha because we use cuttings using those bushes so we use we call them as mother bushes mother bushes mean we obtain shoots from those bushes so normally those bushes should be age more than 4 years more than 4 years age should be uh, at the time we obtain shoots as well as a vigorously grown erect shoot we should select as well as the shoot with the flowers or the flower buds should be rejected so those shoots not suitable for getting cuttings therefore we should reject those shoots if they contain flower buds shoot should be free from pests and diseases so if the shoot contain pests and diseases so what happen those pests and diseases may be spread to our nursery and ultimately spread throughout the nursery uh, from uh, for other healthy plant also therefore it is very important to select the shoot without pests and diseases and immediately after harvest shoot should be kept in the bucket of the water so just after harvest immediately we should keep them into the uh, water bucket if not the shoots may be die so here you can see in this picture the vigorously grown erect shoots so healthy flower uh, healthy leaves you can identify there so you can't identify any pest and diseases or there are attacks on the leaves or the shoots and also we can identify any flower buds so it is uh, this is a good shoot or we can select this shoot as a uh, vigorously growing grow uh, erect shoots for getting cuttings so as i mentioned earlier immediately after harvest of shoots we should uh, keep these cut shoots into the water bucket like this so cuttings again the select semi hardwood portion of the shoot is very important we can't take cuttings from all these shoots sir, academy shoot excuse me sir yes can you show me the picture the before sorry the picture uh, you show the bucket of water yeah okay here here you can see uh, the primary objective of doing this practice is to eliminate the dry off of this shoot because we have to transport uh, these shoots from uh, mother bushes to our nursery so it may be take some time it may be take some 10 minutes 20 minutes or maybe one hour so at until that we we have to protect our sh uh, shoots without drying vele nathu tiya ganna yo clear thank you sir yeah okay so uh, then now we have shoots but uh, we can't take all the cuttings throughout this shoot because some parts especially the uh, top parts they are very tender immature as well as the bottom part uh, the base part they are very hard so the best portion or the best part of getting cuttings from a shoot is the uh, semi hardwood portion of a shoot here in this picture you can see this is the base part the semi hard wood portion so under uh, the below the semi hard portion this portion is this part is very hard or the woody product we were hard ready as well as the top region is too tender too tender so it also not suitable in between the tender and the woody area we can select to get cuttings so as well as in a one shoot we can obtain several cuttings we can obtain sometime one two three or five six cuttings from a one shoot so likewise for this this is a one cutting again cutting so likewise in the left hand side picture you can see a um, cut cuttings so a one cut so here you can see the cutting so uh, normally the cutting mean with the leaf and a bud so that is a cut 
කොලේ කුයි මෙතන බඩ් එකයි තමයි අපි කටින් එකක් කියලා කියන්නේ so we can obtain several cuttings from a one shoot here you can see uh, we can obtain a several cutting we can eliminate this a tender part as well as the bottom part so here one uh, one two three three cuttings sorry uh, one two two cuttings we can obtain by making those cuts okay then again see here uh, there are several cuttings also there uh, single cuttings likewise but uh, in your level we will discuss about the most uh, commonly used the single knot cutting methods uh, so there are other cutting methods also so uh, we will keep them um, to your degree level okay so the single knot cutting is a recommended for the planting most of the time here you can see the single knot cutting so uh, it consists of one leaf and one axillary buds so axillary buds axillary bud kind of patin thiyena bud eka then api gatto shoot eka meka uddata thamai develop wenninne it develop like this from bottom to up so uh, the upper area we can identify a bud so that is the apical bud but the other area so in the those buds we know call as the axillary buds so the axillary buds are responsible for making branches so in a cutting a leaf as well as a axillary bud also should be there so normally length of length of the stem portion is around 1 to 1.5 inches 1 to 1.5 inches so here, here you can see in the left hand side the actual picture of a single knot cuttings single knot cuttings mean there is a only one knot or only one bud is present there okay now we have cuttings let's see how we can prepare our nursery beds so select now uh, up to now we have selected the nursery site and also the nursery medium or the soil then let's see how we can prepare the nursery beds so the select flat land or the generally slope land normally it is better if we can select a flat land uh, if not uh, it is a bit we can select a slope land but uh, the two slope land is not suitable gentle slope land also good so the size of the bed normally the width is 1 point uh, 0 0.07 no normally we go measure at 3.5 feet and adi ek tuna hama arak wage thama api ganne length is uh, we can take uh, our length is not a problem according to our convenient or uh, convenient means to do the practices uh, we can decide the length of the bed according to our availability of the land but the width is very important uh, 3.5 because uh, after planting we have to do a uh, lot of cultural practices watering shading for less application likewise so if we increase the width higher than this amount so it will uh, not suitable to do those cultural practices easily as well as there should be one food path either side of the each bed so in between uh, a bed there should be a food path because uh, that food path is very important to uh, go through the beds nursery beds and also the surface of the bed should be gentle slope towards the drain uh, because uh, if during the heavy rain this season the water should be rain water should be easily drain off to the drains therefore uh, the gentle slope is also good i will uh, yeah likewise let's see uh, if this is the bread the gentle slope means like this so very important then uh, in between uh, the two bed there is a drains khan wak the non me dieta sls uh, there should be a food path me dieta food path ekak thiyenone meke thamai apita meke avidagena yanna puluwa food path ekak thiyenone so after that again drains 
and again the date. So likewise. Okay, then the now we have prepared our nursery bed. Let's see uh, how to prepare the nursery bags. So we do not normally plant our cuttings directly into the nursery bed. So we use this kind of nursery bags for uh, planting cuttings. So gauge of this bag is 150. Gauge means, uh, you know, uh, the normally uh, the thickness or strength of the polythene uh, we use to measure the gauge. Uh, and also that this should be the transparent. So normally there are several nursery bags. Some time you have seen the black color polythene uh, and white color, white and black color. But in here, the transparent polythene is the suitable uh, type. And also uh, side, uh, two side open polythene sleeves. So both sides should be open, upper and bottom. Both sides should be open. Let them open it like in the with uh, energy. As well as uh, the size of the polythene sleeves around uh, 22 23 centimeters in height and 30 to 15 centimeters in width. So, this is the ideal length and width and height. Then, uh, the few holes about 20 to 30 centi uh, 30 holes should be punched on the side of the sleeves to facilitate drain. Uh, so normally in the bottom area, we can punch around 20 to 30 holes. So these holes important to facilitate the drainage during the watering. So excess water easily can drain out uh, throughout these holes. Therefore, it is important to uh, punch several holes there. So here you can see uh, arrangement of the nursery bags in the bed. So likewise, so this is the nursery bed. Now in the bed, here you can see a uh, gentle sloppy bed also there. So now we can place our nursery bags uh, with the nursery soil media. Earlier we discussed the soil media. Now we can fill our soil media into these bags and we can arrange them or we can stack them. Uh, like this in a on a nursery bed. Okay, then now we can uh, put our cuttings into those nursery bags. So before planting, soil should be lightly wetted. We should irrigate the soil nursery bags properly before planting. So only one cutting should be planted in each bag. So each bag only one not two or three only one so normally you know when we plant when we uh, use seeds normally we apply two or three seedlings per hole but in here we use only one cuttings per bag so vertical method is the best method so what is the vertical method normally there are two planting methods slant method and the vertical method we can slant so angle like this, we can angle the cutting like this. As well as we can put our cuttings uh, like here, the vertical method. So the best method is this: the second method or the vertical methods. This is the best methods. So uh, okay, now tell me what are the advantages of the this uh, vertical method, or what are the disadvantages of this slant method? Why we use uh, why why you we use uh, vertical methods? Uh, why we do not use this slant method? Apni method di cutting ekar me bag ke killing directly thama hi thamane alagara ne na hai alagara hot manodati na advantage disadvantages. So tell me now you can think and you can tell me. So what do you think? Any idea? To make it firm. 
to make it firm what do you mean by firm or oh, it will uh, fall for wind yeah so but in the both method uh, the wind may be affected no excuse me sir yeah Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. That is uh, the good answer. Yeah, that is uh, one objective of this uh, method. Api metana angkure me dira dimna thema metana thina angkure api watur dana kote samhai ta watur teka pastoring meka vehila metana angkure vinashena puluan. To protect the bud, we use this. vertical method and we avoid the slant method if we use this slant method what happened this uh, the we uh, earlier i show you uh, the cutting contain one leaf as well as the axillary bud so this axillary bud may be damaged by the soil uh, therefore we do not track the slant method chart that is a good answer and the correct answer so what are the other things So look at this picture here. You can see uh, earlier I discussed with you in this here. You can see we uh, place those bags in a very closer. There are no any space between uh, two bags, two nursery bags. Bacteria There are no... and diseases growing. Bacteria and diseases. Sorry again. Growing bacteria and diseases in plant preparation. Plant prevention. So, how do you avoid uh, the spread of the bacteria and diseases by using this vertical method? Hmm. So, in this vertical method, also it may be happen. Both method, uh, it may be happen. If uh, the nursery contain or our soil contain the bacteria or diseases. so it may be affected all the plants so uh, the planting method is not a uh, reason for that hmm? okay what i what i am trying to say so in between these two bags here you can see there are no any space so what happen if you use this slant method here you can see this the leaf is now uh, grown or placed in out of this bag no here you can see so likewise uh, the second bag also there in very near to this bag so here you can see the overlapping of leaves may be happen you know it lagin lagin tibba honda ilaga bag ekin ilaga bag ke bud deka me kolin wahenna puluwa but here in this method so we can avoid it then metenedi meka bag ekin eliyata pannata ara wage pahathata wetilla na ha ensa metenin Uh, overlapping and equal lack of gun pull one by using this vertical method we can avoid the overlapping of leaves and also uh, the root formation occur uh, in uh, the middle part of the bag in this vertical method but in the slant method here you can see now the root is uh, forming in this bottom part cutting bottom of the cutting so what happened here the root formation happen in the one side of the bag so it is not good because roots can use all the nutrients throughout this bag but here the roots are developing in here and the roots can absorb all the nutrients throughout the bag so so in the slant method root formation occur in one side of the bag so it is not good as well as the produce uh slant shoots so that is will take long time to grow because uh, we in the slant method produce the slant shoots shoot also may be slant may shoot ekak tira pasa develop wenne slant vela uh so it will take uh, more time to develop well as well as the water and the fertilizer can be accumulated in the leaves also it also happened during the watering and the fertilizer application those fertilizer and the water may be accumulated on the leaves in this method because the leaves here you can see leaf is you know flat it's a flat pillar thing but here the water and the nutrients they can easily go in down so those are the disadvantage of the slant method so that's why we use vertical method for planting cuttings 
Okay, so now we have prepared or we have uh, placed our cuttings in the poly bag. So let's see what are the aftercare operations we can do after that. So we have to do several activities. So after the operation uh, to get the uh, well developed plan. So have any idea also how many months or how many weeks we have to uh, keep our cuttings or plants in a nursery? So how, how many months it will take to uh, transplant? What is the nursery period of the tea? Any idea? Can anyone guess it actually? No. After one month? Yeah, one month. Yeah, okay. Then any other answers? How do you think? How many months it will take? Uh, I will give you a little hint. It uh, normally it is higher than the six months. Okay, not the one month, higher than the six months. Any idea? Guess it. You can guess actually. If you don't know the answer, you can guess eight it. Months. Sorry, eight months. Eight months yeah. Ah, very near. Yeah, actually, it uh, it will be around nine months. Yeah, nine to twelve months. Nine to twelve months. Okay, we will discuss them later. Okay, so uh, nine to twelve months. You uh, so it is a long time period, no? So uh, nine to twelve months now. We have to protect or we have to care our plants or our nursery. So those are the aftercare operations. Uh, shading. Shading is very important to provide the shade. After planting, shade should be provided to avoid wilting and also the sun scrotch. Sun scrotch means uh, due to the sunlight, the heavy, higher sunlight, the plant leaf may be scrotch, uh, burning out. And also it helps to maintain high relative humidity. So therefore, uh, shading is very important to avoid the dry of the plant. So there are two types of shades. We can provide shades in a two way, low shade or high shade. So especially according to the growth stage of the nursery plant, we can decide the suitable shade type. Shade, low shade means we provide only uh, minimum amount of shade. High shade means we provide a higher amount of shade. So uh, low shade, there are several uh, materials or the uh, things we can use to provide low shade. Uh, the first one is a Branken fern. It's a kind of fern. Here you can see in, the, in a picture uh, the fern. So uh, this is a natural plant. We can use the Branken fern as a low shade material. So insert Branken fern into in uh, clusters between the polythene sleeves. So in a polythene bag, uh, we can insert those plant leaves. Uh, stalks should be free of leaves up to 25 to 30 centimeters because if the uh, stalk of this fern contain leaves in bottom area, it may if we damage or it may be covered uh, with the plant, tea plant. Therefore, in the bottom area of this Branken fern, free from those leaves. So here you can see uh, there are several kind of ferns available. Uh, we can use them. We can make them as a cluster. And in the bottom area, the bottom stalk of these ferns, we should remove all the leaves and now we can insert those ferns like this. Okay, here you can see after a certain time, uh, those ferns uh, will dry off and uh, again, still some amount of shade is available there. Here you can see uh, after dry off, of those leaf ferns, still we can use it as a shading material. Here again, you can see them like this. Uh, so under the shade, we can identify our tea leaf or tea plants. Here you can see in this picture, 
now our uh, cuttings are developed. Actually, the extruded part here, you can see the extruded part. Now, uh, getting developed, making new leaves, and uh, this fern now create a shade. Okay, so uh, after that, again, uh, another short, uh, low shade material, we can use the coir matting for low shade. So here you can see uh, the height of the uh, shade net and uh, the ground surface is around 90 centimeters. It means around three feet. Around three feet, we can uh, make a coir mat. Coir matting is laid on a frame. So you can prepare a frame using an iron like iron, if you use the iron, it is uh, durability is very high. Or we can use a bamboo hoops, bamboo-like uh, planting material to create it a box shape or like this half circle uh, frame. And we can lay our coir mats on it. Okay, then. Uh, that's the two method of the low shade. As well as we can provide high shade. Uh, if now the plant is getting higher, then we can't use those uh, ferns. The ferns which can be Therefore, uh, we can uh, use the high shade with the coir matting or the synthetic nets we can use at that time. Uh, Iron frame is constructed two meters, so earlier less than one meter, but now we establish our structure around two meter above the nursery bed. So like this here, you can see uh, we can use either coir or we can use either synthetic net. Now nowadays there are several synthetic shade nets. So according to our shade requirement if you want 10 percent 50 percent 90 percent likewise we can select the uh, suitable net so we can use synthetic net you can see the frame structure concrete structure and uh, the galvanized um, tubes also there so we can provide this kind of permanent structure so under this structure the plants now develop well so here we can use the coir mate like this but it's the durability is less than the synthetic net okay then uh, after uh, planting we have to water or irrigate our plants so when climate is too dry watering should be done in the morning and evening so normally it is very important if a dry season we have to irrigate plants two times per day morning as well as the evening as well as the during rainy weather little or no water is required so rain rainy season we can avoid the watering if we watering drainage season also it may be effective spreading diseases and also rot the roots Overwatering will result Moses problems on the top of the bags or blister blight problems like diseases. Moses Therefore, it is very important to uh, avoid the overwatering, especially during the rainy season. So for watering, we can use the uh, water source. It is uh, very important if you have a water source near to our uh, nursery beds or our nursery sites. That's why during the selection of the nursery site, we, we discussed uh, about the water source. So uh, we can use uh, the water can or uh, hose to irrigate our plants. Then the fertilizer application, uh, actually I'm not going to discuss about in deep about the fertilizer application as well as the other cultural practices. So at your level, uh, you can get a kind of idea by using those practices. No need 
more details. So the fertilizer, there are several uh, fertilizers are available for the nursery, but uh, the fertilizer T65, like fertilizer application, should be done after root initiation. So initially, just after we establishing cutting in the nursery bag, we do not apply any fertilizer uh, because there are no roots. After root initiation, after a certain time period, then we can apply fertilizer. So normally root initiation start two to three months after planting. So at that time, all uh, on earth, we can start to uh, fertilize the application. So uh, other than that, there are other cultural practices like the pest and diseases control. So uh, these are the pests we can identify commonly in tea nursery. Uh, nematodes mean root bone sorry soil bone uh, paste so also the shoot hole borer and also the t toctrix so these are the paste so to control them what we can do we can use the chemicals as well as uh, we can use uh, the pest and diseases free planting materials as well as our irrigation water also uh, it is important to free from pest and diseases so the nematode teas are uh, also the major problem in uh, the mature tea also. Uh, we can control this by fumigation, fumigating our soil. So do, initially, during the soil preparation, we practice the fumigation. So by doing fumigation, we can control the nematode problem. So uh, soot hole border, we can control by pruning or applying pesticide. Suitable pesticide we can apply. Uh, likewise, we can control the pest problem. So as disease problems, the blister blight disease is most common uh, problem. So uh, we can control these diseases by applying uh, fungicide, especially the copper-based fungicide. Most of the time for controlling diseases, we apply copper-based fungicide. Yeah, yeah copper-based fungicide or the sulfur contained fungicide. So here you can use the copper fungicide to control the disturb light. So uh, after that, the restacking also very important. So let's see what's the meaning of stacking. Stacking means separate the vigorously grown plants from poor grown plants. So in the, every nursery, we can identify some plants are grown well, some plants do not grow well. So they are poorly grown plants. So uh, we should remove those poorly grown plants at the very beginning. If not, uh, it is not a, no any uh, advantages for maintaining those poorly grown plants because until uh, 9 to 12 months, we apply fertilizer water for those poorly grown plants also. It will be a cost. Therefore, we should remove those poorly grown plants. So stacking, normally we practice in a different stages. Actually, there are three stages. Stages, uh, first restracking, second restracking, third striking are re like uh, three stages. Normally, the first restracking, we normally we are doing at uh, three months after planting. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, so normally two to three months take uh, to initiate the roots. So, uh, therefore, at the beginning of the fertilizer application, we can practice the first crease tracking. So, therefore, we can cut down the fertilizer application of those unnecessary plants. So, after that, again, the five months after planting, we can do this practice again, second crease tracking after five months. And uh, finally, third tracking, we can practice around one to ten months. So before uh, two months before the field planting again we practice raise tracking to remove poorly grown plants because if we use those poorly grown plants uh, as a planting materials for the transplanting so we can't assure that we can get a, a well developed plant or tree bush uh, so now our plant is ready to field plant but before that, we have to do another thing, hardening. So you know about the hardening. Hardening means before transplant those nursery plants to the 
field plant field planting we have to uh, improve their hard hard conditions it means uh, under the field conditions they have to uh, they have to ability to adapt for higher sun uh, as well as high sunlight as well as higher rain wind conditions so these field conditions uh, are not in the nursery site therefore we have to train our plant by hardening so this adaptation process is called hardening so so hard, time to time we can do the hardening by removing uh, the shade net or the shade level by gradually we can reduce the shade level gradually we can reduce the uh, application of application amount of water so likewise we can gradually reduce uh, train our plants by hardening okay then uh, finally uh, another important practice we call it as the thumbnailing pruning uh, method so the objective of this thumbnailing pruning is uh, to induce the growth of axillary bud to get well spreading bushes so in this time we using our thumb thumb can appear uh, in thumbnail can appear athete na first finger okay? so thumbnail pruning meaning using no we do not use any equipment or the tools just we use our thumbnails to prune uh, here we induce uh, the growth of axillary bud by pruning just we prune it api nikan ne putting ama kadala danawa axillary bud ekak so at that time normally you know by removing uh, the bud of the plant so what happened plant do not grow uh, again they it is start to produce branches so likewise now uh, by doing this we can ensure the spreading of bushes or we can ensure that develop of new spread or the branches spread our bush we can ensure it by doing this thumbnail pruning okay here you can see uh well grown develop plants now they are ready for field planting now they are ready for field planting here you can see by doing thumbnail uh, now we can get more branches so there are several branches if not we plant our uh, plants without thumbnail pruning so the plant get grow growing erect so we can avoid it by pruning so uh, here you can see now these plants are ready for field planting now we can see a uh, shade because these plants are now uh, well hardened so uh, still we can uh, we can check those plants uh, to the pest and diseases like rice then ultimately until the 9 to 12 months after completing the nursery period now we can transplant these plants in a field so this is the transplanting stage so the nursery period as i mentioned earlier as you say around 9 to 12 months so it's quite long nursery time period uh, rather than the other vegetable pl plants okay so at that time we can identify well grown root system as well as the well grown uh, shoot uh, shoot part branches leaves also well grown so uh, the planting field planting stage we can identify very healthy plant okay then uh, let's discuss about the field planting so before that if you want a small break so i can stop uh, the presentation around 10 minutes or uh, we can continue until uh, the lunch break so what will you prefer shall we take a small break
Yes, sir. We can have a break. Okay, thank you. Then uh, shall we meet again at uh, five minutes? Is okay? Is it enough? Ten minutes. Oh. Sir. Ten minutes. Ah, okay, ten minutes. Uh, okay, I think now the time is twelve eighteen. Then uh, take the twelve minutes break, and we'll uh, start the rest of thing around twelve thirty. Okay, then come again twelve thirty. Management, and now we have the girl vigorous, realistic growth, uh, planting materials for ready to trail plant. So. Uh, Let's start about discussing the field planting. Before that, can you hear me again? Can you yes, hear me? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Recording in progress. Okay, then let's discuss about the field planting. Uh, so now. First of all, we will discuss what are the suitable lands for planting tea plants. Earlier, we discussed the what are the soil and uh, climate requirements. So, in addition to that, to uh, as a suitable land, the soil depth less than fifty centimeter, rockiness more than twenty percent, as well as the gravel in ninety centimeter meter greater than fifty percent. Those are the conditions not suitable for tea cultivation. So, if you remember earlier, we discussed the soil depth should be around ninety centimeter. So, if the soil is less than fifty centimeter, so that soil, that land is not suitable for tea planting. So, flat lands, adjoined paddy fields, water streams, and ravines should be avoided. So the Paddy fields, water streams, because we avoid those lands, so uh, it is very easy to spread the pests and diseases as well as uh, uh, other practices may be difficult with our pea field adjoint or near to those paddy fields or water streams or ravines, ravines areas. Okay, then I'll, first we will discuss about the land preparation practices. So all vegetation should be uprooted uh, because this is the plantation crops. Normally, you know, in a plantation crops, uh, we cultivate our crop. It's the monocrop culture. But uh, now you know. Uh, later we will discuss tea. We can cultivate as an intercrop also. Uh, but in addition to other crops, uh, the plants we have to eradicate, remove, uproot. Uh, as well as the shade trees should be uh, ring bark about two to two and a half years prior to filling. So it means uh, the land preparation practices we have to start at the very beginning. Uh, here I mentioned the shade tree. Later we will discuss what is what are the shade trees. So shade trees normally we can plant our tree. Plants in a new land, as well as sometimes we have to replant. It means the earlier tree cultivation or earlier tree field, uh, we have to plant this new plant in a previously tree cultivated land. Uh, so it we name as a tree planting. So at that time, earlier previous cultivation tea bushes, as well as the shade trees. We have to remove. We have to uproot. So, if there are uh, shade trees in the previous cultivation, we have to remove it. Uh, it is not suitable for uproot because it will damage the root soil. Therefore, we uh, can easily remove them by using rim barking, uh, and then the plants gradually die off. So, in the rim barking like this, uh, we can remove the bark. From one and one to one and a half meter height from the surface, around thirty centimeter, one feet width bark around the tree. So after uprooting and leveling, dolomite should be applied at a rate of one thousand two hundred fifty kilograms of 
effect there so you know dolomite is a kind of limey material it can uh, maintain the soil ph actually lime material limey material like dolomite calcium carbonate they can enhance the soil ph so uh, if the soil is previously uh, fertilized by ammonia or nitrogen like fertilizer you know if we use nitrogen or ammonium sulfate uh, urea like fertilizer and so uh, the soil ph is getting reduced by doing applying dolomite like lime material we can enhance the soil ph and we can correct the soil ph that should uh, that uh, suitable for tea plants around 4.5 to 5.5 so uh, before establishing or before uh, planting our plants there are several things we have to complete the first thing is the construction of the lateral and the lead ranch so normally you uh, have noticed that in up country area most of the time they have cultivated tree so we can identify tree lands tree lands in a, a slope lands or the mountain region so therefore during uh, the rain so it may be a huge problem for the soil erosion uh to it is very important to conserve the soil soil conservation is or protect the soil is very important therefore we should establish as lateral land leader drains so using those drains we can minimize the damage of uh, the heavy rain so we can uh remove the excess water in our field without damaging or uh, without affecting the soil erosion using the lateral land leader drains natural drains lead drains can you api tea field ekak watura behala yanna api pradana kaanuwa thamai api lead drain kiyanne it amathara api haras athata tiyena e pradana kaanuwa sambandhana ituru kaanu drains thamai api lateral drains kiyala adunnana so the lateral and lead drain should be cut before planting of the rehabilitate rehabilitation grasses so uh, the first thing is removing the unnecessary plants then the establishing of the lateral and the lead drains so the construction of the lateral drains so we call it as a contour drains usually those lateral drains we constructed along with the uh, contours contours kela kiyanne chance me samochareka samochareka yes samochareka anu thamai api danne so it is uh, easy to remove the water by if we establish the contour drains uh, according to the contours so dimension of that kind of drains in between uh, depth is around 45 or 1 and 1/2 feet and 4 to 5 or 1 and 1/2 wide so same as the depth and the wide are same uh, so here in this picture you can see uh, we can establish uh, the um uh, contour drains like this uh, the height is on point sorry 45 cm so according to the contours we can develop or we can construct our contour drains like this apu me ekata ekak dikrama daanne na midida kotas spaces thiyala thamai api contours samane kiya So here in this picture you can see as I mentioned earlier lateral drains and this is the major drains major drains so the lateral drains are connected with the lead drains so spacing depends on the slope of the lands amount of the rainfall in the area so sometime we we have to uh, we have to uh, make more lateral drains if the rain is so high and sometime uh, the amount of lateral drains or the spacing between the lateral drains uh, may be high we can reduce the amount uh, of the space and uh, sorry we can reduce apata wedi karanna puluwan me aata thiyena dura so we can reduce the amount of lateral drains so normally the space between the lateral drains is 6 to 12 meter so as i mentioned earlier this is a not fixed space so according to the rain according to the slope so we can decide how many lateral drains we have to establish establish as well as the um, distance between the drains okay then uh, the lead drains 
now we have established the lateral drains all the lateral drains now connect with the leader drains so sometimes there are uh, several leader drains so leader drains are used to remove the excess water from the fields that water collect throughout the lateral drains so drain should be constructed on a step wise manner with the reverse slope so here you can see if you can uh, see this picture clearly uh, the this is the lateral drains we have established this as a step wise step wise not a uh, just like a simple drains this is step wise because uh, we minimize the speed of the water by uh, removing water uh, like this staircase step by step step by manner as well as uh, carefully see here you can see uh, the reverse slope you can identify the this is a not a flat as well as this is uh, a reverse slope make a slope like the may pattern for holiday there was a lagging and from up to down but the river here you can see in this picture clearly you can see but the uh, the slope of these uh, step is reverse so reverse slope we can identify so all the things we have done here to minimize the speed of the water as well as minimize the soil erosion and as well as the site and the bottom of the drain should be paved with the stones so here you can see uh, the covered with the stones uh, bottom as well as the site areas are covered with the stones also important to minimize the soil erosion and reduce the damage of uh, this water during the heavy rain so earlier we discussed in normally the tree is cultivated in a up country area as well as the requirement of the rainfall is very high so normally usually we can expect except the uh, except the higher rain in those areas therefore we have to develop our drains to protect our soil from during the heavy rain okay now in these pictures you can see clearly what i discussed it earlier so those kind of drains we can develop this is the major drain uh, so you can identify the strongs in the both sides as well as the bottom as well as the stepwise uh, slope drains okay so uh, as construction or the conservation of the soil you, we can do another thing construction of the terrace terraces means uh, we can establish uh, the this kind of rocks api samani kanne kan gal wati dano apita to block or to reduce the soil erosion so on the step land where rocks are available contour terraces could be constructed using those rocks so in the la our land we can identify some rock materials so those materials rock materials we can use to uh, construct these terraces so in addition to that we can plant several grass grass materials so you know the grass materials they have the well spread root system so they can aggregate the soil particles and uh, they can cover the soil surface so those advantages we can get during the rainy season to avoid the soil erosion so the site of the roads and the banks should be covered with the suitable vegetation to minimize erosion so there are several recommended grass species are available vertebrata like species here you can see in this picture so uh, those plants can cover the soil area so during the rain now the soil surface uh, does not expose to the uh, direct rain because the uh, gotamala the no 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 this is not a gotamala uh, let i will show you the photograph of gotamala so these plants are specifically we cultivate in the tea land actually these are kind of grasses several grasses gotamala guinea grass those grasses so vertebrata is a different from the gotamala so normally you know the gotamala that species contain as well as it produce lot of seeds and the flower as well as they spread uh, all the everywhere so it will be a uh, disadvantages for this kind of plantation so vertebrata is a species 
uh, with Vera grass we can use as uh, to control the soil erosion. So as I mentioned earlier, in the uh, edges, we can cultivate this grass material. Okay, then uh, soil reconditioning or the rehabilitation. Rehabilitation means, uh, you know, uh, each and every agricultural practices, we use soil uh, or we convert our soil uh, by changing soil physical properties and the chemical, uh, soil physical, chemical and the biological properties. So uh, naturally, it will take some more time to uh, freeze pro or the rehabilitate the soil. But we can do a support to this natural rehabilitation of the soil uh, to improve the soil fertility, uh, to control the pest and diseases, to prevent the soil erosion, as well as to provide the mulch to conserve the soil moisture, as well as to provide the physical properties of soil. So uh, these are the soil uh, reconditioning by planting those grasses, by applying uh, the uh, strongs. As well as we can apply uh, the mulching materials, as you mentioned, the Guatemala like green grass, like the planting uh, materials, we can apply, we can apply some cover crops. So those things are there, but uh, in your level, I am not going to discuss all the things because uh, within these uh, two or three hours, I can't discuss everything with you, uh, but. Uh, I think uh, after completing successfully completing this diploma, you are uh, you will enroll to the uh, degree program. So, therefore, later you will learn everything about the tea plantation and tea cultivation. Everything. Okay, so uh, that's uh, the things I want to discuss with you regarding uh, the land preparation. But there are so many things uh, the. Uh, especially the cover cropping and also the uh, weed and present disease management, everything, but I'm not going to discuss everything in very deep. Okay, now we have prepared our land. So we have removed all the trees, we have established the contour as well as the major drains, we have, do the, we have done the uh, soil conservation methods. Okay, now then, uh, it's time to pre-plant or plant our planting materials. Okay, then before that, what we have to do, uh, we have to establish the planting holes. So normally, uh, the planting holes we can prepare using uh, this kind of machines. This is the kind of hauling machines we can use to prepare the planting holes, or we can prepare the planting holes manually using mammoth, but nowadays we use this kind of technologies, the holding, holding machines are available, so the, we can use holding machines. Okay, then the planting, uh, we can do in holes, as well as yeah, there are other methods, there's another method, trenches. So the planting holes mean just uh, establish or uh, prepare a planting hole and uh, in a planting hole, we can put a one plant. So normally the planting hole dimensions, you can find this figure around 45 centimeters depth as well as the 30 centimeter width from the top, 22.5 width from the Bottom. So this is the ideal, uh, uh, ideal uh, width depth of the of a planting hole. So if not, we can plant our plants in a trench. So here you can see trench. I can maybe I can angle look over here. Put not pull up. So the depth of the trench same as the depth of the planting holes uh, according to our convenience of our requirement, we can manage, we can decide the length of this trench. So both way we can establish, we can put our 
planting materials. Okay, here uh, you can see uh, until now we discussed the land preparation practices and uh, establishing trenches. So these are the planting uh, holes. Here you can see planting holes as well as other uh, land preparation practices also you can identify. So this is the major drain you can identify, the planting holes, likewise. Okay, then the planting hole, or we can use the trench, should be filled with the compost, cow dung, or any available form of decaying organic matter two to three weeks prior to planting. So if we plan to plant our plants in, uh, let's say, in the uh, August, so at now it's the correct time to prepare our planting holes. So then just after preparing the planting hole, we should add compost, cow dung, or uh, other organic matter such as green manure or animal manure or residue, plant residues. So those things which can add as uh, organic matter. So you know normally organic matter uh, does not release nutrients uh, rapidly, easily than the inorganic fertilizer. It will take some time to release uh, or dissolve to the soil as well as uh, uh, to establish a good fertile soil or the good soil conditions uh, organic matter takes more time that's why we apply cow dung compost like organic matter uh, without uh, two three weeks before the planting as well as now the healthy well grown vigorous plants now you know those plants now we have kept around nine to twelve months in a nursery so those plants now we can select to transplant or the field planting. So after planting, pegs should be inserted closer to the plant as cross to give support. So this area maybe sometime maybe with heavy wind. So in that situation, the plants may be collapsed or damaged due to this heat, high, high wind. So to avoid or minimize that, we can uh, give a support or protection to plants by installing pegs. So here you can see the plants. Now we have planted in planting holes and then as i mentioned earlier at the early stage we have to give a support for plants by installing this kind of pegs the support at the end of the floor. okay then uh do you have any question? Okay, now we have planted our plants in the field. Any question? Okay, if you don't have any question, I have a lot of question. Yes. 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 It's a water, good root, 
sometime it may be 9 or sometime it may be less than the uh, more than the 9 months so uh, at that time period we provide all the nutrients and also water all the necessary resources for the plants therefore plants do not get dry okay thank you sir okay any question okay then you didn't ask about the spacing okay i am discussing about uh, the planting and the size of the planting hole so you don't didn't ask about the spacing kochchara spacing walin api pala hitawanne kiyala kawuruwadna habene i think you know about it ekene ahan nathu ettene okay then uh, you should find it so i guess you know it so you should find it for in your examination there may be a question regarding the spacing of tea plant okay okay so uh, there are again uh, there are several operations so the practices are uh, there after planting the most important thing is the shade tree management so it is very important the tea plant is a, sh a shade loving plant actually therefore uh, after planting also we should uh, give some shade conditions to uh, tea so if you we have visited the tea field so you have noticed that some plants are still there some uh, tree tree actually tree the huge trees are there uh, actually those trees Give a, provide the support, provide the shade for the tea bushes. So those tree we call as the shade trees. Uh, the planting of the shade trees should be done early in the new clearing, along with the planting of the rehabilitation of the grass. So uh, the shade tree management also we have we should do before planting because uh, it takes some time to develop those. those uh, tree therefore earlier this practice we should do earlier so tea was assumed to be a shade loving plant as i told you earlier shade loving shade loving can ya yeah, um, shade ekak thiyana sevana tattayata ya kamathi sevana tattayuno ya hondata vardhane wenawa so both high and medium shade trees are used in simulate uh, forest condition therefore Uh, to provide that shade condition we normally uh, there are two kind of shade high shade sa and uh, the medium or the low shade so the medium shade and the high shade uh, if you remember in the nursery also we discussed high shade low shade so he, again here in the field condition medium shade and high shade so uh, medium shade there are uh, several plant species we can cultivate as medium shade so again i am divided the medium shade plants uh, into three category according to the uh, other conditions it means uh, the temperature rainfall uh, so up country mid country low country like uh, the shade trees are different so we can plant dadap or uh, erythrina uh, in low country as well as uh, in mid country so only we can use dadap in up country because that up not suitable for the mid country and the low country so likewise uh, there are several uh, species plant species we can use in uh, as medium shade tree so that up uh, calandra acacia so those plants suitable for the up country mid country glycidia and calandra uh, we can use and the low country we can use grass area so i will show you some photograph later uh, then you can identify those plant species so the high sheet high shade high shade uh, there are several species gavilia uh, albicia so again these species are different from up country to low country mid country to up country likewise different here you can see uh, this kind of pictures in every tea field we can identify those shade tree up country as a well less low country we can identify 
so they provide the shade to our tree bushes uh, as well as uh, these spacing of these uh, shade trees are different from country to country country to country mean up country uh, low country and then uh, later during uh, later you can learn them in under your level we will not discuss about the shade tree management it also another lesson to discuss about the shade tree management so this is the gravelia robusta the species gravelia most of the time we can identify in up country gravelia robusta so this is the albicia Caliandra species. This is the Caliandra species. So most of the time, when we select uh, shade tree, it is very important uh, to select a shade tree. Uh, then, if a plant provides so many seeds, or they fall down so many leaves, so it's not a suitable planting material for use as a shade tree. So Caliandra. Caliandra, uh, this is the Erythrina or dead up, tapi erbudu kela kyan, dead up. You can identify uh, leaves. And the Glycidia, most common in Sri Lanka, uh, we can see this plant everywhere. Glycidia, you get a mara, Glycidia, you get an ovaling adundano. In the acacia, acacia also uh, in the mid country, also you can identify acacia. Okay, uh, those are the several, uh, those are the pictures I have uh, displayed to you to identify. Then you can, uh, next time when you visit a top country or the tree field, then you can identify uh, the correct plant by their names. Okay, then. Uh, the shade tree, shade trees uh, do not provide only the shade as well as they provide nutrients. So let's see what uh, what happened there. So during uh, their loopings or, or their branches, we can use as a fertilizer, actually as a green manure. So this Erythrina grisidia, you know, in our field or home garden, we cultivate them as green manures so they can actually the grease area especially the nitrogen can, fixing no no they can't fix the nitrogen uh, they contain high amount of nitrogen normally they contain high amount of nitrogen uh, they can't fix the nitrogen but they contain high amount of nitrogen therefore those planting materials we can use as green manure so every green manure each and every one every all green manure do not fix the nitrogen Okay, you should uh, identify the difference between green manure as well as the nitrogen fixing plants such as soya bean, cowpea. So, nitrogen uh, fixing leguminaceae family. Yeah, those plants, legume plants, yes, legume plants and the green manure. All the green manure do not come in under legumes. So, green area also contain high amount of nitrogen, therefore, we can use those materials as fertilizer. So looping means uh, putting those plant shoot materials as fertilizer. So again, uh, I think uh, you do not learn everything. I just discuss about the managing about uh, the shade tree, shade trees, uh, objectives, you know, the objective of shade tree. So the rest of the things you can you can learn, you will learn later during your degree program. Okay. Uh, then after a certain time period, now our plants are ready to harvest. It means uh, to take the leaves for processing. So that part we will discuss in uh, next week under the processing. So harvesting and processing we will discuss on uh, next week. So today we 
mainly focus from nursery to field practices so under the field conditions how to develop plan so uh, i think uh, i do not cover the fertilizer application then uh, we will discuss it and we will take our break how many times sir sorry no 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 uh, don't take your break now i will uh, discuss the fertilizer application and then after that uh, you can take your break okay can you see my screen can you see my screen hello can you see my screen yes sir okay yes, sir. thank you yeah okay thank you then uh, i just discussed with the fertilizer application with you because uh, fertilizer application also another different topic but uh, i think uh, we don't have enough time to discuss them so fertilizer uh, as same as the other plants nitrogen phosphorus potassium like uh, the macronutrients as well as uh, focusing like micronutrients also very important for tea plant so uh, the first let's discuss about the nitrogen so important is importance of the nitrogens uh, you know the to develop the chlorophyll amino acid protein nucleic acid dna rna so all the um, things contain molecules contain phosphorus so it is plays a vital role in physiology of the plants especially during the plant vegetative stage nitrogen play a major role so in the tea leaf which is harvested contain 3 to 4% of the nitrogens normally in a tea leaf if we composite uh, the tea sample we take a tea sample and uh, we can evaluate its nitrogen percentage normally 3 to 4% nitrogen we can identify uh, at the harvesting stage so yield is determined to great extent by the application of nitrogen fertilizer now you can understand not like the other crop coconut like rubber so here we harvest or oh, our crop is leaves not a uh, uh, fruit or not a uh, tube not a uh, um, latex what a fruit we have leaves api me vegetative phase ka thamai harvest api dira ganne leaves therefore uh, leaves to develop leaves it need hello if you have a question please uh, do it in a proper way without disturbing me every time okay so if you have a question wait until i i complete the ex explanation so after that you can raise your question by excusing okay me hama velayma mic on karala eka paata thana kadawa dinna pa please do it in a proper way okay so nitrogen is very important because nitrogen is a responsible fertilizer or the molecule especially not the fertilizer molecule to develop the plant vegetative phase so we have as leaves therefore Uh, the tea plant can consume lot of amount high amount of nitrogen fertilizers so nitrogen we can supply by providing or applying urea ammonium sulfate like synthetic or the chemical or inorganic fertilizers as well as the organic and earlier we discussed the green manure like fertilizers Uh, so nitrogen deficiency deficiency means if we can't supply the nitrogen in a, a requirement to complete the plant requirement so there may be a deficiency atirithyak ta higiyak katiwa so nitrogen deficiency becomes clearly evident in the vegetative propagated cultivars vp means vegetative propagated cultivars 
when compared with the seedling plants so uh, earlier i discussed with you there are two types of propagation method vegetative and a seedling so we compared the seedling plants the nitrogen deficiency we can early or the we can identify very clearly in the vegetative cultivars because the seedling plants they can tolerate uh, the nitrogen deficiency or ni low nitrogen amount but the vegetative propagated cultivars do not tolerate the nitrogen deficiency so here you can see the nitrogen deficiency symptoms we can identify younger leaves yellowing yellowing of the langalies so do you know the uh, is it this uh, nitrogen is the mobile nutrient or the immobile nutrient so nutrients we can divide into two groups mobile and immobile is this the mobile or immobile any idea you should know about those things because uh, you i think i guess you have completed the plant nutrition subject am i correct no sir sorry no not no. yet okay then uh, mobile nutrients means those nutrients can transport throughout the plant if the nutrient containing in the mature plants and if there is a deficiency in the immature plants then uh, nutrients can move from mature plants to immature plants or, or the uh, from sources to uh, required phase so immature mean sorry uh, immobile means opposite to that those nutrients can't move so is uh, by looking at this picture here you can identify the symptoms so the deficient symptoms in the younger leaves younger leaves uh, yellowing so uh, by using my explanation of the mobile and mobile nutrients so can you tell me in mobile or mobile in mobile in mobile sir so, mobile mean chala mula dravya achala achala मोबाइल 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 नाइट्रोजन नाइट्रोजन यस बेसिकली बेसिकली न्यूट्रिएंट्स न्यूट्रिएंट्स यस येलोविंग ऑफ द यंगल यूज ऑफ द as a symptoms of nitrogen deficiency so first we can identify the yellowing apila mulin me diyata kola wenawa dalu wala aduna ganna puluwa plant ekey thiyena wanan apita me diyata mobile lela etane ek requirement ekak sapura wenawa mama plant ekey nathi nam me diyata dalu thama isalama kola wenna kene first apita identify kara ganna wenne dalu young leaves thamai me diyata kaha paten ekak identify kara ganna wenne so if we can identify uh, the yellowing of younger leaves so then we can notice that there yeah, is a nitrogen deficiency of the plants uh okay then uh, what are the corrective measures so we can apply uh, the fertilizer urea or any other nitrogen content fertilizer we can apply to recover the nitrogen deficiency so then the phosphorus phosphorus also a uh, very important fertilizer especially for the nucleic acid phospholipids and also the coenzymes so uh, the deficiency symptom of the phosphorus is stunted growth stunted growth means plant not grow well stunted yani kuru wenawa gause yanne ne as well as the mature leaves show characteristic of the blush is green coloration so the color change green color change to blush is and duburu pehayak ganawa mature leaves ela due to uh, this phosphorus deficiency uh, to correct the phosphorus deficiency we can apply the phosphorus contained fertilizer like uh, p2o5 as well as other polyer 
expert license will also we can apply to correct the phosphorus deficiency then the potassium uh, potassium also very important it contain in uh, especially the membrane as well as uh, it has contain it contain the enzymes uh, so it also a mobile nutrient so most from free form orderly used to younger leaves so here you can see uh, the leaves uh, deficiency symptoms we can identify in the uh, mature leaves also scrotching of the tips we can identify scrotching can be dull scrotch and or pilicilla thin up to adrogan pulva so that's the deficiency in terms of phosphorus anthocyanin okay. secreted sorry anthocyanin secretion in potassium deficiency yeah likewise there are several symptoms we can identify i am just discussing uh, those things for your information uh, so there are other fertilizer deficiency symptoms also there are other nutrients also there but i am not going to discuss them uh okay then uh, next week we will discuss the harvesting from harvesting to processing methods uh, processing tea processing methods there are several uh, black tea preparation green tea orthodox likes there are several tea manufacturing methods next week we will discuss them okay then uh, that's all about the tea the agronomy practices of the tea uh, now the time is 120 then uh, the next session or the next lecture is about the coconut agronomy so that part also uh, i will conduct uh, i will continue the that part uh, after your lunch break so now the time is 120 so how many time do you want for your lunch break half an hour half an hour so others recording stopped is it okay so it's about the coconut agronomy recording in progress so under your subject commercial plantation crops now we are going to discuss about coconut agronomy can you hear me can you hear me and uh, can you see my screen yes sir okay thank you okay so agronomic practices of coconut coconut is uh, free of life we simply say that free of life because uh, we consume the all part of this tree for our different purposes sometimes the edible part, parts we can use sometimes some parts we use as non edible parts so likewise the every part of this tree we can consume so that's why we simply name this plant as tree of life okay so aim of this uh, lecture is to provide the student with the knowledge and skills related to agronomic practices of coconut so uh, in, within this lecture within this 2 hour time i will discuss with you the agronomic practices of coconut so next week we will discuss the processing technologies of the coconut so within this 2 hours you can get idea about agronomic practices of coconut as well as uh, under that i will discuss the present status morphological features soil and the climate requirement needed for coconut so the soil and the climate requirements and explain the importance of the nursery practices field establishment and after care operations on the economic performance of the coconut so after that how to maintain the coconut nursery and the field establishment after care operations and explain and demonstrate good management practices in the plantation so i think in this lecture i will discuss uh, those practices when you come to the university for the practical component at the end of uh, your uh, diploma 
uh, there's a session, practical session, then you can visit the university and we have we will arrange uh, two day sessions, uh, one day for the practical demonstration and another day for the uh, pre -licit. So during that time, you can get the uh, answer and experience and you can uh, demonstrate those things in physically. Okay, then uh, the family of this plant is Aracaceae and genus Cocos, and the scientific name or the species name is Cocos nucifera. So the botanical name of this plant is Cocos nucifera. So as I mentioned in the very first slide, this plant can meet many basic human needs, sometimes food, Sometimes we use plant materials for uh, making shelter, for shelter materials, and sometimes we use as fuel material to, to get the energy. So likewise, uh, here in these pictures, you can see we produce so many items, food items, some uh, sweet items, as well as we use water, coconut water for drinking purposes and leaves we use to produce shelter materials and uh, the fiber can contain the fruit we use to produce uh, mattress and robes as well as the wood material we use for producing furniture and also the building materials as well as leaves and fiber we use to produce brooms. So coconut is the most widely grown plantation crop in the country. So widely grown plantation in the country. And the Sri Lanka is the fifth largest coconut producer in the country. So uh, according to the data, still we are in the fifth stage or fifth place. Uh, or we are in the first five countries among the coconut producing countries in the country. So third foreign exchange earner next to the tea and rubber. So tea and rubber, after the tea and rubber, coconut is the third foreign, the next foreign exchange earner, the country. So, you know, there are several products we export, coconut-based products, such as uh, virgin coconut oil, coconut, desiccated coconut oil, as well as uh, some coconut based non edible products some handicraft so the likewise uh, by exporting those products we earn so many dollars to our country so per capita consumption of coconut per capita mean the consumption of coconut per year per person it is around 116 per annum. This is the average value. So some people consume more than 116, some may be less than 116. As an average, 116 per annum coconut consumption uh, we can identify. A coconut palm produces a bunch of coconut every month. So that's very important. Every month, coconut plant produces produces a bunch of coconut. It means in a year, we can get 12 bunches per one coconut tree. If plant produces one bunch per month, so in a year, we can obtain 12 bunches from a one plant. So you can understand its productivity. So normally, the economic lifespan of this plant is around 60 to 70 years. So it means after starting the bearing, we can obtain its yield more than 50 years. So you compare to the other plant, this is a perennial plant, so we can get the yield more time period, but the economically Valuable lifespan is less than 60. Apitaudu is some kalim up the But usually, uh, the lifespan of this plant is 60 to 70 years. 
but there is some peak yield period peak yield time period uh, then later we will discuss them so coconut is normally distributed all around the sri lanka except in the higher elevation uh, areas so most of the time in the dry zone and zone and also the intermediate zone coconut plants are distributed so coconut growing areas are distributed in all three agroecological zones wet zone intermediate zone as well as the dry zone so as percentages so most of the coconut growing areas are distributed in intermediate zone so intermediate zone wet zone uh, dry zone like according to the climate conditions we have divided three different zones in our country so among them 50% coconut plants are cultivated in intermediate zone next to the intermediate zone then the wet zone 30% and the rest of the 20% coconut cultivating grow in areas are distributed in dry zone so these areas belongs to western northwestern and southern provinces in sri lanka so most of those coconut growing areas are located among these three provinces western province northwestern province and southern provinces okay i have heard about the coconut triangle yes sir okay then can you tell me what are the areas coming under the coconut triangle kampaha kurunagala yeah and putlam okay these are the three uh, district we consider those three three district as a coconut triangle most of the coconut growing areas are located these three provinces as well as colombo sorry kalam gampaha kurunagala and putlam are the three district which are most of the time we can identify the most of the coconut growing areas so kurunagala putlam and gampaha uh, districts belongs to the coconut triangle in sri lanka Uh, so it means 56% of the land area covers in these three districts colombo is not in under the coconut triangle kurunagala putlam and gambaha so uh, in addition to the main coconut triangle there is mini coconut triangle because the southern province and also the eastern and the north provinces uh, remaining rest of the 44% of the land area so they are for oh, there is a, a mini coconut triangle in those area no need then here okay then uh, that's all about the distribution of this plant now you can understand the coconut plant is distributed all among our country except the high elevation area so most of the time we can identify in intermediate dry zone and also the wet zone okay then let's discuss about the morphological properties characters of this plant so coconut is a woody perennial as well as a monocotyledon plant i guess you know about those words woody perennial and as well as a monocotyledon what is the opposite term of the monocotyledon dicotyledon dicotyledon monocotyledon dicotyledon so opposite word of the perennial annual 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 and the perennial likewise okay so the coconut plant if we uh, search this plant carefully we can uh, we can't identify a bark of this plant so normally uh, in the coconut plant we can identify a bark for potta kunu gan pula but in the coconut we can't identify a bark as well as we can't see any branches so sometime you may have seen some branches those are the deformations so normally usually coconut plant hasn't any branches as well as a no cambium as normal uh, things of the monocotyledon plants and no secondary growth so no secondary growth 
therefore uh, after increasing the height it will don't show any secondary growth like other dicotyledon plants so the trunk or the stem of this plant you can see normally the height is around 20 to 30 meter so depending on the ecological conditions as well as the age uh, as well as the variety of the coconut the height is different so normally now nowadays there are so many hybrid varieties to reduce the height but earlier uh, the tall varieties they have uh, they can grow up to 30 meters so light green smooth and erect or slightly curved stem we can identify so that na coconut ga kar killing ha dene ne but sometime ya curve vela thena namu gudak kelawata killing develop wenawa and uh, the stem is light gray gray color stem we can identify a gray color stem as well as smooth any spines or anything and we can observe in the stem there is a smooth stem we can identify sometimes there may be some curves like curve uh, we can identify so stem rises from a swollen ball the base we call it as a uh, root ball so there is a swollen base we can identify uh this ball or this base here you can see the base is swollen is compared to the stem this base is swollen or the uh, volume is high so dwarf farms almost no balls the sorry dwarf farm we can't see any uh solan base but in the tall farm we can identify well develop large bowl so uh, what is the difference between this why the tall farms have well developed large bowl and why the dwarf farm don't uh present any bowl tall farm means the height is so high Uh, the drop palms means kuru kuru we can chero say anathigas so what are the differences between these two can you guess okay the answer is there because the tall palms they can grow up to 30 meters then uh, they should have the uh, swollen or the large volume or the large root balls also uh, if not they may be collapse but in the dwarf palms they do not grow into certain uh, higher height therefore uh, actually they do not need any kind of ball so the solen base like this because uh, the chance of getting collapse is very low due to their short stem uh, so the cortex cortex means the outer layer of the trunk i mentioned earlier in the coconut stem we can identify any bark so the outer layer we name as cortex here you can see the outer layer of the tongue trunk so it's about 1 cm thick thickness is 1 cm the surface of the cortex shows a pattern of triangular shaped leaf scars so i guess you can identify those triangular leaf scars in this picture so these are the triangular leaf scars uh, so these leaf scars actually uh, actually these are the places the fronds attached to the stem so after fronds fallen down this attached area is still uh, present we can identify the triangular leaf scars so in the cortex we can identify those leaf scars so uh however normally the coconut tree is erect plant but there are some deviations of the typical shape of coconut tree so i here i am mention i am discuss with you several deviations like the bottleneck appearance curving of the trunk branch or spiral stem i mentioned earlier normally uh, we can't see any branches but 
sometimes some coconut plants due to some um, actually the environmental conditions plants may be branch especially if the uh, damage of the apical bud it will be a reason for branching and also the twin and the triple palm so these are deviations let's discuss those deviation one by one <clears throat> Okay, so first one is a branch stem. So here you can see, uh, normally this is the erect plan, no branches, but due to the some uh, reasons, especially this, if the apical bud is damaged due to uh, some physical uh, problem, then there may be some branches formation we can identify. Here you can see uh, again there is a branch. Then the twin palms. So twin palms here you can see in this picture uh, during uh, the fertilizations. So there are two endosperm and those endosperm separately develop, individually separate. And finally we can uh, observe two palms in a one seeds. In this picture you can see in a one coconut, there's a uh, one coconut not but there are two shoots are plus there as well as the spiled uh, stem so this also most of the time due to the uh, uh, environmental conditions especially the availability of the sunlight as well as the uh, high wind uh, the reasons for developing this kind of deviation spiral stem So the root system, uh, no tap root system. Tap root, we can't identify a tap root system. As well as do not have root hairs. So root hairs usually you know, normally know you. Uh, root hairs are the root parts. Those are absorb the nutrients from the soil. So all the roots can't absorb the soil nutrients from the soil. Uh, they are especially modified root parts are uh, there, very small root parts, we call them as root hairs. Root hairs can absorb the nutrients. But in the coconut plant, don't have root hairs. Then I think now you have a question. Then how does this plant absorb nutrients from the soil? Okay, then I will explain it. So most of the roots are concentrated in the top 9 to 120 centimeters. So uh, by using these figures, you can see the coconut plant has a very high volume of root, root system, because uh, this plant is very strong and develop around 30 centimeters. Therefore, this plant should have uh, the well-developed huge root system. Here in this picture, you can see, this is the root ball, root, all the roots are- um, Not here, sir. Sorry. Hello. So can I, may I know your name, please? Hello. Put all that not here. Yes, can hurt, sir. Yeah, sir. So what's the problem? Clearly shows that we know. Yeah, yes, sir. No. First of all, tell me what's your name, please. Hello. Recording stopped. Okay, so first of all, tell me your name, please. Can I know your name, please? You can see in this root ball, so all the roots are uh, developed from this root ball. So this is the actual root, uh, root system. You can see uh, this is a very, we can identify a very huge as well as a well developed root system. So I mentioned earlier, 
the this plant don't have I hate me now so I'm dead I know do oh I'm gonna make another matter chuta card the hand at the recording stopped so if you remember earlier i discussed with you uh, the coconut plant has a tap roots don't have a, a tap root system uh, as well as here you can see uh, these are the air breathing roots so coconut roots don't have uh, root hairs so normally root hairs are the responsible organs for ab- absorbing nutrients as well as uh, do the respiration uh, to that to do this in the coconut root system we can identify the uh, white air breathing organs so they are breathing organs has developed so these are the organs so as some height dekhala thena nan pol gaha galicha kari eke balanna mule me wage sudu parata chuti nerum thiyena so mene me wagen thamai me breathe karanna on karna me dewal siddha wenne mena meke uh me organs la so we name it as pneumothorax so pneumothorax is the name of this the main root with the breathing organs we call it as pneumothorax okay i think uh there is a problem with your audio i think miss uh, chai ratna Mrs. Oh, Mrs. Jayaratna, so please check it because others can hear clearly. So maybe uh, the problem with your devices. Please check it. Okay, then the leaves. So the coconut leaf. So normally I know uh, you normally call the single leaf let as a leaf. अबे सामान्य में बोल रहा कि मैं एक बोल जैसे मैं coconut <laughs> and here you can see this triangular leaf scars so in the cortex also we can identify those triangular leaf scars then the cushion and uh, in between uh, the leaf stalk and the cushion this area we know as keel then the keel we can identify the keel then the leaf stalk we can identify the leaf stalk and uh, the then the rachis or the midrib so all those leaflets are attached with this midrib you can identify the midrib api pol narate kiyanne midrib ekata and the leaflets so uh, can you guess uh, how many uh, leaflets we can identify in the single coconut leaf hmm? have you counted any idea how many leaflets okay so uh, the total lifetime of the pond about 2 years so after emerging or the all of the ponds it retaining or remaining in attached to the coconut tree around 2 weeks so after the 2 weeks period naturally it will fallen down and palms make a new ponds from every 22 to 30 days as an average around uh one month time period uh one month interval palms can generate a new pond a typical mature coconut palm has about 30 to 40 leaves every time we can identify around 30 to 40 number of leaves per palm so length of the pond around uh 70 to 3 to 7 it also differ from tall varieties to dwarf varieties so tall palm uh, palms they have the lo- higher length 
of their fronds, but the dwarf palms, uh, the length of the fronds around three to five meters. So the inflorescence. Let's discuss about the inflorescence. So both male and the female flowers containing in the same inflorescence. So then we can uh, call it as uh, bisexual flowers because both the both process uh, flowers containing the one plant and also uh, there are two different parts in a forest influence uh, male flowers located in another place and the female flowers are located in another separate place female male kotas dekama eka inflorescence ge tunata eka male neha so that's the different so in this uh, picture you can see uh, the spike are uh, the uh, flower parts flowers parts contain both male and the female flowers so in uh, an spike contain of single female flowers and several male flowers so it compared to the female flowers male flowers are very uh, size very small in size as well as the in number uh, is higher so in uh, uh, in instance we can identify around uh, 1000 2000 female flowers but sorry male flowers small flowers but the female flowers is around uh, 100 400 but uh, according to the variety the numbers are changed so inflorescence is covered by a spade api hanasa gela kiyanne by a spade so in a immature stage this inflorescence uh, this inflorescence cover the uh, immature stage of the sorry this spade cover the immature stage of the inflorescence Okay, so uh, the female flowers, so each spike contain one or more flowers. Sometimes uh, we can identify uh, two female flowers. So most probably we can identify only single in female flower in a spike. Uh, as well as uh, in size, it is much larger than the male flower and shape resembles a very small coconut so same as the small coconut nut uh, we can identify the same shape of this female flower because the female flower is after pollination fertilization this female flower become a fruit or the coconut therefore the shape is same as the coconut the diameter of the size is two to three centimeter diameter three to two centimeter diameter uh, so the male flowers, so here we can see uh, the male flowers, uh, it is uh, sessile as well as uh, we can identify around 200 to uh, 300 female flowers in a, a single spike. A single spike male flowers this year to myself again you know i can influence the economy it's a spike cake so uh then what do you think about uh, pollination pattern there are two types of pollination patterns are there self pollination and cross pollination so i think uh, you know the differences between these two so is this coconut tree show us the self pollination pattern or the cross pollination pattern now what do you want to know in a coconut in persons we can identify both male flowers as well as the female flowers so in this picture also you can see the and other uh, insects as well as the wind support to the pollination. So which pollination is occur?
plus plus pollination any other idea okay let's see okay i will explain uh, normally uh, you correct uh, we can identify a cross pollination pattern because uh, we can identify both male and the female flowers but they are uh, flower opening phases are different so if the male flowers are open so at that time female flowers do not open so therefore it is there is a minimum chance to get the self pollination so all the time we can identify the cross pollination so uh, cross pollination normally in the coconut is happen due to the wind so wind so again thamai pollination is the wind or other than the insects okay then the fruits uh, the shape of the fruit is a fibrous group shape group not a, a perfectly oval shape the group shaped fruit we can identify uh, round to avoid shape as well as develop from tri carpellate ovary so tri carpellate ovary uh, you don't know about those things so normally during uh, the fertilization uh, the ovary we can there are several type of ovary uh, so this fruit develop from a tri carpellate ovary so uh, let's identify the parts of this fruit so in the outer layer we can identify the epicarp most outer layer we can identify the epicarp so after that we can identify the mesocarp so mesocarp is most the fibrous region so coconut fiber we obtain from this mesocarp this is a uh, then in the immature stage of the coconut fruit the mesocarp is very tender so sometimes we can consume it so i think you have that experience when you drink the coconut king coconut uh, so we can eat this mesocarp and uh, after that we can identify uh, the coconut or the nut so this is uh, covered by the woody endo endocarp and uh, after that we can identify the endosperm uh, and then the uh, inside the endosperm we can identify the liquid endosperm so these are the uh, parts of the coconut fruit so uh, is the endosperm the solid endosperm and uh, the outer woody endocarp in between there we can identify the testa api ara kurutta kela kiyanne pol gedi eka tiyenne ara kurutta thamai me testa eka kela kiyanne so especially we will discuss like next day when we producing the virgin coconut oil uh, we oh, remove this testa uh, if the testa is added added to the um, coconut milk or during the coconut oil production the color of the coconut oil may be turned into the brown color or the dark color then in this picture you can identify the different growing stage of the fruit so from the very mature stage uh, to uh, mature stage and finally uh, the end stage okay then discuss about what are the environmental suitable characters for the coconut so this plant can be grown in a wide range of climates and the soil types therefore uh, this plant is highly adaptable so in the dry zone or we can cultivate coconut in the wet zone also we can cultivate this plant so with uh, compared with e so there is no really hard conditions so plant can easily adaptable for environment conditions so most favorable area for coconut cultivation in found in the coconut triangle but most of the time 
the conditions, environmental conditions, soil conditions, area. It's more suitable for creating coconut. And in a 15 millimeters, 2500 millimeters is okay. Our temperature is around 29, 29 Celsius. Uh, it's a light minimum level of the sunshine hours uh, per year. 2000 hours uh, for month, it should be around 100 to 120 hours per month. So it's very important the light duration, sunshine is very important, especially during uh, the reproductive stage of flower initiation. And the altitude uh, we can cultivate up to uh, 5, 500 to 600 meters from mean sea level. Then the soil conditions, presence of water table within two to three meters is important. Absence of a hard pan within two meters from uh, the surface also very important. If uh, the hard pan is present less than two meters, just think like a one meter. So it, it's not suitable soil because uh, earlier I discussed with you this plant growth system is penetrate around one and a half meters. The soil pH range around 5.5 to 7.5. So slightly neutral soil pH, acidic, slightly acidic to neutral soil pH. Okay, then let's discuss about the varieties and forms of uh, coconut so there are several varieties mm, several improved varieties hybrid varieties also uh, there let's discuss about them so the endemic coconut gem passam in sri lanka can be grouped into three distinct varieties mainly all those varieties we can group into three groups uh, Tipica, Nana, and Aurantica. So these are the three groups. Tipica means tall varieties. Nana means dwarf varieties. Aurantica means king coconut varieties. So likewise, there are three main groups. Tipica, Nana, Aurantica, or tall, dwarf, and king coconut varieties. Okay, so normally the Tipica varieties. We can identify oblong nut shape, oblong. And so epicarp or the outer layer, we can identify in a green to reddish brown color outer layer. And then the mesocarp, a good source of fiber. You know now what's the mesocarp. So after the epicarp, we can identify the mesocarp. This is the fibrous region. So a good source of fiber. Then now you can understand. For the fiber production, typical varieties is very important because we can obtain a higher percentage of fiber using typical variety. So the endo, endosperm, endosperm, uh, endosperm means next to the epicard, and for after the coconut shell, we can identify the endosperm. Abhi fold ma dekhe lagani endosperm. So the endosperm thick about 198 gram of copra per nut. For uh, using a single nut, we can obtain around 200 grams of copra using uh, the Tipica variety. So thick endosperm we can identify. So commonly grown on a plantation scale. So therefore, this variety, this Tipica varieties, there are several Tipica varieties I will show you later. Uh, those varieties we use for the commercial plantations. So what are the advantages? Because we can obtain a high amount of fiber as well as endosperm. Endosperm means uh, gel of the uh, coconut oil or the copra or any other product we obtain from the endosperm. Therefore, why they are, that is the reason we use typical variety for plantation purposes. 
these are some examples for typical varieties we can uh, identify in sri lanka bodhi variety kamadala dikiripol uh, navasi gontabili uh, rantabili and porapol so likewise there are several uh, typical varieties we can identify uh, okay so i think some of varieties you have familiar with the sum of varieties and uh, now we'll see and uh, uh rantabili gontabili likewise so degree uh, pol also i couldn't find the photograph but degree also a typical variety so uh, then the nana variety or the dwarf variety here we can identify several dwarf variety dwarf yellow dwarf red dwarf brown and dwarf green dwarf kundira variety can be not dwarf variety so it kaha kundira ratu kundira duburu kundira kolu kundira kela kundira varieties thina so these are the nana varieties then the aurantika varieties tan tabili api attarama tabili kiyanne menne me varieties walta tabili botal tabili and juan coconut so these are the aurantika varieties so sadhi examples for aurantika varieties ya api attarama rantabili kiyala kiyata eka aurantika variety ekak nemi nana variety ka aurantika walta inne tabili botal tabili and juan coconuts and also uh, these are the other varieties aurantika varieties murusi navasi tabili do telu coconut so do telu coconut the nut site is very small as well as the number of nuts per bunch also very high and ratran tabili uh, yellow murusi brown murusi so those are the aurantika varieties so rantabili ratrantika nata rantabili so i think samahara dakala athi api meka kapuhama meka thena made apita epika apika eh apita kanna puluwan eka fibrous component eka apita kanna puluwan as well as the color of that region is slightly pink color so in addition to those varieties Uh, the coconut research institute cri has released several improved coconut varieties improved mean by combining the properties of tall varieties and dwarf varieties uh, they have developed several improved varieties cri 60 65 98 kapruvana kapsoya kapseta like Uh, CRI SL 2004 12 13 likewise uh, these are the improved coconut varieties introduced by coconut research institute of sri lanka so those uh, improved varieties so those hybrid varieties uh, contain all the uh, advantages of both tall and dwarf varieties so now you know what are the advantages of tall varieties but the disadvantage of tall varieties is this plant is not suitable for the uh, home garden because the height of the plant is very high but the dwarf variety plant height is low but the fiber yield and the uh, oil yield is very low by combining these two we can get the advantage of high yielding property of tall variety and uh, the short stem from the dwarf variety and we can develop kapuva kapsuya like hybrid varieties to get the optimum advantages from both varieties okay so uh, here you can see uh, the things i discussed with you uh, earlier uh, tall variety so variety is given kundira or the nana and the tabili or the aurantica so this is the ratran tabili you can see its color it's slightly pink color and uh, you can see the dikiri dikiri coconut 
so decreasing its endosperm is uh, slightly semi solid so normally the endosperm is solid but here we can identify semi solid ek hariyata solid la nathi endosperm ekak thamai thiyen so with compare to these uh, back row varieties you can see uh, the front row these are the improved varieties capsuvea capseta capruvana crisl uh, 98 65 60 so likewise uh, the size of those nuts are larger than the normal uh, varieties so that's the advantage of this hybridization of the varieties okay here uh, look again and the cups of a cup set cr65 60 cup run and crs98 uh, as well as this is dikiri or coconut dikiri coconut and uh, the sandroman also another coconut variety and the tabili uh, so likewise there are several varieties but keep in mind all those varieties we can put into three groups okay then uh, up to now we discuss about the morphological characters soil and the climate conditions as well as the varieties of this plant okay then if you have any question this is the time you can ask your question you can raise your question so if you have any question please ask okay there are some questions in the chat box uh, so can you get to this presentation uh, or this pdf you have, i will upload the presentation uh, the pdf version to the lms you can uh, download it and uh, sheshari uh, sorry for uh, the things happened earlier okay that's the, all the things uh, then we will discuss about the nursery management of coconut so the planting materials so seed nut from selected palm so those palm we call as a plus palms are used as planting materials so now you know uh, this is uh, the monocotyledon plants as well as this plant don't have don't doesn't have any cambium then we can do cutting budding like uh, vegetative propagation method therefore the seed nut propagation method is the thing as well as the seed nut are the planting material so seedlings are raised in the nurseries of the coconut cultivation board in your home in also we can raise or we can develop coconut uh, seedlings uh, at normally in the coconut cultivation board they produce quality seedlings so there are two types of seedlings uh, according to their nursery type actually we can divide it into two groups seed bed nursery and polybag nurseries so what are the differences between two these two so seed bed nursery seedlings raise and uh, seed bed nursery conditions but in the polybag nursery we develop the seedlings in a poly bags so that's the major differences between these two so you know what are the advantage of polybag seedling nurseries because normally when we transplanting we uproot seedlings from this seed bed so what happened at that time the root may be damaged there are it it may be a reason for the transplanting shock but in the polybag nursery uh, we do not damage to the root system we can just uh, take these seedlings with the polybag and put into the planting hole so uh, there are no any damage for the root system 
So that is the advantage of the polyback nursery. As well as the polyback nursery seedlings start to bearing earlier than the seed bed nursery. So that also the advantage. And also we can easily uh, do the other cultural practices, especially during the weed controlling the polyback nursery. Uh, we can do it quickly, and the weed control also we can do. Uh, but the seed bed nursery. It is difficult. Okay, I think I discussed them. Uh, no transplanting shock, field mortality is low with compared to the nursery bed, polyback seedlings, uh, the mortality and Mariami Samba early flowering can be kept in polyback for infilling. Okay, this is another advantage. So sometime uh, after we transplant our seedlings into the uh, field planting, after, uh, after the field planting, uh, under some conditions, some the environmental conditions, as well as some attack from the face and diseases, plants may be die. So at that kind of conditions, we have to replace those uh, damaged plants from the healthy plants. Therefore, we have to uh, keep some plants for refilling. Or the infilling. So the polybag seedlings we can uh, keep for that purpose. That is another advantage. Uh, sorry, this, uh, this should be uh, correct as easy. Easy of watering, fertilizer application, and weeding. So these are the advantages. And withstand dry weather conditions after planting. Uh, this is also another advantage with compared to the Seed bed nursery seedlings, seed back nursery can uh, adapt easily as well as uh, it can survive in a dry conditions after planting than the seed bed nursery seedlings. Okay, then how do you identify good quality seedlings? So normally when you are going to buy some planting materials or some vegetable plants, uh, you can identify the the sellers. Uh, they are selling some coconut seedlings also. Then uh, you should have that knowledge to identify a good seedlings. Let's see what are the characters uh, we can use to identify good quality seedlings. So if uh, we do not select a good quality seed seedling, so what happened? After uh, the certain time period, we have to fertilize, we have to prepare this plant, and ultimately, if we can't take the optimum yield, so then our all our effort is useless. Therefore, it is important to select a good quality seedlings. So a good quality seedling, uh, seedlings are ready to plant in seven months from layering out the nuts, it means normally uh, the coconut seedlings take around seven months for completing the nursery period. So the nursery period is seven months. So after seven months, we can use those seedlings for the field planting. So at that time, we can use those characters to check or uh, the select the quality seedling. Three well-developed leaves. So at least we should have three well-developed leaves. So well-developed Leaves mean the initial uh, those basal leaves we can we can uh, count we do not count so these are the well developed leaves so here you can see the three uh, more than three well developed leaves as well as these leaves should in a dark green color dark green in color uh, and broad well shaped leaves here you can see these leaves are spread well the broad well shaped leaves as well as the stunt stem st sorry stout stem so we can we should identify stout stout can hold the push team up mahatha stem mega early splitting of leaves it also very important so uh early splitting means uh here you can see uh, uh sorry the short petiole short petiole means this is the petiole this petiole should be short so sometimes we can identify the petiole is very low as well as after that we can identify the leaves so it is not good this is a petiole like a kudal in the 
as well as the early splitting of leaves. So these leaves should be split in early. Large number of fruits. Actually, we can't identify uh, the number of fruits by observing it, but large number of fruits should be present. It's also very important. So after uh, the selecting our mm, seedlings, now it's time for field planting. So uh, the uh, during the nursery time period, seven months period, we have to we have to do the nursery care practices such as watering, mulching, examining regularly for the insect damage, wireless application. These things also we should do, same as the other nursery practices. So then our plants now we can move to the field planting. Okay, then let's discuss about the field planting and the aftercare of the seedlings. Okay, then coconut, we can plant in uh, several, under the several planting systems. So, such as square shape, uh, rectangular system, and also the triangular system, like there are several planting systems. So, those planting systems mainly depend on our uh, requirement, our space, as well as our uh, planting methods. So, sometimes we plant coconut with other plants. So we call it as intercropping. So uh, with the intercropping, we have to change the space and select the planting system method. Then crop combination, monocropping, intercropping, no mixed cropping. So monocropping means uh, the cultivation only the coconut plants, monocropping. Intercropping means cultivate with another crop. So usually we cultivate coconut and the pineapple, coconut and uh, the banana, coconut and uh, rabutan like fruit crops. So likewise, we can intercrop coconut easily uh, because uh, there are plenty of free spaces, resources available in, uh, in between the two coconut plants. Therefore, we can use that resources for another crop. So uh, intercropping is more suitable with the coconut and the mixed cropping so normally in your home garden we can identify the mixed cropping system so coconut tree and with the other, several crops so that system we call as the cropping system then the time of intercrops so the intercrops again we can use this intercrop me in cultivating uh, more than two crops so here the coconut and another crop so the second crop may be annual crop maybe the perennial crop. So likewise, uh, according to their type, perennial or the annual, as well as the, their uh, degrees of the shade tolerance, also important. So some plant required more shade. So like uh, pepper, they love more shade. So uh, vanilla, they sh love, loves, uh, they love so many shade conditions. So likewise, uh, according to the secondary crops requirement, we should think about uh, the planting methods. As well as the other factors, the water availability, soil texture, soil depth, these things also important, nutrient uh, fertilizer requirements. So those are the things we should consider. So the planting system, uh, as I mentioned earlier, there are three planting system, triangular, rectangular, and square shape, square system. So again, uh, you can see the spaces here, triangular system. Uh, there are uh, several uh, spaces uh, there. Uh, these spaces, especially again, depend on the cropping system. So if we use the monocropping system, eight to eight, eight, this says is best. But if we use the monocropping, sorry, the intercropping, so we have to in, increase the space between two plants, the uh, intercropping. So uh, the rectangular mean space between 7.3 to 8.5. Square, again, there are two 
spacings 8 to 8 and 8.3 to 8.3. So in this column, you can see uh, these spaces in the feet. And uh, most importantly, look at the uh, this two column, the density. So if we use the triangular system, we can plant 183 to 158 plants per hectare. Per hectare, we can plant this much of seedlings. So if we use the rectangular system, we can plant 164. If we use the scale shape, we can plant 164 to 147. So according to the, our planting method, planting system, uh, the plant density is different. So, uh, so which planting system is required the higher number of plants or the seedlings? By using these figures, you can identify the triangular system, 8 to 8 to 8 system. Here you can see 8 to 8, 8 in the triangular system and 8 to 8 in the square system. If we use the scale system with the 8 to 8 space, we can call plant only 168. But the same space, we, if we use as a triangular system, we can cultivate around 163. So these are some differences between uh, planting systems. So here you can see, earlier I discussed, this is a triangular system. Uh, you can identify the triangular shape of three plants. This is the scare planting, scare shape between the between four plants, the rectangular shape. Okay, then uh, now the first thing we have to do when we preparing uh, the field planting, preparation of the planting holes. So the preparation of the planting holes, we should start before one or two months uh, of the transplanting of the seedlings. Uh, uh, we should prepare two to one to two months before uh, this transplanting hole. So the size of the planting hole is depends on the soil type. So if our soil is a sandy or sandy loam soil, so uh, the dimension of the planting hole is quite uh, less than the poor structured soil, three to three to three or one meter to one meter, one meter. This is the ideal uh, dimension of a planting hole. But if you have a poor structured soil, it means the water range is very low, as well as uh, the gravel conditions, and also uh, the soil organic matter content is low. So what happened? Uh, we should enhance the dimension of a planting hole uh, around 1.2 to 1.2 to 1.2. So when we preparing the planting hole, we should remove the top soil layer first uh, we should remove the first uh, topsoil layer separately we do, we should not mix that topsoil layer with the bottom soil because you know the topsoil contain the most of the time the humus and other organic matter in a higher percentage therefore we should we can use it again and mix it the fertilizer uh, while filling the planting hole. So fill the planting hole, two layers of husks or the coir dust we can use. So uh, the husk or the coconut husk or coir dust, uh, we can lay at the bottom of the planting hole. So uh, why, why we practice this? Why we should apply the coconut husk or coir dust? So those materials can absorb water. So it is very important for the uh, conserve the moisture concern of the planting hole. After that, fill the hole with top soil, mix it one kilogram of dolomite, organic manure, and one kilogram of yam palm mixture. Okay. Uh, earlier also I discussed about the dolomite. 
we can use dolomitic matter organic manure we can use animal or the green manures as well as we can use the young farm mixture so what is the young farm mixture there are several fertilizer mixtures are available so according to the stage mature stage or the age of the palm uh, the fertilizer mixtures are different so in the initial stage or at the planting field planting stage we use young palm mixture so after that there are several planting mixtures especially so the bearing stage we use the adult palm mixtures uh, as well as some other plant especially uh, some of the king coconut varieties they have uh, so under the fertilization we will discuss them so uh, after layering the coconut husk now we add mix of dolomite topsoil organic manure and yam palm mixture here you can see the planting hole 3 to 3 to 3 and uh, these are the materials we need first of all we need uh, seedling then the coconut husk then the here the organic matter dolomite and the uh, fertilizer yam palm mixture then uh, and the top soil also then we first put the lay coconut husk then the mixture of the top soil and the fertilizer then we can place our uh seedling okay so uh it also very important when we place uh, the seedling into a uh, planting hole uh, we do not remove this the polythene or the poly bag completely what happen if we remove this polythene poly bag completely uh, the soil may be loosed and may be uh, fallen down and the roots may be damaged so we use this polybag nursery method to protect our root system so if we practice that kind of things during the field planting so what happen our uh, ultimate goal is not to achieve therefore uh, the things we doing during the planting is first we should remove the bottom of the poly bag so we can simply uh, using a blade or, or the sharp knife we can remove the bottom of the poly bag then we can place uh, the poly bag and the uh, seedlings in the all and now we can uh, add soil around the, the poly bag then carefully we can remove the back like this then this is method uh, protect our root system without damaging roots so after completing the planting so we can use we can apply the coconut husk in uh, upside down uh, method made here after lily water dana puluwan this practice we do we are doing especially for Uh, the moisture conservation as well as the control weeds as a controlling weed as a mulch we can use coconut husk here you can see uh, we can place around uh, 3 to 4 uh, round of coconut husk as a mulch so after that there are the uh, after care operations in filling Uh, for laser application mulching watering pest and diseases and the proofing so these are the after care operations we should discuss under uh, the agronomic practices okay so i will discuss about the fertilizer applications so you know there are uh, nutrients we can categorize under major nutrient macro micro like there are several classification of the nutrients so among the major nutrients carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen phosphorus potassium magnesium calcium and the sulfur carbon hydrogen oxygen we consider as the most 
plants consume the higher amount of uh, these three nutrients so among them the carbon and hydrogen oxygen plants absorb from the uh, plant obtains from the environment hydrogen obtained from the water and the other nutrients obtained from maybe from the fertilizer maybe from the organic matter or the composted uh, rock the mother rock uh, so these are the sources for those nutrients so the micro macro micronutrients uh, iron manganese molybdenum copper zinc chloride cobalt boron those are the micronutrients those micronutrients also obtained from fertilizer organic matter decomposed and drops so uh, the nutrient deficiencies of uh, the plants so nutrient deficiency mean if the nutrient composition of uh, the soil is not complete the nutrient requirement of the plant so there is a deficiency so plant uh, deficiency nutrient deficiency so the nitrogen deficiency uh, we can first uh, appear in the mature leaves so because the nitrogen is a mobile nutrient therefore Uh, the mature leaves first appear the this deficiency system then uniform yellowing of the entire fronds so after that uh, the entire fron become yellow color so this is the initial or uh, the basic symptoms we can identify from the plant observations but in the advanced stage we can identify leaves turn gold yellow and turn reddish gray color premature drying of leaves leaves uh, drying premature stage and crown will become smaller so we can identify the crown crown ekke kanne pol gahe tiyena udda kota system ekke udda tiyena sampurna kota system ekke kanne crown ekke kiyala the crown will become small or the coconut fronds become small in size and tapering of the trunk so finally tapering means the uh, this the stem may be dry off and plant die so these are the deficiency symptoms of the nitrogen then the potassium deficiency we can identify first in the mature leaves so in these two pictures you can identify this is a healthy leaf let and this is the uh leaflet affecting the potassium deficiency so you can identify rusty colored yellowing starting from the tips showing distinct scorching effect so first we can identify this potassium deficiency also from the mature leaves because as nitrogen potassium also mobile nutrients then uh, first we can identify from the tips of the leaflets the rusty color rusty kind of malakada wage malakada part of yellowing uh, circles dots we can identify in the from the tips then uh, those tips or those uh, um, dots convert as uh, scorching effects scorching can have them pitchira wage yana after that in the puluwan dots pitchira wage thiyena in advanced stage scattered brown color lesions occurs okay in those leaves which turn to gray in later stage in this picture you can see this uh, the rusty colored yellow in circles or the spots now convert into brown in color brown in color and lesions can to all we can identify and uh, in the severe stage then brown color convert into the grain color alu part tra kene pulo nut production drops down depending on the development stage of the inflorescence so potassium also very important for the production of the nut therefore uh, if the potassium deficiency is occur the nut production also going down uh, it also the deficiency symptom tapering of tongue also uh you can identify as a reason for the potassium deficiency
Okay, then let's discuss about uh, the deficiency symptoms of the magnesium. So the magnesium deficiency common on acidic and also the sandy soil, most common. Uh, continuous heavy potassium and also the application including magnesium deficiency, especially the continuous heavy potassium for LS application induce the magnesium deficiency. So in the potassium application, uh, the soil uh, may be become uh, the acidic conditions. So in the acidic stage, the magnesium deficiency is occur in a higher level. It cannot be Potassium for less than is so you look acidic and as a less up urea for less added, so you look acidic, you know. The may acidic condition over the magnesium deficiency capinatina or star vadi. So low magnesium contain decrease the nut production, as a less decrease the copla yield for nuts. So those are the deficiency symptoms. So other than those major elements. So micro elements such as a boron deficiency also very common in the coconut growing areas. So this is a not a mobile nutrient. Therefore, deficient symptoms appear in the younger leaves and leaflets of young palms malformed and crocked with the sheath. Here you can see uh, the leaflets do not uh, spread well. They scratch crocked aquilila you know malformed malformations is happen to the boron deficiency okay so uh, those are some major uh, deficiency symptoms of those nutrients uh, micro and also the macronutrients so i uh, here i focus the some of the nutrient deficiencies but there are several nutrient deficiencies uh, there but with the time i can't discuss all the things. So at your level, in the diploma level, I only discuss, focus the major things. So let's see how we can correct them, how we can correct these deficiencies. So the first thing is we, we can apply the fertilizer at the correct time, at the correct uh, rate. So the fertilizer uh, factors that govern the fertilizer recommendation. So uh, there are several fertilizer recommendations. So if you can visit the Department of uh, CRI website, as well as for other crops, tea, sorry, the paddy-like crops, if you visit the D, they have several fertilizer recommendations. So they have recommendation for the wet country zone, up country, dry zone, wet zone, likewise, there are several recommendations. So Coconut also, Coconut Research Institute has a several recommendations for uh, different regions, especially those recommendations uh, develop uh, because of the different nutrient removal from the palm, fertility of the so different soil, nutrient demand by the palm, soil characteristics, climate conditions, variety, growth stage, profitability of fertilization and the fertilizer price. So according to those factors, there are several fertilizer recommendations. So sometimes uh, the some soil has more nutrients or more soil organic matter, but in some places uh, the soil pH is very low, organic matter is very low. Therefore, according to the soil requirement, climate requirement, we have to change or we have to adapt the fertilizer recommendation as well as the plant characters growth stage, as well as the plant uh, variety, we have to change the recommendation. So these uh, normally uh, we use those nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and magnesium like major nutrients, as well as to supply the micronutrients, uh, we use uh, the organic matter to supply the micronutrients. So just for your information, for to supply the nitrogen, we use urea. To provide the phosphorus, we use a power of phosphate and imported rock phosphate. To supply the potassium, we use 
potassium, 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 of potassium supply the magnesium, we can use the dolomite or the keyserite. So in the, uh, this column, you can see the composition of each molecule in those fertilizer. If we use urea, 100 gram of urea, it, provi it's, it provides only 46 gram of nitrogen. So likewise, the nutrient composition of each fertilizer. Okay, so uh, these are the fertilizers. Uh, this also, just for your information, so urea, it is a granule fertilizer. The power of phosphate, it's a kind of powdered fertilizer, new rate of potash, and the dolomite and the keyserite. So keyserite, dolomite provide magnesium, uh, especially dolomite provide calcium and magnesium both. Okay, then uh, the fertilizers, uh, as I mentioned earlier, there are several recommendations. In this table, you can see the fertilizer recommendation for planting holes. So at the planting stage, this is the fertilizer recommendation. Here you can see, according to the zone, there are two recommendations, wet and the intermediate zone have separate recommendation that recommendation is different from dry zone recommendation so the urea is same part of phosphate is higher in the wet and intermediate zone then uh, the nutrient of potash also the same dolomite also the same because the wet and intermediate zone receive high amount of water as well as the wet zone uh, the soil ph is quite uh, acidic therefore the amount of the phosphate is high. Then uh, the yam palm mixture. Yam palm mixture means uh, especially from uh, after field planting, we have to fertilize six months after field planting, then uh, one year to one and a half year, two year to two and a half year, three year to three and a half year, uh, and also four years four and a half years, five and a half years, likewise, until bearing, we apply young palm mixture. So, not young palm mixture. So, now using this table, you can understand, normally we apply uh, fertilizer per one dose per year. Samane Ode Pasarya Pamana fertilizer apply kana, but the initial stage from six months. Pasahayin ayita. So uh, the recommendation you can see a part of phosphate, urea, nitrate of potash, and dolomite. Again, the weight and intermediate zone have one recommendation, but the price zone has another recommendation. So with the time or with the age of the palm, the dose of the fertilizer is gradually increased. Here you can see uh, gradually increase, but the dolomite rate is not changed in the both recommendations in the both uh, every stage but the other fertilizer the dosage is gradually increased with the age of palm so the adult palm adult palms mixture mean uh, during the bearing stage we use adult palm mixture so now i discuss three fertilizer type uh, at the initial stage field planting you use separate fertilizer mixture during uh, until during after field planting to until the bearing we use uh, mature palm mixture and after bearing we use adult palm mixture again the adult palm mixture also there are two types wet and intermediate and also the dry zone as another mixture so those chemical fertilizers we can divide it into several groups. So as a summary, look here. The fertilizer mixtures, according to the age of the palm, yam palm mixture, adult palm mixture, or adult coconut mixture, likewise. Then there are specific fertilizer mixtures also available. Uh, those mixtures are developed according to the requirement of uh, variety, especially the king coconut plant has king coconut Mixture as well as the toddy tapping palms. It is different from uh, not producing plant. 
coconut plant. So differential fertilizer mixtures. Likewise, there are several specific fertilizer mixtures have developed for specific varieties. Uh, but in the common and the generally, these are young adult farm mixtures, other general fertilizer mixtures. Then the method of fertilizer application, uh, normally the broadcasted uniformly on the soil surface within a radius of 1.75 meter from the base of the palm. So this is the method of fertilizer application. We normally do the broadcasting. So the fertilizer uh, circle, there is a fertilizer circle around the root uh, base or, or the uh, base of the stem. We apply within a 1.7 meter radius. So lightly worked into the soil to a depth of four, 10 to 15 centimeters. Just after application fertilizer, we just slightly mix the fertilizer. We incorporate the fertilizer with the soil. Uh, as well as uh, mulch with the suitable material also, we should apply, you know, the mulch provide uh, the protection from the heavy rain as well as they avoid the evaporation as well as evaporation of moisture. Those are the advantages. So in this picture, you can see, this is the fertilizer circle, 1.7, 1 1.7 uh, five meter from uh, the base and uh, broadcast the mixture. After that, we should mix the fertilizer with the soil and we can place a mulch. So uh, in addition to the fertilizer application, cover crops management also very important because uh, we, we can apply mulch, uh, we can apply green manure or any other materials, but after a certain time they degrade and we have to replace the mulch again. But if we can use the live mulch, it means uh, if the mulch can uh, keep in the field for a certain period of time, so it will be an advantage. Therefore, the cover crops we can use as a live mulch. So the cover crops reduce the soil erosion, add to organic matter, reduce nutrient losses and improve soil fertility, reduce pest populations and reduce soil compaction and improve the soil structure. So the cover crops, they their root system penetrate into the soil and reduce the soil compaction as well as uh, improve the soil aeration water holding capacity. And also they control the surface area, then reduce the growth of the weeds and during the rain, they reduce the soil erosion. Improve the water management in as the biological diversity in the root zone. So they uh, go around the root zone of the coconut plant and make or the create a suitable environment for the uh, around the root system. So uh, there are several types of cover crops available. Again, when we are selecting a cover crop, we should think about uh, the ecological zone. So some cover some cover crops do not uh, some cover crops do not suitable for dry zone. Some cover crops suitable for wet zone but do not suitable for dry zone. Likewise we should think about so in this table you can get a rough idea about what are the cover crops suitable for dry zone what are the cover crops suitable for wet zone so i will show you some of those cover crops then you can identify them okay so uh, no need to remember those scientific names but just try to identify those uh, cover crops. Uh, some of cover crops are legumes, therefore they uh, involve with the nitrogen fixing. Uh, that also another advantage of the cover crops. So this is also another uh, kind of cover crops. So, so most of the time in your home garden or uh, uh, around the road, so we can identify those cover crops. Okay, then let's discuss about the intercropping 
and the monocropping. There are several cropping system, intercropping, monocropping, and the multi-cropping. So most of the time, coconuts uh, we can identify uh, as uh, intercropping system. So intercropping increase the light use efficiency, maximize the resources use because in a coconut land uh, after three to four years time period, there is a plenty of land, soil, water, plant, nutrient uh, space is uh, available. So therefore we can use that space for cultivating another crop. So uh, it will be advantage for both crops. Increase the coconut production because that crop, uh, if we use uh, pineapple or if we use a banana like crop so we apply fertilizer for that plants also secondary plant also so therefore uh, this nutrients incorporated the coconut these nutrients uh, can absorb by the coconut tree and enhance the production improve the soil productivity increase the crop productivity provide the supplementary source of income so now we have two income sources one income from the coconut, other income from the secondary uh, or intercropped. Then reduce the risk depending on the one of crop of our income. So provide the food security. So those are the advantages of intercropping. So uh, let's see what are the uh, crops we can use to intercrop with the uh, coconut. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned earlier with coconut, is uh, suitable for intercropping because there enough space for compatible crops. So around 75 of this space is available. Now, I can go to my poll. 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 I can go to my so the more light penetrate to the understory, around 4 to 80% light penetrate to the bottom layer. Soil water and the plant nutrient availability enable to select the wide range of annuals and the perennials. So we can use annual as the perennial crops. So if we want to plant uh, the short term plants like chili, uh, tomato, we can use them. So if we want to cultivate or plant the perennial plants such as the coffee and uh, the pepper, so we can use them because the, the lifespan of the coconut tree is around 50 to 70. So it would have to be eight aqua, tina, pala, hitawana, sharp hitawana, pulam. So the total available air space is 30 to 40 percent. So these are the uh, advantages or the suitable conditions for in a coconut land for intercropping. Therefore, most of the time we use banana, cashew, cinnamon, pineapple, rabutan, tea. Tea also we can intercrop with the coconut. In this picture, uh, the uh, right hand side, top corner, you can see intercrop tea and the coconut. And also uh, the pepper, beetle, lime, griseria species. So these are the Things we can, these are the plants we can use to intercrop with the coconut. So here you can see intercrop with the banana, rabutang with the coconut, pineapple with the coconut, grisidia with the coconut. Uh, so likewise, these are the advantages of the, these are these plants we can interrupt with the coconut. So other than uh, those crops, we can intercrop coffee, cocoa, cinnamon, uh, cassava, ginger, Improved pasture also. Pasture means we use pasture for feed the animals. Papaya, passion fruits, seasonal crops, yam, vegetable, cereals, pulses, like uh, seasonal crops also we can use. Okay, that's about all about the intercropping. Uh, so there are several other cultural practices also available. Uh, what do you want? Shall we have a break or shall we continue? Another 15 minutes. We should, we have to talk about the first and diseases. So, uh, do you want a small break? Uh, we can stop and start again. So, we can continue the session until uh, end of this presentation. 
ओके प्लीज प्लीज टॉक ये मिनट ओके मिनट बैक सर ओके देन वी विल कंटिन्यू द फर्स्ट एंड दिस इज जस्ट आई discuss with you some important patient diseases uh, patient disease problem and their management practices so there are several patient disease problems with the coconut tree but here i mention in the most important and uh, most susceptible patient diseases for the coconut plant so here you can see the pest as well as the diseases also affect the coconut plant in uh, every stages in the nursery stage and the planting stage as well as in the adult stage so pest of the uh, coconut they affect each and every part of the coconut not only the root not only the uh, food not only the leaves they at attack the root system stem uh, and also crown and nut uh, leaf so here in this picture you can see the black beetle affect the crown red tree will uh, affect to the stem might affect the nut scale insect affect to the uh, leaflet caterpillar also affect to the leaf tree likewise uh, there are several insects pests affect to the uh, every part of the this plant so this is the coconut red tree will now you can identify this is the coleoptera pest and more serious and also the destructive pest in uh, in a coconut plantation so most destructive pest so uh, 3 to 15 prone to attack so normally in a one plant uh, there we can identify 3 to 15 uh, to attack plant so this is the uh, serious stage of the attraction uh, if we identify 3 to 6 it is a vulnerable uh so higher than 6 so it is uh, not this uh um, we can't control at that rate so the todi plants are highly susceptible for this pest so these pests highly damage for the todi tapping plants and the complete life cycle within the plant is also very important in the coconut tree to really complete their life cycle within the plan so we compared the black beetle black beetle uh, complete half of its life cycle within the plant but red tree will completely uh, complete life cycle within the coconut plant so the damage is mainly done by larvae so all the stages we can identify in the coconut tree but the larvae only larvae damage the plant the other stages uh, do not damage the plant so feed on the soft, soft tissues or trunk or maybe crown so the soft tissues in the trunk or crown uh, they feed on those tissues so here you can see the coconut uh, red peel uh, larvae so you consume the soft tissues like this so here you can see they are damages so in the younger plants also adult plants they are damages so uh, it is very difficult to identify in the early stage they just make a holes and go inside to the stem uh, in the tall plant we can and we can see they are damage uh, the holes achieving fiber or osin or the red bound we can identify so in their uh, they create holes to insert to the stem so at that hole uh, that whole area we can identify uh, achieving fibers me all the stem ke rahe to lela a kana fibers apita a hole lekin eliyata vetena dakinna pula as well as the osin so the red brown color here in this picture i think you can see osin a liquid they are kapita dak in the pula uh, as well as if you can hear um, carefully the noise coming from this stem so we you can uh, identify you can hear the crunching noise larvae 
feed or eat uh, the tissues in the stem. Therefore, you can hear the crunching noise. Uh, so, advanced stage. So, advanced stage. These are the uh, symptoms. Uh, outmost leaves, uh, premature depth, like in this picture. After hitogawang, after that, in pulwang, pahalati na outlayge tiy na leaves. Ek parate veila kadangela tiy na. So, inner hole yellowing or the withering, withering. We can see the inner leaves. We can see withering or turn green color to yellow color as well as the terminal blood slant so the terminal blood slants the terminal blood they slant tela kadagana vetena finally uh, toppling of crown crown uh, collapse and uh, fallen down so these are the advanced uh, the, these are the uh, symptoms and they are uh, symptoms of their damage so you can see this is a severe damage so we can't recover uh, their damage in the advanced level so if we do not identify their damage in the early stage so we are too late to recover the plant here you can see uh, they damage the stem part they damage the crown part so ultimately plant it collapse so coconut tree to be will damage is not a uh, simple things it's a very critical damage for the coconut cultivation so uh, so if the plant is damaged like this stage typical bud uh, crown collapse and fallen down then we can't recover apo meke kesel gaha gawage etini khanda kapala ay etini gaha idana kela bala porut wenna beha so if that stage we have to remove this plant from the land so therefore Uh, this, is, this damage is the severe damage. The control method uh, we can regular inspection. So as I mentioned earlier, we can identify their initial stage by uh, looking uh, the carefully observation, inspection, and also the cut and split and burn. If we identify a damaged plant, so we can't recover it. We have to cut and remove it in the severe stage. SLS uh, repeat apply of apply on wounds area with the coal tar and use of the engine oil. So coal tar and engine oil we can use to uh, fill this wounds area. So it will uh, block the wound and avoid the um, coming uh, the coconut red bee will uh, damage again that wound area. as well as we can use the pheromone traps uh, to trap the adult so we can control or we can uh, destroy their life cycle by removing the adults therefore we can trap the adults using the using several pheromone traps as well as there are several chemical methods uh, 60% monocotopus we can use as a chemical control method Okay, then next to the red weevil, the black beetle is another uh, damage. It's making a lot of damage for the coconut plantation. In this picture, you can see it's the adults and the larvae. The this insect also uh, Polyptera family insects. Serious pest up to seven years. Especially this uh, black beetle affect. in a uh, younger stage uh, of the plant so reduce the growth uh, sometime it may be dead plants may be dead so nitrogen and the magnesium deficiency uh, if the plant suffering from the nitrogen and the magnesium deficiency their attack is very high so uh, therefore the plant it is very important to manage the fertilizer fertilizer management also very important and so they are damage we can identify like this damage uh, is done by the adult not the larvae earlier red bee will uh, damage is done by the larvae but the black beetle uh, they are damage uh, is done by the adult so they cut split sorry uh, damage is done by adult 
uh, we can see uh, those between the sheets uh, they feet on uh, between the sheets may uh, pull uh, to a uh, crown negative my image you see doing it we can identify geometrical leaf cuts when the fronts open so when the fronts open uh, due to their um, damage we can identify this kind of geometric leaf hari da api kiyanne gan kasura king kapala dala wage hari eta glide hekata me leaf sets wala damage kala thiyena akka adunu ganna puluwa not only the leaf fronts they also damage to the inflorescence in for instance so if they if they damage the inflorescence there are no any nut production so these are the damage in the cv stage we can identify this kind of damage so the control methods uh, there are several control methods uh, mechanical method biological method we can use so the mechanical method <laughs> sorry Uh, as mechanical method, we can remove them manually using iron rod. Iron, sorry, iron rod. So here you can see the iron rod, uh, 15 centimeter long iron rod uh, at the end. The iso hook. So we can just insert this iron rod. Uh, they are affecting holes and or uh, the in between the sheets, and we can remove them out. so that's a simple thing and the biological control method also they are uh, we can use the fungi viruses so uh, like parasites so these parasites are affect, affecting uh, their larvae and, and destroy them apply a uh, repellent around the spinal leaf so we can apply repellents so repellents mean uh, these materials release some uh, fragrance or some chemical compounds those compounds not uh, suitable or not good for the insects so ta or the engine oil uh, as well as an aptalin kapur bola tapi ta pavishran kurwa then ku bihe mena tapi kapur bola tiyena ne so likewise we can use those methods to avoid them and slow release granules also we can insert insecticide a granular insecticides carbofuran uh, sl and the carbosulfan so those uh, insecticides we do not apply as foliar application we just insert those granules kata wage ne tiyana deva apita me crown ekey tantagulin tiyanna puluwa to control their damage so the coconut caterpillar is another pest damage more they damage to the leaf here you can see they are damage Uh, uh heavy damage the foliar part especially the potassium deficiency is high they are damage also very high uh, especially they are damage or they are active uh, as few time period is february to april so in the dry area dry conditions so they are damage you can see uh, they feed on lower side of the tissue here you can see that this is the lower side of the tree uh, leaf leaflet and uh, these leaf buds become dry off uh, so the control method is uh, cut and down uh, remove the affected leaves uh, as well as uh, uh, we can use different parasitoid releasing uh, uh, animals we can use as the biological control method as well as in a severe stage we can use the chemical method especially the monocotopus 6% monocotopus uh, they are damage we can find the leaf leaf so by applying uh, the pesticide to the trunk we can avoid their damage so the coconut scale insect also another uh, pest attack to the coconut uh, especially this pest also attack in the dry weather because of the dry weather conditions plants uh, also uh, in a very weak conditions therefore those pests can easily uh, damage that stage feed on the sap or the lower surface yellow patches we can identify in the uh, leaflets nalat leaflets yata pattin thamai damage ekaranne 
so heavy infection entire yellowing of the leaf so at the heavy stage we can identify entire yellowing of the leaf as well as the withering and dry off so the as cultural method we can use parasite also the predators like ladybird beetle we can use as predators we can uh, release ladybird beetle uh, to control them as well as the trunk inject of the 60% monocotopus also available so the coconut might uh, this is uh, the when other pest uh, damage to the coconut nuts Uh, due to their damage malformed nuts small nuts immature nut pole as well as the dry out the skin of the nut and crack in patches so sometimes in you, you have experienced that the coconut nut uh, has some fractures and crack in the patches as well as the dry of the skin is very really, uh, coconut skin also dry off so these uh, things happen due to the uh, this pest this is a sucking pest uh, here you can see in the microscopic view and this is you can see the very small uh, tiny pest we can identify attack to the coconut nuts so according to their attack you can identify uh, the immature nut pollen and, and the small nuts and cracks on the nut surface dry off these things happen due to their damage to control we can identify it at the early stage if we identify there is a damage of the mites we can remove those branches and spray of the neem oil also you can see do you know about the neem oil neem oil means uh, ecobotel kele can uh, so apply this for the monocotopus inject to the stem and also we can use the biological control method we can use parasites or uh, other biological control methods then the coconut leaf mine also another uh, major pest so uh, they are larvae pupa and the adult stage you can identify here so the termite also another uh, insect especially damage into the root area of the stem base of the stem as well as the nursery plant also they damage the nursery plants enter to the inside uh, and the feed on the bud region and damage the plant at the mature stage damage the base so like this week you can see they are damage to control we can destroy their nets in the field and we can use insects uh, insecticide to control as chemical control methods so in addition to uh, those pest diseases there are some uh sorry in addition to those pest damages there are some diseases also there especially the bud root disease uh, most of the time young plants are vulnerable for bud root disease uh here you can see in the bud me bud dekata tamai me age attack ka siddha wenne uh rotted bud you can see the rotted bud attack by this bacteria then also the leaf blight uh, disease this is a fungal attack it's also the disease at, uh, diseases damage and also the valigum leaf wilt disease i think you heard about the valigum wilt diseases first this disease is identified in the valigum area that's why we call it as the valigum wilt disease this is so uh, so very severe in the southern area in the sri lanka uh, we believe that the disease came from the india the kerala area in the area because uh, the same damage we can identify in same as the kerala area so valigum will disease dry off the leaflets okay so uh, that's all about uh, the pest and diseases i uh, do not explain every diseases because uh, no need about everything at this stage uh, but you have a uh, assignment in this uh, session uh, your assignment is uh, you should create a 3 minutes individual video clip uh, 
explaining one of the following topics. So under the uh, coconut agronomy, uh, up to now we discussed the planting material production, nursery management, field preparation, field planting, weeding, watering, mulching, wellness application, cover crop management, coconut intropping, uh, pest and diseases management, uh, pest management especially. So now uh, it's time to do a small uh, assignment to you. So what you have to do, you should prepare a three minutes individual video crop. So you can just uh, create a presentation by explaining those things. You can select one of those title. If you select the planting material production, so your title is the planting material production. So you can you should prepare a presentation, or you can simply explain it by using a poster or using uh, the speech. Likewise, uh, you can use uh, your own method to explain it. Uh, the time is three minutes, so three minutes video clips you should prepare. And I have uh, I have I will give you two weeks time. Because uh, the next week also you have the same subject. Then uh, after that you can submit your assignment to the LMS. So the deadline is 22nd. Uh, to get an idea about this assignment, I will show you uh, the video club clip that has uploaded by the previous badge. Uh, then you can get an idea about looking it. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Yes. Sir, is a lot Recording stopped. Hello, can you repeat it again? Because I couldn't hear you. I think there may be some connection problem. Sorry. I didn't get your point because uh, maybe some connection problem. I didn't hear you clearly. Please repeat it again. Okay, until that, I will explain your assignment. So you can create uh, the video clip like this. Uh, so it should be three minutes. You can get more information from the other sources, internet, or you can simply visit the CRI website, Coconut Research Institute, CRI website, as it has a Coconut Cultivation Board website to get more idea. Uh, you can use this kind of presentation mode, or you can simply use this kind of prepare this kind of uh, speech. Okay, I think now you have a kind of idea about how to do this presentation or the video clip. Any reaction? Are you clear about this presentation, this uh, assignment? Yes. Okay. As well as I will upload this. Uh, presentation as a PDF version, then you can uh, refer it again. And if you want, uh, if you're interested regarding the coconut agronomy as well as the tea agronomy, I will share some uh, additional reading materials to the LMS. Uh, so all of the things I did not cover within the limited time period. So if you are interested more about those areas, then you can refer them and learn them and also uh, you can join with the, our degree program to get more knowledge about those areas. Okay, then if you don't have any question and uh, it's time to wind up the session. Sir? Yes, hello. Yeah, 
uh, the assignment is the only coconut or included the rubber and tea? No, no, no. This assignment is only for uh, uh, the coconut. Okay, so do do you uh, Brian sir? Did you get any assignment from her this uh, part in the rubber? No, sir. Ah, uh, okay. Then uh, if you don't have any assignment from that part, then all together, all using all three cups, tea, rubber, and coconut, you can make it. So first select uh, the one crop, tea, rubber, or coconut. Then uh, select a title, and then create a video. Usually, uh, we do this assignment for each individual crops, but at that at this time, you can select uh, only one crop. It means uh, if you interest with the rubber, then you can select the uh, weed management in rubber. Likewise, no need to specific in the coconut. Clear? Okay, sir. Okay, then uh, let's meet again in uh, the next Saturday to discuss the processing technologies of these two crops. Okay, then uh, have a nice day. Thank you for joining. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you sir. Thank you, sir.